No! I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live like that. Get that eight ball. Get that eight ball going. Get that eight ball going. You got me hurt. I know you smell the perfume. I make you on the shirt. You don't believe in stories. You know they are lies. So that you won't stick around. And I just don't know why. You're going to my baby. I'll see if this video is going to do a little for me. No. Turn that volume down. Turn that volume down, man. Alright. Dang, this video is still processing. I got to see what the heck is up with that. Yeah, we back on it, man. We going to get to this mindset, man. Why? Why is people want to be slaves so bad? I don't get it. Like, dang. They get to pick up a phone and say, I'm a slave. And the people that's actually in it, right? Or oppressed or whatever, right? They can't even get on this app and say that. <laughs> I said privileged people don't know they privileged, man. They don't know their privilege, man. All right, what the heck is my arm? Um... I gotta see what the arm. Um... <clears throat> Let me get my stuff going. I gotta send these invites out in a minute. Anything they can make, have them shake their booty. Mechanical bull. <laughs> Anything, any train that get them to shaking their booty on it, like robots. Like robots. Ain't never been a mechanical bull in their life. You want to be one not. Uh, uh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. So, I gotta see why that other video. I know I've been on. Uh, studio. Orders, account. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, no! Don't do that to me. Unavailable. Technical difficulties. Wow. That's wild. Alright, so. Switch back over to my backup account. <sighs> All right, I see people jumping in and out, man. If y'all can hit them likes and share while y'all in here. Get some shares, some likes, some FYP. See if you want to hop up in the box, y'all can do it. All right, let me see. Okay. That's what I'm gonna do. So this is what you gotta do. You gotta click part of it. Hey, that's split in there. No.
get something real quick. That's what I'm gonna do that right there. I'm gonna do that right there. Uh, I forgot what I was about to do. Okay, let that save. Hopefully that save from there. Hopefully. What's the deal, Gemini? How you feeling, man? We're about to get the party started. See, I might as well get on this thing early. Do something to this fight, come on. Why not? Why not start it up and get some get some conversations going, you know? Get some conversations going. I got some time. I might end up going out tomorrow anyway, so uh on UFC Israel the Sign going against Trakus Trukas the I can't say his name. DDP, we gonna call him that. Trick is the blue the so they fighting for Africa right now. Because Izzy, uh, Izzy don't like that. It, a guy with bright skin is claiming Africa, even though he lives in Africa, and he said he's a real African. But Izzy, guess he took it personal and want to fight him because he's said he was the true African uh, fighter, or something like that. So they fight for that right now, and then we got uh. Dan Hooker, he gonna be playing. He gonna fight. Uh, my boy, I call him Shuey, because <laughs> he be drinking beer out the side of shoe. He going against this other dude named uh, they call him Big Boy for short. I think his name Roger. This got a weird type name though. Do you think had it worse? I I don't know. I'm trying to ask everybody who got it worse. That's what I'm trying to see. Y'all can come up in the panel. Don't be scared, man. I know everybody like coming in the panel when it get full and stuff. And like, I can't get in the panel. <laughs> uh, let me see something real quick. I divest a lot. I started learning. I need to. It's no point in them. No point. Just feel like entertaining and one day you just go, you know? Alright, I'm about to turn this uh take this uh There's AC off because I know it's loud. Yo. Give me a second, y'all. I'm over here trying to march on this chip around me. <clears throat> Hit the wrong angle. <laughs> What's the deal, y'all, man? Welcome, welcome, man. Uh, hey. Can we start off saying what is your, what do you identify as? And 
<laughs> I couldn't even be that shit. I couldn't even be serious. I can't take none of them lies serious. No, I can't lie. What are you? What is your gender? And how old are you? <laughs> Let me leave them alone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know. That's like so. As I hear that, I'm like, yep. Yeah, it's not about to go well in this room. <laughs> well, I was like this man here. <laughs> Don't you dare troll me. Like, they gonna interview. Don't you dare troll me as soon as I walk up in here. It's a matter with you. <laughs> man. Oh, man. <clears throat> man. So, I guess we can get this party started while it's early for this stuff get cramped up because I know how top, how top is like this, B, man. But, um, let's go. I guess I'll start with you, man. Do a little zig, a little circle around and go to T, then J, then L. What's, what's up, my brother L in the building? Avocado, what? I'm gonna get hungry now. I just found out that avocado's a fruit. I always thought it was a vegetable. I think so, yeah, yeah. I think I got seed in it. Anything with a seed. I got seed, yo. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, no. Now, so, on the, oh, my bad. What you got? What you got? Go ahead, go ahead. What you got? I was gonna say on the topic here, um, like on the first part, you says like how. Like, have there been any uh, cultures gotten it treated worse than us as black Americans? I mean, there's a few. There's a few. Mm-hmm. Um, can I sit, Can we still blame Root for the decisions we made today? No, we cannot. And what is black enough or white talking points? Honestly, those are anecdotal uh, explanations to dis to discredit or dis or disnounce. Or, or denounce someone's talking point regardless if they like it or not and mm. the last one that is a major good question because honestly i see myself as a as a, not even just a survivor as I, or I, i'd say i see myself as a conqueror Ooh, well, at least a conqueror okay, i like that that's like i like that because the way I see it is, especially if people still have those victim mindsets, they're still in a place of weakness. And I say this like mm. not as trying to like like push you down, punch you down, or whatever. Or anyone that feels this way, I just want you to understand something. If you have a weak mindset, therefore you will live that. You cannot mm. be strong with a weak mindset. Mm. There's something that all there's something that my granddad always taught me, like. To be strong, you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. You get. You can't be sitting there thinking like, gotcha. "Oh, the world. The world is gonna keep beating me up. The world's out to get me." Because that's not gonna get you nowhere in life. Yeah. And even if the world beating you up, you gotta fight back. <laughs> you just gonna let it beat you up. Because you. Because the world is tough. The world is going to be dangerous. The only thing that you can do is just toughen yourself for it. You cannot change the world by making it soft. Facts. I, I like how you talking, man. I like how you talking about. I like that. That was nice because I, I usually I say that a lot too. It ain't the world that's tough. You just soft. That's what I'll be saying. <laughs> I put it all there. And uh, even for the people that try to speak up and say like, "Oh, you can't speak for them," or like, "Oh, blah blah blah." Like, first of all, you cannot sit there and pretend to be strong and also be weak at the same time. That, that mm-hmm. that's not how it works. Yeah, I never understood that. That's a good one too. That's like how we say that we the most powerful is and. You know, nobody can't F with us and all this stuff. Then we act weak in a matter of seconds. Hey, God, that's over us. You know? so are you saying know. that being called a victim is weak? Or The whole idea, the whole word, the whole word itself. The whole word mm-hmm. itself by itself, victim, means, means small, meek, weak, and cannot defend themselves. The weak I don't think that's the only get, definition of that word. Like in the that weak sense. can be strong. The weak can get strong. But the only way the weak can get strong is if it throws away the mindset of ever being weak in the first place. Mm. Mm. Like that's deep. I, that's deep. I think everybody really don't have it in them, though. I know, I know that everybody ain't got Ninja willpower. Is the Google definition. Mm-hmm. Say it again. She trying to look at the definition while talking. That ain't gonna work though. You gotta, you gotta look it up then come back. Cause we ain't better hear you. But yeah, was she just trying to look the definition of what victim is? What? I mean, because it, he makes it seem like I, I don't know. It's just like someone. Uh, it's like a cause and effect type situation. You being a victim and not necessarily always an adjective as he's putting it. You know what I'm saying? You think I'm not seeing it in a in a brighter sense? 
I'm sorry. I said, do you think I'm not seeing it in a brighter sense? Brighter? No, just maybe wider, better picture. That's what I mean. A a brighter. No, I said a brighter, not a brighter, a brighter sense, like a big, big and wide. Yes. But no, I, I, I see, I see it in a gigantic wide sense. And I understand that people have certain hurdles that they need to hurdle over so they can overcome them. I'm not saying nothing bad about that. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that particularly you cannot have a mind, you cannot have a mindset that is basically going to just not even not really lift you up as a person or lift anyone else up around you. It's just going to like numb their pain, make them feel good for right now. But what you need to do is like give them the tools, give them the motivation, give them the strength to want to be strong. Because the thing is, if you if you sit there and keep blaming other people for what's going on in your life, and I'm not even just going to say like your life or you know in, in particular, but I'm just saying if you keep sitting there and blaming people for stuff that goes on or has happened in your life, then you are not going to grow strong than you need to be to deal with the rest of the world. Okay, so let me do this real quick, because we can, we can kind of say that for the open panel so I can get everybody to talk. Oh, dang, my oh, man, I dropped already. Uh, so go ahead, uh, T. I'm a, we just gonna do what we gonna do is uh do like the, just the green topic first, and then we gonna open panel because I know everybody be wanting to say stuff. We are gonna do the green one for everybody to go for that. Um, so the top the topic itself is a topic question. Um, why mm-hmm. force people into believing they are still slaves? So how you feel about that, T? Um, forcing people that's that's kind of like saying you know why do they teach it in schools like basically saying it happened in the past so don't bring it up almost because it's it's not really a force it's just like when you bring up the topic people especially a certain demographics of people feel like you shouldn't even talk about it right and that affects the younger generation like not acknowledging that it happened could end you up in the same place like you're not really forcing them, you're just educating them. Some people see it as forced because they don't want you to even talk about it. They don't want it to be acknowledged. They want you to forget about it and act like it never happened. But honestly, you know, that experience for some of our ancestors, um, it changes your whole outlook really on life. It could be um, detrimental and it could also be motivating. You know, I refuse based off of what my ancestors went through i refuse like not to be educated i refuse to use the n-word in public i refuse you know it's certain things that i won't do so as far as you know why people force force you into it i don't even what do you mean by like what people because i don't think nobody forced you i got i got an example then uh got you then so so if you ever pay attention right uh oh you shoot you might who knows but what what um thing is nowadays is some people because some people want to believe that they they're not slaves right so i'm just talking about in today with the mentality and stuff some people believe they still slaves some people they don't and I, it, both of them can have whatever perspective they look at so it seems like if we don't if some people don't talk as they are slaves and stuff they either say that they say terms like what you not black enough or you you're ignorant and all this other stuff and it's like i'm trying to see what is the whole point even though you said educate right Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure we didn't get educated since we was children and hearing the same thing. So it's like, what are we gonna do from the point? Keep talking about it. So it's like, what is? I want to know what is the point. You know, why keep forcing it to somebody? And like, what is your overall results when we keep on telling people that? Yeah, I just want y'all to know that y'all slaves, slaves. Y'all still slaves. So that that's what I'm coming with, with that one. Oh, those type of people. I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm not really a talker type of person. Meaning, like, I'm not about to talk about issues that I don't try to find an answer to. But I can tell you that without educating, like, the younger generation is is detrimental. They really don't understand that, you know, the generations before you were not were not allowed to read. They were not allowed to um, uh, just do as they please. They were whipped. They were beaten. You know, they don't understand that. They need to know that. If anybody I would force it on, I would say the younger generation, but for the people that are still saying we're still slaves and they working at Walmart, like that's crazy we're, to me. Because like what are you doing about it? You're you see, you see what I'm team. talking about. Yeah. What are you doing yeah. about it? 
Yeah. How are you trying to get yourself out of that slavery? Yes, now, I, yes. There you go. And I'm I'm not gonna lie, like um my whole goal, I didn't have it in mind with the slave mindset. There but o- overall, that's really kind of what I was trying to escape, to be honest. Like my goal when I left my my career was to be financially free, basically. Self sufficient. Um, self sufficient. Yeah, self-sufficient, financially free, and and that's how. But I don't go around telling people, you know, we still slaves, and you have to do the same because I. It's not even easy to do, but I mm-hmm. land my plane there. Okay, I, yeah, and that's you know, and I feel you on what you mean too, because some people got to get educated, so they're gonna be living in this world kind of blindly. But it's just all about growing. I think that's in anything, like with um, just our past, right? We supposed to educate ourselves on where did we went wrong because it's not like dwelling on dang man this person hurt me and i got to keep bringing it up and keep in mind it's like dang what you about to do with with that failed relationship you're like what you gonna do with it that's the whole point so yeah that's yeah i feel it though hey uh, can i ask y'all a question and i, I know before, before we get to the question we're gonna leave it for the open panel we're gonna do that for the open panel because literally everybody ain't gonna be able to get to talk <laughs> yeah because that's just like three people that haven't talked yet uh let me get uh i'm gonna get jay bird the avocado then Mal- malika and then we then we can get the is going. Jay Bird, where you at? She still looking up stuff. <laughs> Good looks, T. Can you hear me? There you go. I was. What um, you got for us? Uh, why? Why force people to believe in their still slave? I don't agree in that mentality, and I guess I agree with the general consensus so far with the panel is mm-hmm. um i mean like miss t said if you work in i mean everybody pretty much is in this economic slave chain and ball situation you know you got to do what you got to do and if you want to break that chain you got to do something different and change your reality yeah. so yeah. that's all i got on that okay avocado what you got I was going to say, I don't think anyone in today's America is really a slave. I can't think of anyone who's still a slave. Ooh, don't hurt him like that. Don't do that. <laughs> That's what you got. You got that. That's what you got for. That's a good one. Can I interject and say, does she count prisoners? Nope. Mm, no. That's not really slave either. I mean, to my <laughs> understanding, they got to yeah, be before, before that, Before we do that, before we... <laughs> Because I know how that's about to be. So right before we do that, I'm gonna let Malika go. Then, then we can get. That's why I was trying not to. That's why I wanted to know interjections because the other person ain't gonna be able to say. So right after hey, Malika, Kiff. we gonna be able to do a y'all can rock out. Hey, Kiff. what's up? What's up, Malika? How what's you up? feeling? What's up, man? It's great. Hey, I'm be. You already know it. How y'all doing today in the panel? Doing good. Hey. Okay. Okay. So why force people into believing they are still slaves? This is my opinion. I believe that slavery has transformed. It's not the same thing. Mm. Um, now, in some parts of the world today that we live in, there is actual slavery from what we read. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, anyone who is getting paid not what they're worth is slave activity. Anybody. Yes. We work more and we have less money. When we're doing more hours and every company is making more money than what we're getting paid, that's slave activity. But it is a different type of slavery. Um, so that's where I come from with that. And thank you, guys. Mm, interesting. All right, open panel, y'all. Let's get it. I, was like, I don't agree with that because if you don't like what you're getting paid, you can always quit. So it is- I was thinking about that. Too. I was thinking about that, too. Somebody said it. I, I disagree when she says she don't include prisoners as as like they don't even identify them by name. They identify them by number. Yeah. You, so that's definitely probably like the highest extent. And they pay them. I mean, they probably paying them only to make it seem like it's not slavery. They don't really pay them anything. Um, and as far as like the disciplinary actions, if you try to leave, they'll definitely unalive you. As far as them, uh, slavery, boo, unless you are falsely imprisoned, if you go out here and steal, it look like you shouldn't be stealing. So if you have to do some hard labor for three years, 
Maybe don't steal my time. But there are people that are falsely in prison. Yeah, yeah, people, people get paid out all the time after 50 people. years of imprisonment because they were or, falsely imprisoned. Or mm -hmm. the the uh the penalty of the crime does not fit the crime. Even mm -hmm. though that's a constitutional right. That happens every day where somebody is being sent to jail for like 20 years for something that it doesn't even really deserve 20 years. And the sad thing is that's that's right. it's, because, it's because of the individuals in power. And I want to say individuals, I mean like the certain judges, certain people in the jury, you know, it's like certain people that have those uh, certain privileges that they could just like slap on the punishment and just be like, you know what? No, we need to make an example. Like, okay, but why? It doesn't matter who put them there. They're dead. Yeah. It's still a form of slavery. And here's the yeah, thing, too. Say that's I the closest that. you might can say that. It might be the closest. And I'll say this, too. Like, when it comes down to slavery, like, it's not more of a slavery on, like, who's the, like, who's, like, different, like, shade of skin color or anything like that. It's now more of, like, who's got the most, like, workable assets but still poor as hell. And we can just exploit them. And yeah, I, I will agree. Like the prison systems by himself, like that right there in and itself is mainly mainly like the private, uh, like the private sectors of prisons and shit. That's not that very. It's not that much, but it's still enough. It's still enough to to be like, yo, this is not right. What's well, not yeah. that much? Because the prison systems are filled. Like, yeah, and crazy enough to um, proportionally, and I'm gonna just say this again proportionately by like certain ethnic ethnic groups and like population of ethnic groups yes you could say black people have been more incarcerated the most however if you actually look at the volume of like every prison it's not necessarily how it is proportionately if that because makes the sense system, our core system is classes if you have the money to hire a good lawyer you got better odds that's the whole thing. And the, the thing is, people still believe like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like if you if, if you're black, that means like you, you are just like you're disadvantaged, period. I'm like, uh, unless you have the damn money and they're like, mm -hmm. no, no, you can have they can have the money and they still be discouraged. I'm like, yeah, only by pieces of shit jurors or a piece of shit in particular people that should not be in that position of power. But let's just face it. It's not everybody. No, you know. it's not everybody, but it's still a big problem. Like the likeliness of you being charged with a serious crime is is much higher. Are you even being charged at all? It's much higher for people of color. A lot of people will get stopped, you know, and they let them go. Hey, here's a warning. Or they act like they don't see it versus if it's automatic a lot of the times with a person of color, if they are caught for anything or charged with anything. Can I um can, can I tell everyone like a story that happened with me? It's a very personal story and it really it really shook my core. And when I mean it shook my core, it shook my core like to the point where it almost put me in jail. But let but I I do want to like address this to on uh, use me as an example on this one. Like I was in a position to where I was pro that I was most likely going to go to jail for being falsely accusing being falsely accused of like essaying somebody essaying two people but the thing is when the detectives came or you know like when they came and uh, got me you know i like i gave myself up because like i because like i don't know what the hell was going on at the time they explained to me what was going on I explained my story and let's just face it. Like a person that looks like me is not necessarily going to get the best odds from some people's point of view. But like I explained to the detectives about what happened and she explained, she went and talked to the other two and she came back and released me like after a few hours. And then she's like, yeah, I, we have nothing to hold you because both of their stories do not match up. And I'm just saying, in a in a sense to where I could have been thrown in jail for accusations or anything that could have like completely destroyed my life. Don't get me wrong. It still destroyed my reputation, but it didn't destroy my life completely. But I was in a position to where I could have been like gone away for a long time for some. It didn't happen. And I tell people this, too. It's like it's not just it's not 
Like, it's not as biased system as you would think. It's not like they're just trying to round up anyone that looks like me for any little crimes and just throw us away and lock the key. You know, th- throw us away and throw away the key and stuff. But Ronan, is that your only experience? That honestly is my only experience ever dealing with like the law. And when I mean like em- like me ever being on the receiving end on- of cuffs, you know what I'm saying? I've never once done any crime that ever involved, you know, me going to jail. Well, I had never done a crime period, but I mean, my point is like, I've never done anything to warrant me to like go, you know, to, to go to jail or anything. I've gotten stopped before at traffic stops and stuff, but I've never once had an interaction with the, the asshole cop. You know what I mean? I think we all know that this is not something that happens a thousand percent of the time. I don't, I don't think anyone right. should say that. It's and not that it happens a thousand percent of the of time. Experience. Like you're one person with that one experience that's, that's, that does not equate for the tons of cases where people are like illegally stopped, sometimes illegally charged, or the the sentence or the the charge does not fit the crime. Yes, but again, that goes back to my point of the cops that usually do this, it's not because of what you look like. It's literally because of what you have. And when I say it was because of what you have is say that you say, say that you are a person that does look like they have money. Okay. And they catch you on a warrant or whatever. They're going to stop you for your warrant or whatever, but they're not just going to stop you for no random bullshit reason. That's just they can't stop you million. for a warrant they didn't know you have. Well, that's just the thing. Again, if you have money, they can they can look you up fast. They are going to look you up fast. Period. They because don't know you, have, if you money. have money, like th- that's the whole thing with being stopped. They don't know who you are. They only stereotyping based off of what they think you are. Like I said, I can't. You know, you're basing it off of your your one time incident, but I, it, it happens often. It also depends on your demographics. Like I don't know if you're from a small town, a big town. If it's majority YT people, if it's majority Hispanic, I want you to look, I I say, I want you look at my picture and tell me I'm not. And tell me I'm from a small town. I've already looked at your picture. Does How it would look I like I'm from a small I town? I can't tell. How I'm supposed to tell? I'm just saying, no small town black dude looks like me. You just say Amazon ship clothes everywhere. It looked like people that's out the inner city that's living in the middle of nowhere. So. There's no look for small town, big town. Oh, trust me, there is. If you know well, how to look at Okay, it. Mr. Ronan, if you want to compare experiences, <laughs> I do live in a small town. I got stopped all the time because my mom, when I was going to college, gifted me this car. It was decked out, gold, tinted windows, rims. Jesus. I got stopped three times in the first <laughs> month I moved away from college because my car was stereotyped like there was no reason i i should have been stopped i didn't break any laws i just pulled me over made some up bs excuse and then once they saw there was me just a woman they let me go hmm. well um i, I see the cops uh, have y'all ever heard of park road uh, see i see this all the time ronan so my opinion is different like i see cops harass people all the time i live on like a main street like a main commercial street and one the other half of the street is white like it's yt people the other side is black people they don't even go to the other side to stop people that's bad they're stopping every other car that damn near come down the street to where people don't even want to come in this city it's hey, a, live, where are you from i'm from new orleans for real not dead ass I live five minutes outside of downtown. Once no dead ass for real. Bridge, yes. Do you? I'm well. I, I don't live there no more, but I'm from there. But to say your accent, I say like I, I knew your accent sounded familiar, but it sounded like like you were like suppressing your real accent. Like kind of reminded me of myself for a second. So I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I I, I have to ask this question because she does sound like she might be from Louisiana, but I have to ask the question. Hey, Mr. Ronan, you ever oh, heard of Park Grove? 
Hartgrove? Yeah. Yes. You know that psych ward, psych facility out there, right? By Chicago? Didn't they didn't they shut that place down? Absolutely they shut it down. They shut it down because they found out that judges were filtering and sending young black boys to that facility as a quick pro quo. They were paying for them and they would keep them locked up indefinitely. I was say, didn't they shut that thing down? Like I want to say, almost fifteen like two, years ago. Like yeah, like around yeah, like, yeah. Damn near, like, like, early twenty early years 2000s ago. Two thousands is when the first case hit. But my point of saying that is, it's a lot bigger than just that. For a whole system to just funnel young black boys to a facility where they lost that on purpose. the case that actually got the place shut down in the first place yes when they found out what was going on but that's what i'm saying they were filtering black boys okay and specifically specifically that's what they asked for and that's what the judge gave them yeah and crazy enough it wasn't well they they were filtering in black children in there but they also like had like an assortment of, of hispanics and i think they had like I think they had a few, uh, like Middle East, not, not yeah, Middle Eastern uh, children as well. Yeah, too That's, small of a number problem, to equate. The problem was though, the people that was running that facility, not neither, none of them has ever like gave in like a like a progress check in well over tw- well over ten years before they were found out. They were doing a lot of shicey shit under the table that they literally have been bypassing all federal like expectations when i mean bypassing them, i mean you know like putting up a face when they like what you know when the feds come just to look and see if the place is okay and then as soon as they leave they you know they just take off the veil yeah but that's normally how it happens you're correct but keep in mind point is that honestly is more part is more fault of corporate america and i say corporate america to the point where they feel like they have the need and they have the liberty to take in pe- people that are less fortunate, that are below the freaking class bracket that they would think like, oh, no one's going to miss them. And I tell people this too. When, you, like, when, you, when you're dealing with companies like this, when you're dealing with organizations like this, it's more than just skin deep on who is actually in charge. It's it's more it's like the nuance of knowing all the people that is involved like goes more beyond than just the people that are running that thing that you see you know what i'm saying my because, only, yeah my only argument was that it was it was it was a it was a it was a whole function like they made that a corporation yes that's the and, judges and, that were involved it doesn't matter about the corporations if the judges are willing to throw people lives away for money and again, I, and and, and I, trust me, I, I believe I, I'm on I'm on board with you on that one. The one thing that I, the one thing that I do say is, as a counterpoint, is now since we're getting a lot more better with you know expected you know ex, you know like looking through all these companies, making sure any of these companies are really in the up and up that they say that they uh, excuse me that, that they say that they are. That's why a lot of freaking like asylums across America have been shut down because of male of like you know male practice and stuff because there was that case and there was another case in mississippi back in the 70s that that's this asylum was shut down because they were funneling like inner city children like by the masses i can't remember what was the name of the uh i can't remember the name of the case but i do remember the story because mom used to watch it all the time anyway um said like this facility got shut down in the 70s because it was funneling in like inner city orphans in particular and also performing like qu- what they like to call uh exorcist exorcist on the children exorcism on the children i don't know i know i can't i'm only paraphrasing from what i remember but the point is, like, there's been, like, so many, like, asylums across the nation that has been shut down for things of that nature that nowadays, like, we like we think of asylums as, like, oh, that's just, that, 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 that's just kind of something that's just, that well, we don't, re- we barely see those anymore. But it's, like. Around in, I noticed you're going around everything other than that people that look, the, I'm black, people that look the opposite of me or stick 
people of color in jail at an alarming rate. You're going around there. You're talking about asylums, corporations, other than really acknowledging these people just didn't land, that somebody put them there. And it's like you're, it's almost like you're in denial in, in somewhat of a sense. Like you said you're from Louisiana or whatever, right? I'm from New Orleans, yes. Angola. Look at Angola. And I'm not saying everybody in Angola is innocent. Ma'am, can I tell you something? Listen, I, trust me, I know everything about Angola. My baby brother just got out of Angola after doing a 15 year sentence. And if you, if you don't mind me asking, what did he go to jail for? He went to jail for doing a stupid thing when he was a kid. And I, I thought he was going to be specific, but, okay. I, Look, I don't necessarily want to get too far into the details of what he did, but let's just say my my little brother ran with the wrong people. He went to a, he went to a party and he got into an argument with the per, with the person that was like opposite from him, and things happened. Dude, dude, pew pewed at my brother. My my brother pew pewed at him back, and then yeah. Case in point, he did a he, he did a stupid, and he even tell and he even tells me to this day he did a stupid. Like he regret, like he regrets everything that he's done because he knew that lifestyle that he was in wasn't the wasn't the one for him, and it cost him literally half of his life. And he doesn't blame anybody for that but himself. He literally takes responsibility for the actions that he that he's done and i'm honestly proud of him for that shit you know like it's been years since i've had, since i saw him or since i heard anything from him and then when i found out where what happened to him he was in jail because of that but what's the point of the the disproportionate the disproportionate issue we're speaking on what's the point of the disproportionate issue i'm saying what where is this going the my main point is what i'm trying to say is especially when it comes down to this victim mentality to believe to blaming others for stuff that's going on with with you or whatever is some y'all want to okay i'm not saying y'all i'm not even saying us i'm not i'm just saying this as an as a general statement <laughs> people want to try to fix the world but they can't fix themselves and then they expect the world to be fixed or to be fixed around them but the sad truth is you can't. The only thing that you can do is call out the injustices that are happening right there in front of you. Then make the and then do what you need to do to make sure that that injustice doesn't happen again. And I'm gonna tell you this now. Yes, there are hold still on, hold on. Okay, you've been going talking on. about it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So sit here and see how far black people have come and to get to twenty twenty four and say we still can't make improvements is silly. I don't believe that. I don't believe that we can't make improvements. I never once said that we can't make improvements. I'm saying on ourselves. The things that we cannot change, for, we, for one, we cannot change the past. There is no changing the past. The only thing you can do now is progress your own future, progress the, pro progress the people around you. Because we live in this country together, we have to, we have to be in it together. There okay, is no well, when I see people speak from that victim standpoint, and I'm not saying victimized, like they're, I, when I, most of the time when I see people speak that black people are still victims, it's in the sense that we still have obstacles on the track that other people don't face. Not necessarily right. they, they can't get around them, but they are there. So it's, it's really negligent to act like that we don't still have obstacles in front of us that we need to take barriers that we need to take down for our future generations. Here's a question. What is the biggest obstacle in our way that's not in anyone else's way? There's no biggest. There's a whole bunch of them. I know, but what is the, but like, what is I don't the have a biggest. I just have multiple reasons why they, why they have obstacles. And I can't say... Like, because I've, you know, was able to hurdle over the obstacles that ever thinking, that, okay, it works like that for everybody else, because it does not. Let me ask this then. Uh, what um, what do you want to do? Uh, since you said so many obstacles in front of you, what is something that you really want to do that you can't do right now? What do I want to do that I can't do? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind getting like a, a half a million dollar to a million dollar loan. That would be nice. Mm. That I know that they give to a lot of foreigners and a lot of 
a lot of, not all, but a lot of YT people qualify for like economically for uh, certain things that I wouldn't qualify for. I also, as far as obstacles, not my obstacles, because I wasn't saying pertaining to me, but the obstacles of like um, the role that media plays, right? Media, Malcolm X said media is our biggest enemy, and it is. Like how they mm -hmm. perpetuate uh, in our funding. Like if you tell somebody broke to rap about violence and unaliving people, of course they're going to do it. They never had money in their life. And if you ask, they've had interviews with some of these rappers that say they pay me more to 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 rap about that. They pay me more to rap about drugs. They pay me more to. So as far as that, like media is definitely one of them. They could get rid of Section 8 too if they want to. I really don't like. I don't feel like that's effective. I don't feel like that helps our people. Matter of fact, can I tell you some? Can I tell you something crazy about that? Did you know that we're not even the ones that are on Section 8 or any government assistance the most? It's white women. Yeah, yeah I, I know that. that. But look, I was I wasn't done. I was trying to I was trying to get somewhere with what she was saying though. Um, because you said, do you think as a people that we can't? Some people, some of us can't get a um. You said a million dollar loan. That's that's yeah, that's deep. As a people, that's supposed. To, yeah, yeah. But let me tell you so something. People just get million dollar loans out here. Yes, yes. There are people getting million dollar loans, half a million dollar loans. They haven't even been in a country a decade. I'd say only if they're smart enough and only if their credit is good enough. And I would tell you oh, no, because when you come, if you come in a country as a foreigner, right, from certain countries, you automatically like your score is all like almost automatically at like a 700. And I know people personally. I know a lot of Vietnamese people, a lot of Palestinians. Um, What's the other big group? Uh, The Republic of Czech. Well, they've, they've done Czech that. Czechoslovakians. It's not called Czechoslovakia anymore. That's no, no, I'm talking about the people, the people are called Czechoslovakians. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, because I'm trying to get somewhere, because that's like, I don't know, it seems like that we got to, we trying to use the system like it's like a god or something. Like, dang, as soon as I feel a certain way or if I want this and I can't get what I want when I demand it, I have a blockage in front of me. And I'm pretty sure all of us want to be millionaires, right? I'm pretty sure it take a lot of things to get. Some people got to do harder work than others. That's just what it is. I don't think it's just only a skin. Because I'm pretty sure it's a black person that got a million dollar loan that you you just asked for and stuff. If right. they just handing it out like that, then it, it, it's something behind that. But they are, though. Why do you think yeah. a lot of foreigners have these businesses? They don't really have the money when they come in. Half of them are coming from Wall What just happened? And she, she probably got a call. Got a call. Hey, she not oh. lying though, uh, Kev. I'm from, uh, yeah, you, know, cool. you know, you know, you know, I'm from Chicago, right? We used okay. to live up north, which is one of the biggest Muslim populations in Chicago, and we had people coming from Iraq. We had a neighbor. Um, his name was Yassim. Um, Yassim came over with his three wives and like five, six kids, and as soon as they hit the country, they get a stipend. They bought him a vehicle. They bought him the apartment that he was living next door to us in. They paid for him to go to school to learn English, put all his kids in school. They get perks that we do not get living here. Malika, yep. can I add to that? Yes, so, ma'am, absolutely. I'm sure when he came in, his kids were probably ESL students, right? I'm but sorry. ES yeah, no, I'm saying like <laughs> when foreigners come into the country, like if they're coming straight from their country, they don't know English. He had three kids. They were considered ESL students. He got a check yes. for every one of those students. The same thing with food stamps. Yes, they he get did. Food they... stamps for all. And you know that the, a lot of Arabic uh, people have big families. They yes, ma'am. You're right. For all those kids. And half of the time, they're using their food stamps to put food in their stores for the loans that they don't receive. Which yep. I don't know how y'all never heard of this. That's Hold on, wait. She is super right. Listen, she is super right. And then they have a mechanism that when after so many years, I think it's like three, four years, now you got to start paying taxes on your on your property. But if they transfer it to a family member, then that family member also get another four years without taxes. So that's why yeah. you see so many different owners and it's all in the family. They get the yeah. new things and perks that we don't have access to. Right, it's right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm bitch. not playing a couple. Let me. Let me. Let me. It's a point I'm getting to, man. Really, really. I'm sorry. why I'm gonna. So, yeah, that's not my whole entire thing on that. Cause it just seemed like that we always. And I get it. Of course, we are gonna have things that's gonna set us back in different things for what we want to do or whatever. But it's like I don't know how this how this works. It's like 
that's why I always ask people like, what do you specifically want to do? What are you doing now to try to 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 um get to that certain goal? Because it just seemed like if we just make up something in our mind that we really want to do, and if it don't get granted, we be like, dang, I'm getting held back. This is holding me back. It's like, what is the limits of what we want to really want to what we really want to do or something like that? Because I don't believe I'm not about to believe that, that every last again, person that wanted to apply like for that is getting a million dollar loan. Y'all can believe it. I don't know. It's not that so, again, that oh we can't gosh. get anywhere, and it's not that point. It's that we're trying to make a better world for the future generation. Gotcha. So they don't. Ha they can have those accesses that they just explained. Gotcha. They can have those opportunities. Got you. Yeah, right. Everybody else getting it. Right. I got you. Okay, cool. I don't believe it, but whatever. Well, nah, just, I, was what? that I, was back. I was saying that it's not helping us move forward. It's not, it's not that you, it's holding you back because you don't have to have a million dollar loan, but it's not helping us move forward like it's helping them move forward. I think it's about where people live because... Do you I'm, think everybody deserves a million dollar age, loan? I'm almost at the age where I believe like I don't even live in the same America. Cause like when I talk to other black people and the stuff they go through, I was like, I've never experienced half the stuff people talk about. And maybe it's cause I was raised around white people and we lived in the suburbs where it's majority white. But like, I, I I just believe I don't even live in like the same America as everyone. What specific- Man, I mean, have different areas got different experiences. Experience. I understand that. I do want to say- This happened to me, everybody- Police brutality and police pew pewing people, like I've, I've never experienced these things. It doesn't oh, happen. Right? But it's happening, it's happening it's though, funny. so. It yeah, does. You happen. might not personally did it, but you got to look at the worldwide. Like, look at news, look at other stuff. Yeah, it's because you didn't experience it. I mean, just like vice versa. So that's why I'm, I'm just saying it's, the world is so much bigger than it is. And I think my whole, like I said, the point I'm, the point I've been just getting to is just like that's why I asked, like, do everybody deserve because because I'm bl black or white, whatever? They do they just deserve a, a million dollar loan? Because it's just I don't know. It's just the stuff we just request for, and then we say well other people doing it which i don't know like i said i still ain't gonna believe that one though like anybody that feel like they want to get a million dollar loan they could just sign up for it that just sound wild to me no kim i mean he's getting a million dollar loan for a reason people not just signing up to get a million dollars you know to get a exactly million, i understand that stuff. so what i'm yeah, saying but like is I the, said, same, the same people can, caucasian and black can have the same credit score the same um money in the bank account liquid assets they can have the same thing and that black person will still get turned down the person on the other side won't. You ask what would I like to do, right? I don't own my house right now, but I would like to sell my house for a, 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 for a fair price. But that don't happen. If they came to look at my house and I got my pictures of my family up and they all look like me, your value of your house go down. That's not necessarily true. They it's, did an experiment. Oh on my God. God. I guess yeah, yeah, we just going to be to me. Before you start telling me what's true and what's not true, you could definitely, did you look it up first? Did you, did you I see the same thing that's happening to did me right now? Yeah, right. That, did you see the companies that got sued and went under for practicing this? And then they found out it was a wide world practice in real estate? Well, Funko world. got sued. Y'all remember that? For the same thing. I'm yeah, not just up here talking out the side story. of my neck. No, I'm listen, I'm not I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you on the whole thing because I like I said, not necessarily true. You're you're completely correct on literally about like, you know, the male practices and them and them getting like caught for that shit. That's completely right. What I'm saying is it's not necessarily it doesn't happen just like everywhere. It only happens in certain places. And those certain places I was just about to say that that's my point. Well, no, like, that happens ideas. everywhere in the United States, wherever. Nah, that's wherever. why and I won't believe let that one. Let me ask you this. Well, let you me ask you this. Up, they give you the data. Everybody keeps saying that that's just like Avocado saying what she's saying. We keep making everything broad and general. I don't believe it. I don't okay, think it's just like she said, I don't oh. see no crimes and all that stuff. Well, I'm not about thing. to say that. Just like you said, that's happening. I think y'all being extreme on both ends. I won't, I won't believe because it. I just can't believe it. Let me ask you this. There's a Do few you things have that are... assets? What? Uh -huh. Same as for Ronan. Do y'all have assets? Have you ever bought a house? Honestly, no. I'm trying. I'm on the process of trying to do that. Okay. Uh -huh. So both of you all do not own a house, which means you haven't went to try to go and get a loan. So if it's somebody that can walk in there, like Malika said, with the same income, and the same credit score, while you happy that they approved you for a $200,000 home, they were just approved for a four hundred dollars to $500,000 home based off of your skin color. They do it all the time. 
Here's the thing, though. Um, especially when you depend on Here's the thing. I'm going to say I bought a home and we got approved for over 300000 dollars a home and we were black. So I, I get this stuff can happen in different cases. And I'm not, I don't think it downplays or cancels out your people's experiences. But I think the more we can do that, act as if, because depending on what areas you're from, areas just by being in certain areas. Somebody's can, still echoing. What the heck is that? Oh. She's outside, I think. I think. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, everybody mute up and just let Arthur talk. Huh? So, huh? No, no, no. It's on you. Okay. Yeah, so no, I was just saying, um, we bought a house out here in this area where we are and had no issues of being approved, even if we didn't have perfect things and perfect standing. Some areas that you're in does, can taint your uh, desired outcome. Right. I, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, as far as being black, that there are some things that people are going to people are going to view you a certain way or treat you a certain way. Um, as time has changed, yes, it has been. It has gotten better for people to do certain things they want to do. But the area that you're from, that also can um, play a play a part in it. So I just want to add that in there. Um, I am one who bought a house and we had no issues having buying one. But just the fact that sometimes the area that you're in could play a, uh, play a part in just people being biased in their own right. Uh, so we're with, so we're with. Yeah. I like that. You, I, that's what I was. I was just about to say. I about to say. I could. I could find. I bet you. I could find a black person because that's what I said. I, that can't be absolute. I don't. I don't, so I don't like annoying. doing that absolute stuff because it's like we might as well tell somebody else that got their experience because it's. I, I. 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 I can hear that we talking off of experience just because I seen only this information or I looked this up. I think this is worldwide or just because I went through this. I think this is worldwide. And I mean, everybody can literally do that, but. It's all about, like, you got to think about it, like, can, have I not seen one person that did it, or have I, you know, so it's it's possible. That's what I'm saying. It's possible. I said, it might even be said that it so, I said I selling wanna, a home, not buying a home. Selling a home. I, I do want to say this, too. Nobody like, didn't do that either, huh? Can I, said, I say I, something in result to They ain't also, sold right? a home. They ain't did none of this stuff because of our skin color. That's that's crazy. I'm not about to believe it. No, I said you get less money for the house. So if you're How selling you the house, that? they give you three hundred thousand. Your house is probably worth six, seven hundred thousand. But they don't appraise it that way. I did pull up an article that was by CNN. That I know everybody knows CNN because it was plastered everywhere. Um, hey, but it, I, couldn't, I couldn't show the actual because it's the words are small. So I just, I just. Decided what? not to, but do you believe anything the CNA CNN says? I believe, I like I believe in data, and I believe when people post, I, I believe that when the news posts something that's that's been um, widely talked about, that's something we need to pay attention to. But after I seen that, I also did my own research, looked at the data, looked at all of the cities they did these tests in. And it is in all 50 states. Now, it is certain companies in the 50 states that practice this, but it is being practiced everywhere in America. I was going to ask gotcha. Alter. I was going to ask Alter because she said we, right? Because $300,000 approval is not really a lot of money if it's two people name that's going on a loan. That means basically they approve both of y'all for $150,000 loan, which is basically a basic loan. Also, I that's do want to say this. Lot. Like I've been with my bank for like well over 12 years now. And like my credit's gotten up to the point where I could actually put, well, not really, I could actually theoretically put down for a $400,000 like property. And that's just, and by the way, $400,000 is practically huge. just damn near a mansion size where I'm at. But regardless of that, like I'm actually approved to get me a house like that. But the thing is, again, I'm more of the traditionalist type of person. Like I actually want to have that money in tow before I talk about getting this loan, because at that point, like I want to actually give that money right back to them as soon as I get it, you know, but that's just me. I don't, I'm not expecting anyone to be a, to ever be like me or ever have that same thing with me. But again, like it does, like it's possible that anyone can get, you know, that anyone can be approved for a, for a loan for a house. It doesn't matter what skin yeah, color you are. These ladies weren't talking yeah. about Robin has a loan for the house. They're talking about the the selling point of the house. And y'all keep going back to getting a loan. Right. The, the amount. They can't turn on your application. But I'll say this, Robin. Right. And the same thing for, for Kev. Like they didn't in the Civil Rights Act was not that long ago. These people you think that once the Civil Rights Act came about, 
they stopped practicing these type of ways? You think they just threw it out of the window? They've been doing, housing discrimination has been a thing since our people have been accumulating properties through the banking system. It didn't go away in the 70s, it didn't go away in the 80s, and it hasn't gone away in 2024. And like I'm telling you, they practicing it. Like I seen you agreed with whatever her name was. I can't remember her name that, that just said, but the $300,000 loan. But if you go to buy a house, $300,000 is really not a lot of money to be approved for for two people. The basic depending on where you, she, but she also said depending on where you're at. That is because correct. Like, it not where you're going to spend it to be approved for. It doesn't matter where you spend your your um uh, your monies for a house, but the amount that you're approved from. Just like you said, you were approved for four hundred thousand, and I don't want to poke at your salary. I mean, that's up to you if you want to share it. But normally, yeah. one person, unless they're making a lot of money, is normally not approved for four hundred thousand dollars on a loan. A single person. That's all. But again, that like that also like happens with circumstances and stuff, which, yeah, I do agree on that. But also you have to do y'all do have to take into consideration too. like there are going to be banks that is going to dis that, that is going to deny you just because not because of how you look, but literally they look at your they, they, they look at your credentials. They look at all your past transactions, everything, and to make sure that you're trustworthy to be even be part of the bank. Yes, there are pieces of shit that are in those banks that will try to turn away, turn you away just because of what you look like. And again, those pieces of shits are phasing out quickly and fast just because of the day and age we're living in. I know some of y'all don't believe that, but no, well, it's how actually could you speak on this issue. Have you never went to go and try and buy a home? Huh? I just I just wanted to say that y'all know the gentleman. Um, you remember, um, Ronan? You remember the gentleman that uh created or produced Black Panther? Yes. He went into his own bank and tried yeah. to get his own money. Yeah. And they locked him up. Yes, they, they did. said that he was stealing. Well, mainly just because of how the means of the money was getting pushed around. And I don't believe, though, and I'm just saying I'm one of those people that truly does not believe that story because it's bullcrap, especially from anyone that knows anything about history. No, that was bullcrap. This dude literally had the funds to create his own bank. He had the funds. He had the he had the friends, the connections to make his own bank. And the problem is, especially around that time when the Civil Rights Act was still already becoming in place and those officials that didn't like they did not like the idea were already getting replaced. They were trying to just pull out all the stops before most of them get phased, phased out that, oh, no, we're going to make sure that these guys do not get their Don't get no like cut of the pie. Don't get no type of financial thing. Again, it has been done. It has been it, like they have tried to stop us. But again, now we have more and more black banks like everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but we have, we're have we starting to have way more black banks than we ever had 50 years ago. Can I ask you a question? Do you know who's funding the banks? Like which family's funding the banks? I, I mean that a bank just don't appear with money in it. That money no, has to come from somewhere. Do you know who's giving the banks the money, these black-owned banks? The Federal Reserves. The Federal Reserves is just giving the black-owned banks money to operate? Well, they're supposed to. If they're going to have to operate a bank, they have to have some type of funding to actually distribute the money. So, right. I mean. Okay. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, out of all the people, like, out of all places where banks get their money from, they usually the Federal Reserves. And then, um, wait, wait, real quick before I drop, because I'm going to drop. But I heard you, I heard everybody idea about a victim or, or victims, right? To be a victim, you had to be victimized. Am I correct? That's usually yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Right. So or let's just, just say be hypothetically, if somebody tried to, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know if I can say, uh, uh, steal from me outside, uh, armed, right? Um, and they get it. Well, I'm a victim of a of a of a robbery. Mm -hmm. Um. Now let's just say ten years pass, and I haven't been robbed again. Does that not still make me a victim of being robbed 10 years ago? I don't know. Have you Here's the thing. Have you learned from that encounter? 
Um, it's not, if, I mean, it's if, not, hold it's, on, hear me out. It's nothing to learn from. I didn't do anything wrong. Someone. Or she, listen, listen. It's not. It's not about you that you did anything. You're a survivor. Why you can't be a survivor? It's, it's a life experience. I, I just, I just have a. Hold on. I'm, I'm just trying to. Uh, I, I got you because I do have a question on your survivor aspect. What were you asking me, Mister Ron? I was saying like no, no, no. I was saying like um. Damn. Hold on. Give me one second. Let me walk backwards. You were saying. I think you, you asked me. Did I learn from the experience? What do you mean by? Yeah, okay, no, so sorry. Now, now I remember. I wasn't saying that like as is like it was your fault or anything like that. I'm just saying like it's a life experience because things like that does happen. And after those experiences happen, and we got out of those those experiences, Scott. Well, not Scott Free. We just got out of those experiences. We learn from those experiences that way. In case something like that ever happens again we're more prepared for it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm, I'm still prepared to give up my money if something is in my face, sir. Yeah, absolutely. You're, You're right. prepared. Okay. Now that, I mean, no, okay. My that's question was this though. My question was, did that make me not a victim of a robbery 10 years ago? Here's the thing though. Do you still feel like you're a victim? Sure. This is, this is a simple question. I got and that robbed ten comes years with ago. An and, okay, so because ten years has passed, does that not make me a victim of the robbery ten years ago? Again, or that's literally how you feel. Like after the ten years, it didn't happen. It, it, it no it, longer existed. You was, you was, yes, you was. I'm still a victim from ten years. You're ago. not. You're not still. You. You're you not was. still. You were. <laughs> you were a victim, but you're not how a victim. Can you still no be more? something that already passed? But it, no, 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 no. The action is the robbery. I the am action is the robbery. The victim of the robbery. Does but that make were. me less of a victim ten years ago because I haven't been robbed since then? Yes. Or is you're that not still the robbery anymore? You're not. You're not. Is is versus was. That's two different things. I do being a victim after something happened. What like that's it, what it the thing happened. Happened. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's Here's like, so because Here, it was oh, 10 listen, years listen, ago, listen. it doesn't exist? Here's the thing. Or it never happened. I don't mean that. That just means you was. Listen. That's like Here's you lied. Okay, so let's, let's say if you, if, you, if you lied, if you were a liar at one time, you still a liar. After you, that, you, you lied. You're not a liar now. You might be telling the truth now, but you just stuck. That's just like that little cheater. Once a cheater, always a cheater thing. Like, if you cheated, <laughs> they probably considered you a cheater at that time, but you still a cheater? Nah, but it's because the actions are not on her. The actions were Thank done you. to her. Thank she can't you. change her actions of something that happened to her. She's, you're right, but guess what? She can change. She could change her outlook on how to deal with that that same situation if my it should ever happen again. My outlook, it, I cannot control. Well, I'm gonna say this: it just stick with what you believe in. So I guess outlook, I'm not about to argue that. That's crazy. I, you I got it. Care. No, it's, it's cool. I, I, I feel where y'all coming from, bro. Because I understand. But this is this is supposed to be a concept that we can share amongst all of us. I understand if y'all don't want to believe it, that's cool. But I, I, you ain't you ain't never really rude, Kev. And if I'm rude, I'm sorry. I'm no, not no, not you. Not, no, no, I understand. I'm just saying, like, the whole point is for us to explore how everybody think and feel. Got you. I'm trying to actually get people out there. That's the whole point of this topic. I'm trying to get them out that mindset because you, I believe we. That's I, I, actually I believe the whole thing what we really slaves to and uh and victim to is our mindset. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know the reason why I really say that and I thought about this some days because I did this topic before this I just brought it back up. What made me realize it was kind of gold. I think I was talking to my friend. I was talking to somebody on the phone about this. I was even thinking about like the people that's homeless, right? Um. That's this how I know they a slave to their mind or they op oppressed. Let's that's the word now. I guess oppressed, right? They approach to themselves. I don't think nobody in America. I, I just no. Nah, we I think we too privileged for that one. I even believe that our uh our our homeless people is privileged. Cause I even look at it. I look at it this way. This is how I know is they mine. I I think I be, I believe. Well, I actually know that they can make way more money. <laughs> they can make way more money than a person that's working a job, just basically off begging, right? So the fact that they can make so much money, I'm like literally like thousands for real. Like if they want to sit in the street all day and, and probably get a dollar or some, you know, change that stuff can really add up. You know, keep asking people if you just, you ain't got nothing else to do, right? Some people might even throw you a fireball. Somebody throw you twenty. You know, if you just sitting there begging all day at the edge of a um a, a thing, you can make a lot of money. But this yep. how I know their mindset because they don't they don't use that money to to build something with it. They they use that money to either feed feed their addictions. 
feet, whatever, you know, whatever caused them to even be, be that way, though. So it's like they really it's their mindset that's keeping them trapped, you know, because they can go get a license. They can go get all, the, all these things. They can they can they can find a way to get there. They can pay for these things. But the fact that they so stuck in the, the mindset that they got, they can't get out. So they trap. They only trap by their own mindset. Exactly. Everybody does not what how one thing may affect one child does not mean it affect the other person the same way. So where you may be strong in some areas mentally, that don't mean that a, another person is. And to disregard that is kind of insensitive. Can I ask? Wait, hold up. Who, who, right, who, who said that? I said that. T. Williams said no, that. No, who just said that? Who disregarded who? I'm trying to see who you're talking to about that. Well, you disregarding it by saying you feel like it's a mind thing. Well, if it's a mind thing, some, thing, some, some stuff don't affect people the same way. Well, did I not? That's, that's like you coming back to tell to, uh, me something happened to you, and I'm like, just you could get over it. Th that's you what you got out of it. All right, I just ain't gonna explain it again. I, hopefully, I everybody else got it. The, that's crazy. Because yeah, I can't actually, say nothing like that. You just took out what you wanted out of it, but that was nowhere near my point. I don't know. This time hurt. It be hurt my head. I'd be like, dang, people. It's like people be purposely missing my point, but they probably not. So whatever. I mean, that wasn't my point though. But I explained the whole thing and broke it down. But yeah, whatever. Hey, whatever you think. Whatever you got out of it. So if I disregarded, that's what I did. <laughs> I'm not taking it back. Okay. Here's the thing, and I, I do want to say this. It's not that he disregarded it because he didn't. You ain't got to explain that, really. You just really don't. I already explained it good enough. It don't have to get explained again, for real. Okay. People don't get it or they don't. That's just what it is. What topic are we on? There you go. There she go. <laughs> <laughs> we still on a, we kind of on the first one still, man. Uh, uh, why force people into believing they still slaves? Um, uh, exactly who is forcing? <laughs> The ones that are being oppressed. I think um I think uh people put it in their minds to think that they're slaves. To to truth be told, you ain't never been with the day in your life. Except you by your parents. You said what? I say except maybe by your parents. And I say maybe yes, by your yes, parents. Yes. Except for them. You ain't sat up here and picked no cotton. You ain't sat up here and got your stuff took and uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not gonna say like that in this times, but because it, it does happen by crazy people, um, sick people. So, um, but it's not on the level of what them slaves was going through. Uh, yo, yo, um, you are able. People are more privileged than than slaves was back then. Like you got so much that you can accomplish and become. So I think. Uh, <clears throat> People believe that they are uh, being treated like like slaves, but truth be told, you're not. Uh, I feel like there's a lot happening down here about how huh? the assumption middle road that the assumption is that there somebody is wallowing in this victim mentality and that's a separate issue i feel like everyone well, a lot of people are speaking are speaking about acknowledging obstacles and not necessarily wallowing in them um, i did like i said Ain't that nobody ain't never been, uh, ain't nobody in this time is being hung from a tree. Ain't nobody sitting up here being forced to do anything that they don't want to do. Everybody has self choice today. Um, I remember it was a time where, um, um, you know, you couldn't sit up here and uh, drink coffee with a white tea man or a white tea woman. It was a time where you couldn't even you you had you had to get your kids your kids had to be disciplined by the white team man. So at the end of the day, times definitely has changed. We are not um in the slave times like people be thinking. Um, unless you're talking about on the level of uh being in an industry and they they attack your your money that way or they'll sit up here and try to get you to su submit in a way uh like that so i don't think people are really uh 
being treated how how uh, our ancestors was back then. That's false. Oh, hey, now I just remembered the question I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask everybody on the panel, and I want to know because I just got told like on from another live from from a live that I just started a little while ago that apparently um, ancestors, right? The term ancestors could also refer to as like your parents and everyone above you, like grandparents and all that. Is that is that true? Because I because I, what, what I've learned about I don't even know what the question was. What was the like, does the term ancestor refer to anyone older than you, or does it or does it like uh, refer to like members of your family from generations before you? Because I was told the latter, you know? Yeah, it was oh, uh, I, I, uh, I, generations before you. It's the people that sat up here and offer your freedom. They sat up here and they had to go through all that uh, just to sit up here and just so you could sit up here and share a water fountain or, or a bathroom with the same, uh, uh, with different uh, nationalities of people. Like, uh, people got to understand, like, your ancestors is, is, is your, uh, the people that, uh, went through all the stuff that you wouldn't go through. That's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, I, I get that, but I mean, like, I was, like, I was just told, like, you technically your mom and dad are your ancestors. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> no, they're, 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 no, they're your direct descendants. Older, ill, like, I'm like that's not necessarily yeah. true. Like they're like they're your family member. They're they're your, they're your elders, but I mean, not necessarily yeah, no, no, no. Your ancestors. They're just your elders because you know you're alive with them. Thing about ancestors yeah, is, yeah. You, you, like you don't actually get to live with your ancestors or live alongside your ancestors. You essentially learn you learn about your ancestors through story and like you know other members of family. That's probably had some interactions. I don't know. I think you're getting elders and ancestors mixed up because when I think of it, I got to look at the definition, but when I think of it, I think of your elders being as your grandma, grandpa, uncle, auntie on the block and your ancestors mm -hmm. being the ones deceased in that generational timeline like Avatar or something. But you yeah, can say like your elders, your old heads, but not your ancestors. But I got to look yeah. at the definition to be sure. I agree with that because like from where I was literally from like how I've like learned like when I was growing up is like your ancestors are like you know your great great grandmama your great great great, 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 great. Oh, I am so sorry that was my bad my alarm went off that was that, whoa like, that was he the was about to call pick up wake up the ancestors with that one <laughs> my bad <laughs> anyways but like nah for real, like I was always told that like you know Ancestors are like, you know, your great great grandparents, your great 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 grand aunts, and all them, like all that is your ancestors. But like your grandparents, your your parents, like, no, they're not your they're not your ancestors, they're just your elders. Those are the ones you actually grew up with. Those are the ones you actually learned something from, you know? At least it's at least I mean am, am I mm. wrong now? I don't know. I don't no, Ronan, Ronan, they just answered it already, sweetheart. It's, it's not the grandparents. It's just people way before. Like, in your, okay. it's in your direct bloodline, but they're not people that you actually live okay. amongst. Yeah, so so ancestors are those who you did not physically see with your own eyes. They're way back in time, but they're still in your bloodline type. But everybody has their own def definition of ancestors, guys, because clearly 2024, you can have your own definition in anything. So you might want to research and look it up and find it out for yourself, okay? But real quick, because... um. T. Williams, I don't know if T. Williams was saying this, but I would wish the other girl was in here because I did want to add, um, so don't want to be disingenuous in anybody's experience in a sense, um, but I do know when it comes to the, um, what was she saying, the appraisals, with the appraisals, um, the thing is, we know that prejudice does exist in America. It does absolutely exist. We cannot deny that. Um, how we go about our life and how we move that should be based on how we what we do and how we present ourselves in life in general just because there are roadblocks doesn't mean we cannot succeed in other things or, or succeed in the things that we want it may just it may take more time and that is a part that is un, um it's kind of it's messed up but it doesn't take away the fact that we have the ability to pursue the things that we do desire but i did just want to say that 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 um when it comes to like appraisals and stuff like that for your house people can't be biased like i said earlier um 
with that and prejudice, because I know a couple that, because um, my mom is a realtor and she's dealt with, uh, or heard people talk about this as well when it comes to having to like act like it's a white person, you know, for with the home, they'll probably get more from it. So like, it's, it's different things that people can be finicky about for sure when it comes to mm-hmm. us as black people. But I think it just, it doesn't, it doesn't negate the fact that you have the ability to get what you want. There may you just, just be creative. We're, we're, we always talk about how creative we are, how, you know, um, for what we are, how, um, you know, all these different things that we are like creativity wise. So we have to do different things that we want, but doesn't mean that we can't get the things that we want. Just like uh, she just was talking about. There are things that we can absolutely um, still push past that, that before wasn't even a thought, wasn't even a possibility. Nobody saw it. It was just a concept. And now these things are actually doing. So just want to put that out there real quick. Yeah. I want to I want to add this too, though, because um, and like I said, I understand all this. I done experienced it. Like even now, right? The reason why my name is Kevin, my, my dad told me that one because I think, uh, you know, her, his mother. He knew how I was, and he they knew Kevin was more of a um like a middle name, like you wouldn't know if it was black, black or YT, you know. So they knew they knew how the system was, you know. Sometimes you have to because it's, it's it's especially like where where you at. But the only reason why I'm saying is now because I've seen we have, and it's crazy we so stuck on because everything don't go the way we want to. We don't see how far we progressed. I think we doing way better than a lot of what our ancestors have been going through, and they were still pushing. They was worse than us. That's the only reason why I don't really have that much sympathy or for or even whatever to, towards these people today because we so freaking spoiled. And that's why it goes back to when I was talking about it's our mindsets we in because even even. Even then, they was getting the people that really uh like that was going through the worst, right? Our answers, right? They was still like if they didn't have that fight in them or they was weak as how we is today, they we would we wouldn't be here today. You know what I'm saying? So I'm mm-hmm. like, dang, why the heck we acting weaker than them? And we got way more privileges than they had. We got more freedom than they have and everything. We keep on going back to well, we're limited to this and we can't do that. I don't think that's how they was thinking. I exactly. believe they wasn't. You know what I'm saying? They looking at it like I don't care. You might be limiting me. You might got this in front of me, but I'm still. I don't care what you told me. I'm gonna still make it past. We gonna get past it because it ain't gonna take your little human. So you it ain't gonna take y'all to hold me back. That's the mindset I'm trying to get in people's mind. In people's mind, you know what I'm saying? So that n- no matter how we want to look at it, that's why I use the example of, for the people that's homeless. We're tra- it's the mindset that's, that's trapping us because we don't have that fighting. A lot of people don't have that fighting them. Some people do right some people got that give up i understand all that right but it's just like it's a bringing it's bringing awareness to what we really slave to and oppressed by that's just what it is because like i said it's people like the people they will literally be sitting there looking at you and be like i can't believe y'all you they probably shaking their head to a lot of people like what the heck y'all ain't went through not even a, a pinch of what we went through and y'all crying like that I wish we did. That's why I asked the question before. I said, if they was the switch, who would switch sides? You know, who would switch generations? They would literally switch. They would switch, right? And we would probably freaking with the mindset we got now, we would be toe out the frame trying to try to live what they did because we so, like I said, that it's that privilege, that spoiledness. The more we get, the more we, the more we want. I'm not saying that nobody don't deserve to get. I mean, I don't like to use that word though, but I'm just saying we don't realize we don't never take the time. Even going back to the topic I had yesterday, we don't take the time to appreciate where we at right now and try to do like and try to make more out of it. We can, we got to keep getting stuck on what I can't do. I can't do this, so that's why I can't do that. No, I mean, I, maybe just me, right? Because I always, even since I was younger, it, it was nothing about to stop me. If somebody told me that I can't do this, I'm going to prove them wrong. But like I said, we don't use the, the, the prove them wrong tactic on like negative and toxic thing. Well, I'm going to prove to you that I got a mouth on me. I'm going to prove to you that I snap and I got that. You know what I'm saying? We prove all this stupid stuff that don't mean anything. Instead of proving that, you know what, I'm about to make this happen. I'm going to get to my goal. Whatever I, I'm trying to do, I'm going to make it happen even if it take all my life. But like I said, a lot of people is freaking that we it's soft. We ain't soft gen era, and that's just what it is. That's reality. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I mean to a certain extent I do have compassion because I don't, you know, it's the way that people got taught and the way people, you know, but it's like at the end of the day, like when we gonna wake one a lot of us gotta wake up. And I'm not about to stop with me. I'm not gonna stop saying what I'm saying. Some people gonna gonna grasp it and, and move forward with it. Some people gonna act even weaker. It is what it is. Like I like I that saying is real. 
the the only only the strong gonna survive. The strong goes is is gonna survive. Survive. That's just what it is. That's real talk. That's the world is only been for to build for tough people. The weak people usually fail. And Kev. it's sad that it's like that, but that's just reality because we can't sit here and keep waiting on the people that's just weak and holding our hand while they just, and they dragging us back. They are gonna make us weaker. We gotta, you know, we gotta, we gotta keep moving and, and, and leave the door open for the weak people, right? Yeah, I'm not trying to call it like that, but I'm just saying the people that's not not there or that that don't realize it, leave the door open for them when they're ready. But we can't keep on waiting on them to be ready for us to move forward. That just don't, it don't work like that. Exactly. Okay. I wanted to ask you. I was waiting on him to finish. Yeah, I think T was okay. seeing her uh, muted. Okay. Okay. I wanted to ask you with the with the foundation that has been prepared for you. Do you feel like you have used it to your full advantage? Not you're just doing regular, but if you think, like you say, if the people before us went through all of this. Do you feel like where you are now, you feel like you have a, 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 pr a pretty fair playing ground. Do you feel like you have reached your full potential of what you should be doing? No, never, never. I mean, I'm doing with what the lifestyle that I chose to have. I'm not asking really for too much because I don't really want, that's my lifestyle, right? But I think a lot of us get stressed by the lifestyle that we choose and then say that we get oppressed because of what we choose. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with the simple things, low key. You know, I, I'm good off just expressing love so I, I love doing this 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 platform I'm doing now, right? Just just to you know, I love seeing people just grow for the things that they really want to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm the person that try to tell people they can, and I love that. If it it feeds me because I motivated somebody else, they and it motivates me that that I motivated them, then it motivated me. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's how that works. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about full capacity or something like that. I just make what's best out of my life every day because we're not promised to live tomorrow. I don't know why people act like that. So I don't know what the limit, and I, I believe in God. So it's just like another thing is like I, I feel like I have another purpose. I don't think it's meant for me to be rich and all this other stuff or bring generational wealth. If it come, it come. But I think I, I'm from what what I've been living and what I've been doing since these past years. I feel like this is just my passion at the moment is to keep bringing awareness because I, I see more and more people just not aware. You know what I'm saying? And some things I wasn't aware about, and I'm like even the things that with that is like. If we are aware about these things, what we gonna do about it? I'm, I'm, I'm always being that person is what we gonna do about it. And that's just come with the maturity thing. Cause I'm tired of talking cause I'm about to be 34 next month. And all I've been hearing is what we've been through and then, then what we gonna do with that. Okay, now what can we do from this point? That's all, that's all it is. And that's what I'm trying to do is put that little push. If it can take one person that's trying to do the business or something like that. Cause maybe I'm not doing the business, right? But hopefully I can give them that push to go move forward to do that business and let them know that they can. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's me. I don't know what a full capacity is. Maybe I'm not there yet, but as, as long as I'm trying to better myself every day, I get a chance when I wake up, right? When I get a chance to wake up, which is a blessing, right? Because I don't wake up complaining. Every, time, every day I wake up, I try to do it. I mean, I try again. You know, ne who the next person I bless, how much I can make the best out of my day. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's how I look at it. So I don't know a full capacity thing, though, but if that's what the full capacity is, I guess. I don't know. Can I say something, uh, Kev? I'd say that you are positively contempt. And I say that in the best way possible. Like you're like you're happy no matter what no matter what life throws at you right now because you're not gonna allow life to, to tear you down. And I'm gonna no. tell you right now, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like I've been trying to find like a lot of motivation just to try to do that. Like yeah. I, I could say I'm a depressed <laughs> stupid notifications. My bad. <laughs> Anyways, I can say I'm a it's depressed gonna be person. It's going to challenges in our life. I'm going to throw that. It's going to always be challenges. It's not going to always be peachy, though. But it's just like, yeah. don't just sit in it. Don't sit in it. And, and you know what? That Like, that like that's not, like that's my biggest thing. Like, I I truly, do, I truly don't uh, try to sit in it ever because, like, my biggest motivation, at least to get up in the morning, is my kids, you know? Like, I, like I do what I do is just, just because I pass the time just so I can, like, make sure my kids are good. And like I get on these platforms because I like to engage with people. I like to make people laugh. I like to make people think. I'll make people cry, but then I just make sure like they understand what like what they're crying about. But point is like I get on this mainly just for the fun of it. And then it's become more of like, you know what? Maybe I should just do my like do more of these. Like actually like make some lives instead of just like popping in on lives, you know? And Times to where, like, you know, I make some of the lives, like, not many people be biting and want to join and stuff. Like, I, I just be having fun, just just be sitting there, just, you know, contempt. 
And then there's and then there's sometimes where I, like where I feel like man I don't know if I'm doing it I don't even know why, like why why does it even bother you know like I limit myself because like when I get into those funks like the only thing that limits me is me at this point because I make right. sure like the world can't limit me especially how much I've limited myself like I could do anything I can as long as I could try to just keep that mindset that I can do it you know mm-hmm. and that's why. It's, and sorry, I'm trying to land this plane right here. Like, I'm more res- I'm responsible for my happiness and the response and, and like the happiness with my kids. But more importantly, I could get I could do anything as long as I can get myself out this mindset. And the best thing I did out of this whole thing was like I got me at a good a good job that pays really 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 well. Like sometimes like sometimes it get it, it gets to me that I don't get to spend time with the kids, but at the same time I'm like. You know what? It's all good. I'm providing for them. They like this is the best thing I could do right now. So I just want to say that. I'm gonna say that. She got one, you got one bar. Uh, that's why your stuff delaying. Uh, Alter, you got one bar. I know she was trying to say something though, but her stuff got one bar. But go ahead, uh, man. Thank you to her. Uh, she ain't gonna get back. Say, y'all need to hit them likes. Share the live. Support Kid, you know, um, sit up here and subscribe because yeah, he is posting a wonderful live for all of us to be here. Y'all can at least tap his screen, get him to 10K. It's, it's enough of us up in here. You know, yes, I heard you, sis. I got you. <laughs> um, I yes, thank you for joining Kev's team. We appreciate y'all for joining his team. Like I said, like and subscribe and share the live. Bring your cousins, your uncle, your mama, your your daddy over here because because they need to be a part of this conversation. Thank y'all. Um, <laughs> I see your main thing with the mob break. Okay. But um, yeah, I wanted to just say that I feel like this generation is like you said, we live in soft times, like to where you know a lot of people they want to blame it on oh my my uh my mama and 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 our grandmama they didn't sit up here and do what they were supposed to do for us no but baby you gotta understand you are about to become the new uh grandmama and the new aunties and uncles so it's like what are you going to do you can't just constantly sit up here and blame it on people that's no longer here with us we gotta sit up here and make some moves we can't sit up here and just say Oh, maybe because my mama um ain't give me the best life or my daddy ain't sit up here and give me the best life. That doesn't mean that I can't provide the best life for me and what comes after me. So at the end of the day, people just in the comfortability of always trying to um uh find things to enable them in life. And I think um we need to sit up here and get the people that actually wants to make 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 some moves, make make things happen for the better of um for the better of our people. And I just feel like if we ain't gonna sit up here and uh make no moves to so our people can be better, then at the end of the day, what is we wasting our time talking? I I would say this. I wouldn't dismiss um Hold on, hold on, Buddha, hold on one second, y'all. We gotta we gotta get people in. Um he is, I think was here, and then Buddha, right? I think it's he is Buddha and then let's get to Keith. Okay. And then we'll get we can just do open panel from that part. Hey, what's going on, Kev? Keith and she it she she's just my apologies. <laughs> Alter Buddha. What's going on, panel? So um, your first question is why force people into believing they are still slaves? Um, I think you put this out on another live here, did Kevin? But I think um, because a lot of people, two things, they love to they love to be professional victims, um, and you know you get you get people to believe in that they're slaves. You can take their rights from them without even giving much of an effort. Because you indoctrinate, they well, they've allowed themselves to be indoctrinated into that 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 mindset. So I'm looking at my computer right now, right? Someone captured, sold, or born into chattel slavery is what a slave is. Um, I don't think any of us fall into that definition. And to be honest with you, we need to stop doing that. The victim, the victim mentality is insane. I come from the west side of Chicago. I have been involved in a lot of different things and none of it was good. Um, you know, Vice Lords, G's, El Rukins, Latin Kings, MS-13s, whatever. 
Now, fast forward, because of God's grace, he spared my life. And because of his grace, I'm a senior manufacturing engineering manager, right? I wasn't supposed to, I was supposed to be a statistic. I was supposed to be an Oak Hill Cemetery somewhere. Oh, lock, locked up, you know, those type of things, right? None of that took place. So, you know, and I don't blame, oh, it was my environment. No, I did that. That was me, nobody else. And, and the truth of the matter is, before I was doing what I was doing, before I went into it, or whether, you know, you know, shooting at somebody who shot back at me, retaliating, whatever the case may be, I always knew what the consequence and outcome would be for that. No excuses. I didn't make them. So stop making them. A lot of y'all just, it, it, any excuse you can hold on to, excuse after excuse after excuse, stop it. Stop it. And, and be content. Be content. He's, he's allowed you to see another day. That's an opportunity. That's his grace. That's his mercy. Because if he, if he was just about being just, he'll eliminate every last one of us and he'd be right in doing so. So his just, merciful, perfect, omnipotent, omnipresent way has allowed us to see this day. So you have an opportunity to change that, right? And build good, fruitful relationships. Stop acting like a victim. I'm not a victim. Never have been. I'm nobody's slave. The only slave I am is of Christ Jesus. So take it how you want. I'll say this. Um, I agree with everything you're saying. And I will say this. And so your environment does create your mindset, but it's up to you to break free from the bonds and decide what you want. Because you can't help. You are a product of your environment. Because if I take a, a a black child and put them in a suburban environment and then they go to the hood, the hood going to be like, hey, you bougie as hell. But it's because the environment they came from, they wanted certain things and they acted a certain way because of that environment. Now, if you take someone who's in the hood and, you know, strife and hunger and all this other stuff and you put them in a suburban area, he's going to be like a white tiger to these people. You know, the way he conducts himself, if he can articulate certain words, but he still got that instinct in the back of his mind on how to move and what to do and this and that. He's a little, he got a little season into his packet, but he can still be business minded. So it depends on where you come from, where you're starting, but that don't mean you got to finish there. So I would say this, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to come with the idea that, you know, everybody plays victim. It's okay be, that you recognize system of, of, of oppression, but don't dwell in it. Don't make that every reason why, like, oh, I didn't get hired because I'm a black. No, maybe because you didn't meet the qualifications or they just didn't want to hire you. It's not always like that. But yes, they are systems of oppression. Because if we're going to say that, then women should not be feminists. They shouldn't be talking about a male patriarchy. They shouldn't be talking about nothing. We shouldn't bring up Donald Trump and anything he said about slavery. And you shouldn't be scared that he's going to try to reverse the, you know, the law to make it like Jim Crow back in the day. So I think you should recognize these are systems of oppression, whether you're experienced classism because it's white on white, racism because it's white on black, or, you know, if you're male on female, you experience the patriarchy and it's just sexism. Whatever you are, you're going to experience that class, and that's your form of racism. Point blank, period. I don't know what it's like to be a woman, and I damn sure don't know what it's like to be a black woman. I can understand to be empathetic and sympathetic with your story, but I will never truly understand. Does that mean I can't try to use whatever powers I have to invert myself to save you and help you if I see I can? Yeah, I could do that. Same thing I'll tell a white person. Yeah, you're probably not racist, but if you have the power to counteract someone who is, why not do so without endangering your life? It goes for any situation. It can apply to anything, sexism, ableism, whatever you want to call it. So it recognizes the system of oppression, but don't let that be the boulder that you got to wear every day saying, oh, it's the reason why I didn't want to wake up. It's the reason why I didn't go to the gym. It's a white man. No, recognize, recognize and understand it when you encounter it. But not everything is like that. That's all I, I would say. Well said. I think um, slavery... Uh, slavery, physical bonds ended, but slavery never ended. You know, uh, I don't think people think enough about the aftermath, right? So just like when 9-11 happened, even though it's gone, there's still an aftermath. So that means that there's still an effect 
right? So when we think about slavery, again, we're not in the physical bonds of slavery, but I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome. It's a book by Dr. Joyce DeGruy, where she talks about the untreated trauma from slavery that, that all black people deal with. So, and that are affected by. So with that being said, um, when you look at people, there's, a, there's a, uh, the idea that we're doing a lot better. We're not, we're actually doing worse. When you look at it back in the day, there were more families, there was more marriages, there was more unity. And we're not displaying that in, in large numbers like they were back in the day. And that was a big part, that was a big part of us uh, succeeding. I think the worst thing our ancestors could have done to us was integrate us further into white supremacy. And we are affected by white supremacy. Some people tend to take that victim's uh, mentality or the Stockholm syndrome and, and uh, the woe is me. But the reality is that more and more people have to be aware of, of what's going on. Um, what's going on in, in, in black people. I mean, you got things like eugenics, if you're familiar with eugenics. Uh, you know, we all know about Planned Parenthood. There has been, uh, they've been trying to get rid of us for years. And one of the best things that they come up with is the mentality. The mentality, right? And that's the one thing that black folks don't examine enough. How is white supremacy affecting my mindset? and the thoughts about myself. Look what they've done to keep you from excelling. Look at the great links that they, that they go to keep you from excelling. Why? Because they're afraid of your power and who you are. So, so let's create this fatherless home, right? Let's create all of this so, you, so it'll take you so long to get and understand how God created you. Cause you got to dig through all of this trauma before you even become the person that God created you. What's going to set you back years. And a lot, a lot of people don't even get to that. So they pass all of that down to their children and then, and they repeat the process over and over and over again. So the reality is there's need to be more people aware of how they are under attack in this white supremacist system. I'll let I think we need to just simply, because uh, it's a lot of people that's not even, I don't know, I, I'm looking, maybe it's just me, but we ain't got the men that we had once back in slavery times. We have men who sitting up here, they scared to be men. Men are sitting up here literally turning into women. And it's like, you're literally, uh, it's like they literally trying to control all three of the people, which is children, men, and women. They want us all to be submissive under their agenda because it's all, it's a way of, if they cannot keep us in line, then their plan gonna fail. Well, I mean, just to speak on what Keithan was talking about is that everything, everything that we're seeing is all a divide. It's all a divide. It's a division with race. We have a division with politics. Why, why do we have Republicans and Democrats? Why, and we have a division with the police system. We have a, a division with the genders. And, and it's all separating you from God. So it's like it's keeping you from what you should actually really be doing. <laughs> and making your choices making your choices based upon your spirit and, and where you actually come from. So all these divisions that are being separated and now they're, 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 they're fixing it because we're all figuring it out and now they want to switch it up and they oh well, let, let me try and divide it over here. Now that they've got our children at five and six and seven years old saying, well, you can change your dinner. They're trying to divide it because they're not winning the war. Wow. Uh, did um, Jaira and Buddha go? Yeah, Jaira and Buddha, they spoke, but Buddha, you want to speak again? Well, no, I was just making sure everybody talked. Uh, so oh, okay. I guess whoever. 
Ronan, look like you got something. I know you muted your mic. What you got for us? Oh, shit. And whenever you're all ready, we can get to this next prompt, or the first prompt, actually. <laughs> I know. I... <laughs> you know you always start stuff, Kim. <laughs> yeah, I say no, proceed, bro. Proceed. Yes. Okay, are you going in panel order? Um... I thought yeah, 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 we can do that, we can do that. Um, I'm going to start off with Keith and then uh, uh, have, um, have any other cultures gotten treated worse than us, Black Americans? What you got for us, Keith? It look like you're on a teacup, never mind. So I should go the other way then. Let me do uh, his gyro and then go up and then Ronan and then go up. Oh, no, matter of fact, let me just start with you, T. Uh, T then down and then Lovely and down. Yeah, hey, he's know. super he's super teacup now. <laughs> uh, uh tea. as a as a whole, no. I don't think anyone has. Uh if you look at individual events, uh possibly so, definitely. But as a whole and like how long, like the, the after effects of it and people continuing certain institutions to keep keep it going of what they started. There's no one that got treated worse. Um, like we are the only people in the world, you know, that still holds on to our oppressor's last names for the most part as black Americans. Um, the diet was changed. Mm. Diet was changed, language was changed, and that all fills into health. Even as far as, you know, black Americans dating back to slavery, like not being able uh not being allowed to read for the longest has really even now that has trickled into some families um so no i don't to answer the question no i don't think anyone has gotten worse oh no do you so you said you believe we the worst yes i do okay all right uh go ahead man thing I thought you said lovely was next. Nope, got you. <laughs> We're going straight down. <laughs> You're such a trickster. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, uh, okay, what's the question? <laughs> got you all. I got um, all of She's in the middle of it. Yeah. Have any other cultures gotten treated worse than black, us black Americans? Mm, 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 mm. Uh, let's think about it. Uh, no, besides Jesus. Uh, no, I'm playing. But, um, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I think, um, we were, we, we always been treated the worst because that's why we have so many people uh, who looks like us who constantly feel like they got to prove themselves in this society because you was always getting treated like the bottom of the barrel. You always been seen as the, uh, as a, uh, as a person who they don't want to see grow in life. They don't want to see us become anything excellent. That's why they sit up here and they wipe out certain bloodlines when it comes to people that look like us because they want, they don't want certain type of minds. They don't want the Malcolms. They don't want the Martin Luther Kings. They don't want the Nipsey Hustles. They don't want nobody who sits up here and try to be a great leader uh, that looks like us. So that's why they wipe out our bloodlines. They sit up here and they try to control um, uh, our men by trying to sit up here and make them more feminine, uh, taking away their masculine energy because that's why they wanted to keep them out the homes because they felt like at the end of the day, they don't want to see nothing greatness come from uh, people that looks like us. So, yeah, I think that we are. Uh, We know how to make our uh, the worst positions uh, basically uh, be the best positions for us, if that makes sense. Like, like how they say we all make uh, turn something into uh, nothing into something. That's how I feel about us. Okay. She got Ronnie. Okay. Well, um, now. 
on a real on a realistic standpoint, like I get where everyone's coming from on this one. Um, now, historically, and just from you know me researching, I'm a, I'm, I'm a historian when it comes to stuff. I like to I like to read and I like to read. And yes, we have had a tremendous, tremendous amount of trauma done upon us by our captors, if we want to call them that. And but I will say this comparative to everywhere else across the across the world, at least the ones that were doing the, 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 transla- the transatlantic slave trade. No, we were not the worst ones. We did not get the worst. Because if anyone knows any, if anyone knows like, like the places like, let's just, I'm just going to throw, throw it out, throw like one location out, uh, Argentina in particular, like they were one of the few, like last remaining countries to actually get rid of their slaves. Besides us, we got rid of our, like we, we abolished slavery before they even did. And their mistreatment of slaves were five times worse than what America's done, which actually baffled my mind when I read this, because I read through like three different sources. One of them happened to be an Arge- an Argentinian his- historical novel, and it was like when I when I read that, I was like, "This is like whoa." What did you say, uh, Ryan? I missed it. There's. Like there has been other cultures that's had it that's had it way worse than Black Americans. But I'm but I'm saying like at least on the translating slave trade, the where at least where where the comparison is plausible, is that like other places that's had slaves and stuff compared compare them to us. We are literally just it 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 ain't nothing here, which which is which is crazy to say. And I and I say that with a full hearted chest, like it's crazy to say, because like from all the well, for all that we've learned and for all that we know about, about our own, huh? What's up? I said we're asking who are you talking about? Who? The Argentine uh, in Argentina in particular. They were one of the few remaining countries to get rid of their slaves, of, like after we did. That's not true. They got rid of their hey, before because... before we do that, just just let them run because it's gonna yeah, we and I'm going back and forth though because I, I think it's gonna get deeper than it is though. Um, so yeah, Ron, I think you probably was good on that though already, then because yeah, we gotta get to all the other people though. Oh, yeah. I know y'all ready, yeah, yeah, because I, I even got a point of view though that y'all might not like either. But uh, go ahead, lovely. And then jab you last though. Uh, it's it's lovely, then alter, then gyra, then you. Ooh. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh. Man, you guys are getting deep today, Kev. This is all That's your That's what fault. she said. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we know how Kev like, works. We know how I Kev like works. I like that, Kev. I like that. <laughs> so, um, have any other cultures gotten treated worse than us? Um, well, that, that is you, Black, black Americans. Um, no. Um, because I, I think, and I was looking, I was looking this up, and I, I've, I've done this like research for like ever, ever, like my whole life. And if you look at taxon- ta- um, taxonomy, but a lot of people don't even look into that and understanding how um, people were classifying what, what they call organisms, but they were basing everything off the color of skin. And, and, and that's what, 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 what created laws around it. So a lot of people are not even understanding the laws that were created around it, and that's why we have all these um, we have all these police issues, um, you know, with um, uh, racial discrimination, all this stuff. It was all based upon because if you're if you're black, you're going to be looked at one way. If you're white, you're going to be looked at another way. So that's what I'm going to say. All right. Uh... All to you. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully her stuff is facey. I still see one bar, man. Yeah, I'm we'll trying see. to check it. My signal is, is is um an outage over here, so like my, I'm trying to. I was gonna try. To- oh, that makes sense. You did say it was like that for the last couple of weeks, so just go ahead and rock it through. Then, and if it might be a delay, hopefully we catch it though. But you you should be able to talk straight through though. 
You talking to him? Might have to mute or unmute. I don't hear nothing. I don't hear her either. You might have been talking for a good minute. I didn't hear anything. That was crazy. Dang, you still can't hear me? There you go. You good now. There you go. There you go. Dang, okay. <laughs> Sick hates me. So yeah, and I was saying, um, I would uh, definitely say um, black uh, people in America, definitely, I would say. So I would have to like, I don't know, research this to see his point of view. Like, that's why I was like, when we say certain things, I would wanna like know where are you coming from with that point? Um, what actually happened to them? Where, how, what was making you have that concept? Um, so we can either get on the same page or completely shut down what you just said. Um, but I would definitely say, yeah, black people. Um, and then the thing is too, when it comes to how he muted me, <laughs> when it comes, to, <laughs> when it comes to, um, how we see different cultures now, right? I think when it comes to us and maybe we're just, you know, biased in this point of view, but it seems like we're the ones or the main ones, um, that are the most broken down as far as don't have the desire to create, um, you know, genuine healthy families like it's been like so like the effects of this and i think that's kind of what keith was trying to make a point of the effects of that happening was very much link long lingering to where it's breaking us apart more and more and more so i give his point of saying like you know in certain times we've been, we was better in a sense how we were together but it's like it just it's breaking down even more so i think just how how terribly it was done physically mentally emotionally spiritually um purposefully right definitely um i would say black americans have definitely had it the worst which is why even in this conversation it's hard for us to move past certain points or to feel like we can in some not just in this in this conversation but um with with our communities in general because of that reminder that we have and because of those looking back in history because none of us here have physically experienced it but that's how that's how deep that thing was that is affecting people long term longer so if we keep denying it then we won't i feel like we won't get as far but if we keep um thank you lala but if we keep um pulling away from it too, then we don't get further. So it's like, we got to acknowledge that I get that. So this conversation I think is important because what it does is helps us to see, yeah, there was, if there was effects on us, right? There definitely was effects on us. However, where can we push past now and come together? It's like, you see the enemy did this to you type thing? Like the enemy that the people have done steps, right? But what are we going to do? Are we going to become, be going to partner up with the enemy and do and continue to tear us down like we're doing? Are we going to say, hey, no, today we're not, we're going to stop this. We're going to come together. We're going to see the beautiful, the, um, the beauty and the benefits of coming together and creating families and thriving and doing the things that we want to do and desire. Or are we going to sit here and say, we got to stay down, y'all. White man got his hand on us. You know what I'm so it's like it's all of that we got to pull it all together to come up because yes i feel like as far as i'm gonna go back to the point yes i think black people definitely got treated the worst when it comes to the full capacity the full um concept of what we endure all those different um categories that were broken down in us has definitely lingered down from generation to generation to generation and now we're here so if we don't realize what we can do differently and come back together then it's gonna we're gonna continue to now be our own enemies all right, that's it. All right, uh, uh, Jira, Jira, Jeff, then uh, Sean. Okay, so for the answer to that question, to be honest with you, I don't know, Kev. I don't know if if we've had it worse. I know the Scots had it bad. I like your answer. That was good. You know, I mean, I just got to keep it real because I really don't know. Um, back in the days, when it's hard for people to say that too. I like that you said that though, but I, I think I, I like every person that actually say that. <laughs> but that, go ahead, go my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, you good. Um, you know, back in the time where the Scots were, you know, held in bondage by those of the Brits, 
the British Empire, which was the longest running, um, there, there were some horrendous things that went on, you know, and people just think that William Wallace movie, I'm like, no, no, it, it, it was way darker than that. But the bottom line is this, we keep each other apart. We do that. We do it to ourselves. The things that is it's immorality versus morality. That's what it is. And and I I made the statement similar to and um classic classic man's love. Where I was like I I don't think that us fully coming together is. I don't know if it's wise or if it's in and if it's a, a a tangible thing that we could actually foresee. And the reason why is because I know some people I do not want to team up with. I will pray for them. I hope to evangelize aspect, but I will I team up with knowing that what their how, how dark their minds and hearts are. Absolutely, I would not want to team up with that. Um, but evangelize and pray that God transforms their heart. Yes. Um, so I I don't I don't I don't think that we were the the ones treated worse or whatever the case may be. I, I don't have that information. I have to really do my due diligence to even come to a conclusion that is a of of, of sound conclusion. So All right, uh Jeff, Jeff and Sean. Then me, then open panel, because I got something. What I say is sound, guys. Just believe what I said. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you hear me? She said, I'm clearing that. <laughs> Can you hear me? Go ahead, uh, Jeff. Oh, what's up? Hey, how you doing, uh, everybody? How you, how you feeling, man? I'm good, brother, man. Hey, I kind of agree with what my man just spoken. Um, it's subjective, but I will say this. If you look at the Aztecs and the, um, and the Incas, they don't exist no more. So they wiped them out. So we still here, we still kicking and surviving. Mm. But then if you, it's all subjective from when it comes to that. But as far as, you know, us as a people it, in the early um, 1900s, we were doing good as a, as a race. And they systematically um, interfered with that. And um, then we had the leaders in our community misled us some of them even spoke of it before their demise. Then the church, we, we allow leaders in our church to mislead us, that didn't hold the community accountable. Then we stop holding people in the community accountable. Everybody ain't gonna make it. Everybody ain't meant to, to make it, even some of our people. And we got to hold them accountable. We got to leave them alone, we got to ostracize them. And we keep falling behind trying to save a drowning person. They don't want to be saved. And that's our, that's the biggest problem in our community. We don't hold people accountable and nobody won't be held accountable. Everybody mm. won't be right. Nobody won't be wrong. And that's because there's no leadership. Real leadership ain't going to be liked all the time because you're going to tell, you're going to say what's necessary. And sometimes what's necessary ain't the truth. Ain't what sound good, ain't what's pretty, you know? And we can't invict, like you said earlier, you can have a victim mentality and don't succeed. And then success ain't everything people say it is. Success ain't money. Success is having a good family, having a, being in a good community where you can come together, and whether you're sick or whether you need something, somebody's there to, to help each other out. It's just, it's just on an emotional level. Everybody equate success to fame, fortune, and money. And, and that's what we got away from in our community. You look, uh, we had several communities around the country that was successful, had millionaires. You talking about the early 1800s, the late, well, late 1800s and the um, 1900s. And all that went away. And that's systematically from the government and from the laws that existed, redlining, segregation, Jim Crow. So, I mean, you could say that, but hell, the Incas and the, and the um, Aztecs, they ain't here no more. How bad is it for them? I'd rather be us than them. So mm. it's all the, it all depends on how you look at it. And and I I say don't worry about the past. Learn from the past and get together to the like minded people that, that see the better good for the whole community. And the ones that don't, ostracize them, hold them accountable. And when they don't want to be held accountable, ostracize them. And that's what we have to do. We got to stop trying to kick rocks to people that don't want to understand. That the collective understands, you know, 
And that's the biggest problem. It's, it's more mental because everybody got this subjective thing of what they think success is. And success is just being happy, being peace. I'd rather peace than riches and everything. Just peace. And peace is minding your business, being thankful for what you have, and having a family and friends that you can that they're supportive and got your back. I think that's success. So you can build everything else around that. So it just depends on how we look at it. I agree. Okay. Yeah, before you agree or disagree, uh, go ahead, Sean, and then I'm gonna go to his open panel. Loki, I want to let old dude up. Now I ain't gonna even lie. I seen somebody say yeah, something. Yeah, look, I want to hear that about the rest. You of see? Stuff. Yeah, I want to hear that. <laughs> we uh, we I'm both curious. seen that. I'm curious. Hey, Kev, uh, you you got to answer too before we go to. Oh, I am. I am. Okay. Actually, I think I want old dude to go. And <laughs> it's like nah, I don't know. But go ahead, uh, go ahead, Sean. Hey, I, I I was looking at that too. You uh, <laughs> we be catching yeah, yeah. like, hold, on, I gotta see this one. Uh, I, I want to. I'm trying to be careful. When hey, Ronald, let me switch out for two seconds. I know you've been over here for a good minute. Just, just sit in the thing. He, I'm, I'm gonna bring you right back up, though. No, you good. You good. Yep. Go ahead, Sean. Oh, I, um, I said I, I'm trying to be. Well, I want to ask this question first, uh, because I know my takes be my my views is kind of crazy as hell. Uh, do do y'all believe that? African Americans or Black Americans are different than Negroes. Who? That, that that was a, I want I want I want to hear the answer before I, I before I if if I don't like the vibe I'm gonna go to a different route. So. <laughs> <laughs> you say he's testing the waters. Yeah, yeah. What you mean? <laughs> are they different? Fuck. <laughs> 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 say, uh, say less. Do you hear black, that? What black, you mean? Black, black Americans and Negroes. Do you think those are the same type of people? The same group of people? No, no, no. it's different. Okay, 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 cool. Uh, with that being said, I believe that uh, since there are two different people, I believe that the Negroes have been treated worse than Black Americans. Uh, mm. I, I believe that Negroes suffer way more than any uh black american have have uh ever suffered uh they had laws against them uh they couldn't intermingle with certain groups they had to go in certain restrooms they was actually uh hung they was pretty much unalive for just the smallest reason and had no laws to help them uh as far as fight uh so to me i would say that the negroes had it worse than any black american mm, ouch so I'm gonna get. I was gonna go after, but let me get uh, Boyka. You next, man. What you got for us? Yes, how you do, Kev? How's the panel do today? I'm good, man. I'm blessed. Good. Now the first question up there. The reason I said my people, I am Slavic. We go back in time, centuries, fifth century, till about uh, mid or the 1960. We were slaves, but first we were enslaved by Moors in Africa for centuries. Long before Chatham slavery and everything, we was also brought to the Americas by African people. We've been in slavery centuries before any kind of slavery for black people ever. Wait, wait. What made y'all slavery worse? Cause just because y'all were before them doesn't mean y'all were worse. So what made y'all slavery worse? Because we were taken from our land. We were beat. We were... Uh, made y'all worse. It's we the are, same thing. Hold on. the same, actually. Yeah, you're not saying anything different. What's the difference? Okay. Yeah. Would you like me to finish? Yeah, let him. We're going to let you. We're going to let you win. Yeah. When was slavery in America? When did it start? Uh, 1619. Thank you. When did it all start? In Africa. Fifth century. That's way before 1619. Okay, Moors. Black African Moors enslaved us white Slavs, Eastern Slavic people. They did all this stuff. They did that. We still were slaves all the way up until 1970. 
Okay, can I can I uh can this, I say, this is... can I say something, please? I've been waiting. Go uh Sean, I'm gonna let you go, can you? Okay, okay. I promise. Go ahead. Uh, the, the the reason I would say that no one have suffered more than Negroes is because when you look at the landscape now, like even hearing how you talk, let me know that you have roots. You have connection to your roots. Uh, even like you look at most Negroes and African-Americans, they don't even have their own last names. None of us have no idea where we come from in Africa, yet alone if we even come from Africa. We don't have no roots as far as our history, who we are, our cultural identity, we don't have anything. It sounds as if from just hearing you Hold on. that you still have ties and root connections to your homeland. We don't have a homeland. We don't even know where to go. So if you just look off the street of just none of us have African last names, we have our uh, slave master's last name. That alone should tell you that no other race have had it worse than so-called Negroes, african Americans. Okay, can I answer to that, Sean? That is a very good point, but you forget. Who sold their own people first? Who taught okay. the people who taught the so-called white American colonizers and everything to sell, you know, the black, uh, as you say, well, I don't, know if, I don't know if I can say it, but I mean, I can. That, but, uh, that, that's not an offensive word. Negro is not an offensive word. Okay, the, the neg we, well, we say Negro. You okay. know, and stuff like that is, uh, you know, because from Africa, everybody comes from Africa. It is, uh, you know, it's the, the motherland for everybody that comes from Africa. But moles actually taught white people in America, colonizer, everybody, how to sell, how to, how to make other people slaves. You see what I'm saying? Everybody comes out of Africa. So your ancestors, we as Slavic and Mole people, we are probably kin or whatever you want to call it because we are from Africa. We're actually, you know, from uh, Russia now and everything that they call Russia. And also we're from uh, Western Africa, which if I'm in America now, like I am, I can say I'm actually really African American. Uh, so do, do you uh, let me, uh, oh, 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 oh. yeah, let me, let me just say, I want to do mine too, real quick. Uh, before we do the open panel, though, did, what main thing did you was that your open panel start or that was just something else? No, I didn't even get to speak. Uh, oh. I was letting Sean uh, speak. Oh, you didn't. You didn't do it though. Oh, was that an open panel a thing you was doing, or you was just going to something? Uh, uh, I was about to. No, go ahead, Kat. Hold up, you, you go ahead. I gotta do something real quick. Hold up. Ooh. Oh my goodness. But okay, so he said, "Go ahead." Or wait, we waiting on him. I just want to say real quick, I believe we had it worse because at the end of the day, I don't know no other race that had that 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 had a uh, family tree. You know how we got our family tree? Because they was hanging our families on those trees. They hung our babies. They hung our mamas, our grandmamas, our, our daddies our uncles, we all was on that. It was a lot of our people on those trees. At the end of the day, I wasn't, I ain't, I ain't read, I haven't read nothing about nobody getting their teeth beat in. They wasn't beating in uh, 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 grown men's teeth. All, all I was saying was, watch, like I, from what I know about our history is our grown men's teeth was getting beat in and it was forcing our men to uh, eat. They were forcing, um, yeah, uh, besides like the reading, we was being called dogs, you know, um, people were sitting up here, um, fighting. This is where boxing came from. They had our men fighting against each other just for entertainment. They had to unalive each other because they wanted somebody to see, uh, because that's one thing. It's like, this is why I think we have so much, um, uh, black on black because we was um put in position to sit up here and go against each other um we was getting accused of things that we didn't do i'm back 
They were setting people on fire just because they couldn't sit up here and catch one slave. They were saying groups of families on fire just because they couldn't catch one slave. Think about Nat yeah. Turner. Can I say something? Hold on, um, real quick. What the heck happened? Got, I got drunk. How you get drunk? You get drunk. Uh, let me. I'm gonna say this real quick. You said you dropped yourself. Is you coming back or not? I'm trying to see before I. Switch. But um, I'm gonna say uh. Oh, for mine before we before we get this uh, thing, I I don't believe I don't believe that we were the worst. I can't I don't know I just can't be that naive. And I think a lot of us, a lot of us, what's happening? Everybody drunk. I think a lot of us is only fighting for because we because it's us. But I noticed the last couple people have done that. And I think I don't know. I, I believe uh it's 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 a bias. It's gonna be a bias. That's why I'm even hearing though. though. And I I just. I can't just say, because I'm pretty sure this world has been way older than this. You know what I'm saying? Ron, I'm going to bring you right back up because they got to get their spots back. <clears throat> but I'm going to say that I, I do believe, just like somebody said, that some people might be extinct. You know what I'm saying? I think we only saying that because of what, who we are. We, it's, a lot of us want to fight to be the worst anyways. You know what I'm saying? So we can just tell the story that, hey, you know, I had it and we went through this and all that. I I really believe in, and just like I, the, the thing is, I did say black Americans. I think. You said it. Hold up. I'll be right back. No, he, you, you did. Say, he did say it. He said black Americans and a, a lot of people are um, are switching be, be, because we, we can talk about um, whether it's Africa or Ethiopian or um, Egypt and all like the, the dark skin. So w w how the race how the race was created but like I was saying earlier there's a lot of laws that were created based upon based upon by what we look like and that's how America it, that's their standards America does that yeah but also historical context doesn't lie like you can go and read for it's all opinionated but you can go and read compare the two three four five all these different people that were quote unquote enslaved yeah, right. you could do the math yourself. There's really like our list is way longer than a lot of other people. The numbers are way longer. Like Ronan had mentioned Argentina, I think Look. he said, and Argentina had they didn't even have a hundred thousand, one million people slaves. Yeah, let me finish real quick. Yeah, because I'm I guess all types of stuff going on. <laughs> trying to do something, even though I mentioned this. Uh, you, oh. you're still trying to answer your question answer your question <laughs> yeah yeah i'm just getting distracted over here i got stuff real life happening right something but uh it ain't nothing bad but um i'm just saying i think a lot of us just coming from biases and we just want to be the worst or to think we the worst and then we looked up a couple of things that help help um assist our lifestyle like yep i knew it but um i think like i said the world's been here for thousands and thousands of years there's no way that america just right here and just because we in america right we're gonna be like well we I, I, we the worst we don't went through this went through that i think it's people that probably just you know got way because this thing called rights that's just got that just got introduced to us you know what i'm saying everything we know it's all rights and all the other stuff is like i even looked that stuff up that came in like a little later in time and stuff so I think it was literally, according to us, even unfairness, that's a subjective thing or whatever we get to say that now. But there's people that have got way worse, and even probably right now that's getting treated way worse. Like they getting unalive or saying certain things or talking or looking a certain way or whatever. And I'm trying to say so much because I just ran up these stairs and stuff. But I can't be that, I, I ain't gonna say naive or whatever. I just can't think that slavery started or was the worst just in America, right? That's why I emphasize America. We can say other black people, right? Because I believe black people will enslave other black people. I mean, so it, it's not just a color thing. You know, I think it actually started. I think we, I, I believe we the original, right? We the original type of people and it's just expanded. I think everything came from black, right? So we talk about slavery, shoot, black done did black wrong. So I, I mean, I don't know how to look at it. I don't think that black versus white or however the, the stuff we live in, I don't think that was, it was the worst. It was bad, but I don't, I don't believe it's the worst. Like, I don't know for sure. And I'm going to say that too. I can say, I don't know. Just like he is, he did. I mean, like Jairus said and, and Jab, I can say, I don't know. Right. Because just like we were saying, we can look up things that sit here and, 
it's it's up to up to us to believe it or not, right? But you, of course, everybody gonna look up to help them feel like that I'm the toughest or I ain't been through the worst and all this stuff just to show you whatever. But yeah, I can't just I don't I think this world been here way longer just to think that we the worst. I I believe we are the ones that's holding on to it the longest, right? And some other people have found ways to not just use it as a as a crutch or whatever. Um, because like I said, not in now we in America and we more free. We get to keep on thinking of new things like, nah, I can talk more, I can do it. It's people to this day that can't talk. You know what I'm saying? Who, I mean, <laughs> you don't think that's bad? I don't know, but it's just like, people can't talk about it. Some people have seen their partner get chopped in front of them. You know what I'm saying? And they still can't talk about it. They just trying their best to survive. That's what they worrying about. You know, but like I said, I don't think, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't believe it. I'm just, it's just all my opinion. I just wouldn't believe that we had it the worst. I mean, Tom been here too long to think that, it's been the worst. And I do believe it's some people that's out here extinct. You know, if they was talking about going over certain things. And, and I think that got to be the worst, you know, extinction. But I would rather be, just like somebody said, I would rather be here than not live. I'm not switching places with somebody. At least I get a try at life, you know. But that's just me. But oh, it's open panel again. Even though I could agree, let's say, okay, I'm okay. I'm going to agree with that, right? It's, it's hard to prove uh, which, which nation of people have been treated worse, right? So when I heard you say uh, black people enslave other black people, and this is where I come to the mindset that I have now about I don't look at this, just me. I don't, I don't, how, when I went to Africa and I seen how just because you are a certain skin color don't make you the other person's skin color. It don't make you their kind. Uh, just in, in Africa, it's, it's, it's tribes and they go by, okay, King, Kenya, uh, Nigeria. They're not the same people. They don't identify as the same people. So we all come from that region, right? So I believe that we have a problem in America that thinking that just because we have the same skin color that we are the same. And then if you don't think the same, then you call uh, Uncle Tom, Coon, a uh, sellout. So I don't believe, me personally, I don't believe when I look at another person that has the same skin color as me, you is my kind. I don't, I don't believe in this shit at all. Uh, I believe that my kind is your mindset. You could be black, and if you hurting Man, black people, stop you saying it. if you black and you hurting black people, you are yeah. not my kind. So to me, I don't, I don't care about your skin color. Uh, and, and when I hear people call people coons and and Uncle Tom, they let me know that you damn near worse than a YT man because you doing the same shit they did to us, and you doing it to our own people. So to me, I think we have a problem with thinking that just because we are the same skin color that we are the same and in Africa, they don't even go by that shit. So for me, I right. think thinking that like thinking that we're all the same because of a damn skin color, I think that is the most delusional shit we have ever been doing. And I think that is a problem that we have in the community itself. Can I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. okay, go ahead. Uh, okay. No, uh, you and go, you haven't spoke. Yeah, I don't want to say it. That's funny because, like, when we say, and it's, you know, I got to speak from this aspect, like, um, us as black women, when we say, well, I'm just speaking for black women, I'm supporting black women. It's black women. I'm like, y'all was, y'all was see the black women y'all are supporting? They not like you. And if they are, why, I see why you're supporting and I need to not support that. So I definitely agree with that point. Like, we, we fight for something so hard for the sake of fighting. And a lot of times we just fight for our own individual aspect when we say we're fighting for each other. Because really, you're trying to push something for yourself and say that you're supporting everyone. Because to me, but to me, the dangers of doing that is that you'll support everybody. We we know all the time we see people with their t-shirts, um, talking about some let 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 John John out, and we're like, what let John John do? We just we don't matter. He black, for real. They don't know. Keep his ass up in there right now. Don't let him get out. <laughs> so we keep like just because people look like you, does not mean you supposed to support everybody. All right, because I ain't trying. No, we can't support everyone. I definitely agree to that. Um, I'm gonna push that concept. I definitely understand. Um, we guys gotta get to the point if we're gonna have conversations that's gonna propel us um, together as a whole, whatever case it is. It's all an individual uh, thing anyway. This path that we take is an individual path. At the end of the day, we can be victims all day long, or we can be victors. It's really up to us um, how we push past a certain thing. Now that we're in this type of place, like we've definitely seen. We talk about the answers as your grandparents. We've seen them do the work. And now it's our turn to do some type of work too. And I would doubt they would want us to sit here and sit <coughs> and act like there is no hope for us to move forward. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, you know, you gotta go different. 
Um, you, you good? Because I know you got it. Who just did that? Yeah, because I was just about to do that. Sis. Yeah. become what they couldn't um i think um we all bring something to the table but it's like are we sitting at the table with people that sit up here and value what we bring a lot of people be sitting up here not realizing like you know we all got to struggle a hard story to tell especially when it comes to our own it's like at the end of the day my struggle what I've been through versus what you've been through, yes, it's two different paths, but at the end of the day, are we going to sit up here and let the different struggles be the reason why we can't come together? We can't sit up here and build build past uh, certain things. At the end of the day, that shouldn't even stop us from uh, having greatness, having uh, uh having it in us to sit up here and pour knowledge into one another uh far as doesn't matter what your skin tone is if you have something great that can help me and i have something great that can help you and yours what is the problem what is seriously the problem are we gonna let something that somebody before us that we was that we're not even sure what's going on or what really happened in those situations uh to cause a division it's like we speaking on things that we think or or possibly know as facts, but at the end of the day, we wasn't there. So it's like everybody, been, everybody been holding on to this he say she say. But it's like at the end of the day, when it's gonna be your say? Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if, if we gotta, we we can't sit up here and dwell so long on what happened. We can't sit up here and sit up here and acknowledge what happened and say, hey, you know, yes, it did happen, but we can't change the past. All we can do is change tomorrow. A lot of people so focused on the past that they can't even see tomorrow. Cause you so hurt by the past that you're not even focused on healing. Exactly. Exactly. And that, and that's what, what keeps people in, in that victim mindset is that look, and, and, that, and that's what we all talk about. Whether you're, what, whether you're YT, whether you're black, whether you're whatever is a, a lot of people are always trying to compare trauma. We've all been slaves at one point, and I, I can give a lot of history on where my people came from. You know, you guys can give a lot of history on where you came from and, and how you've settled and, and our territory. But what do we do at the end of the day? Are, are we still going to be human and actually have some love and some kindness and, and some greatness within us in order to improve things? You know, what, what do we do with what we already know? Kev is so annoying. Um, <laughs> oh, he is. I'm telling you. He's so Alter. aggravated. Alter. Alter, I was so mad at him today. I was like, <laughs> I was so mad. Yeah, I was like, so <laughs> it's, it's in a good way. It's I'm so jealous. He's eating in my face. Yo, when is he not eating? Like, I was picking him. I'm waiting for him. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in here to get this double chin real fast. I was like, right. like hey. <laughs> how you eat like this? Ain't gaining nothing. I was like, hey. over here. He ain't worried about nothing. He is not worried about nothing. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I need to lunch break. I would like to say one last thing before I jump off. Of him. They would not know why I was treated work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say what? No, go ahead. <laughs> No, I was going to say to uh, T. Williams, when he said in the comments that uh, I'm white T or white whatever in America, the reason I say I'm Russian, because I grew up in Soviet Union, no white T American, real white T or white American has ever went to what I've been to in uh, Soviet Union. The white T people over here have so much privilege, it's, uh, it's unbearable, you know, because... Uh, like Sean said, 
you're not black if you're killing you know you're not the same people if you are killing your, your people say on alive oh on alive sorry so i come to america you know people see me and stuff but no i don't identify with the uh, white people in america well, well that, 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 that's, that, that's a great that, that, and that's a great that. point that's a great point he made because when I was Cal Poland, Stuttgart, bomb holder, none of them call themselves white. Well, like, and, and that, and all cool. that. like none of them do that. They call themselves Deutschlanders and so forth. See, that's why I know some people, you know, and I'm just speaking this because I, America, a lot, a lot of people here in this country just saying this i'm not saying it to be like ugly or facetious you know or anything like that i'm not trying to probably have never left their own state or their own porch or this continent right because canada and mexico is really just tied to the u.s anyway so it's like and it's, it's it's crazy to me because when you live outside of a country or so i lived outside this continent for years and you don't see the same thing that you see over here, it's kind of eye opening. I'm just saying, which well, is one of the reasons that that I'm not stuck in that um that um horrible American cycle of mindset. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That I don't want yeah. that thing. That thing is worse than the bubonic plague. I don't want it. Right, because it's a horrible it's mindset. If you look at it, Victory, though, like, because you just mentioned something big. Look, a, a Russian person, because they're they're light, they're they're white, right? But like their skin set, it, it's a, it's our skin set, so it's a race. It's a, and this is what we're we're talking about is like you've got um, you've got black, you've got white, you've got brown. You've got all these different, all these different minds, mindsets. So it, what is your perception? And so now we're in America, what do we deal with when, when it comes to like, you know, everybody judging somebody based upon what they see firsthand? Firsthand, what do they see? Morning. <laughs> Ronin and Mike Blake. Funny dog. She is Lovely, lovely. I just think, and for he is victory. That that's the that's the American way. I mean, America is a different place. It's not like a lot of other places. Like this is one of the biggest melting pots in the world. Yeah, we're here. That's what we go by. People identify yes. by race in America. Of course, I know people in other countries don't. They don't do that because that you when you go that? to another country, the dominant the the dominant uh, people are the people of that country. But when you're in America, you identify as so, whether you want to or not. Mm -hmm. Hey, when we're in America, <laughs> guess, guess what we have to do? We have to check a box. <laughs> See, where are you from? Not I'm from New Orleans. Okay, because it's a New Orleans. Orleans. Sending me. I, I love it. I love what she was saying. That. Yeah, I like, I like that. I like the accent. America. <laughs> so, it, so, I heard they got the, go the best to... bounce out there, too. New Orleans. Okay, I'm sorry. What? I just missed wait, something. Wait, wait, wait. What? Who created bounce? I, really, I, I was literally <laughs> gone for like five minutes. What did what, what I miss? Nothing. Yeah, you are so bad. You are so bad. I would appreciate you not making fun of my people. That boy be going in rotation, boy. Hey, it's crazy. Listen, maybe go cook a lot of them and get some lotion. Don't let the cage come out because I'll let the cage out of the cage. Am I? Oh, my goodness. You know what's funny, though? When I, when I took trips up to Massachusetts and things like that, they are, they seem to be a little bit more sharp when it comes to forward thinking, um, which is one of the things I really enjoy about Massachusetts and things like that. Very sharp, critical thinkers, not buying into any and everything. The American way does not have to fall into a fallacy of color situations, all that kind of stuff. 
the because the real problem is immorality. We talk about that even within those who have the same skin complexion as I do. We have those kind of discussions with brown skin folk, if you will, all within within that immorality was vile. You know what is what? What does it mean to be moral? Right, those type of things. Um, in any other place that I've lived, there are places, even in this country, that's not stuck in that. Now, I won't say I've lived in North Carolina, Georgia, now Texas, and as far as the South is concerned, um, as far as that area. But I will, I, I will say I've noticed a stark difference between how the South thinks versus how some but, think in, you know, Massachusetts, New Jersey, um, New York area, Chicago, where I'm from, Wisconsin, Minnesota. It's, it's, it's a noticeable difference, and I can see it. So we, we definitely not even the same in that way. I do want to say this, too. I mean, like, me as a Southerner that has had to move up a little bit northern, just from, like, the people standpoint, like, at least, like, from what I've seen, where I'm from, like, everybody is usually super nice to each other. No, normally, like, it's it, it like it's it, it's it's part of, it's part of the Louisiana Southern charm. Everyone's hospitable with each other. That's just part of the Louisiana charm. And when I got up to Kansas and keep in mind, I'm a happy go lucky person, been a happy go lucky person. When I was a kid. And like when I when I got up here and I was, you know, like smiling, happy, happy, being like trying to be happy, you know, just saying hi to people and stuff. A lot of people kept kept giving me looks. A lot of people kept giving me like come like weird offhanded comments like like, why are you so happy? Like, like what you got to be happy for? Like, just happy to see that you're here. You know, why can't I not, why can't I not be happy to see to see somebody? What's wrong with that? But I mean, like, I understand, like. And it's like, depending on where you're from, some people don't take kindly to that. They don't take kindly to your kindness, which is weird. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's whatever, you know. But I've I've noticed that, like, just when I've gotten up more northern, but it's just in certain places, not all places in the north is like that. Some places are actually pretty nice and they're they they actually welcome you no matter what you look like. Like, I and I'm. Crazy enough, I actually like work in an Amish town, which, first of all, everything that I've heard about the Amish beforehand was completely hilariously, like, offhanded wrong. Like, the only th- the only people that, that Amish people truly don't like are city folk, which I completely understand that. I could completely, totally understand that. But I'm one of those people that, get, that gets along with everybody, or at least I try to. And, like, they've even said, like, it, it like it, it's rare seeing a person of your, of my complexion around here, but we always welcome it because we we've always wanted to have more people of color. I'm like, that's kind of interesting to know that. Like, huh? Um, and honestly, not de- like, dude, I'm, so I'm you not know, even I'm kidding. Like, Amish people are like one of the most like nice group of people that you will ever meet in this country, which is crazy. They just they just don't like you if you're just too if you you know you if you're just like too city uh, drenched you know what I mean. They're either the night and I was like, <laughs> they're either nice or they're not. They're either nice. I'm telling y'all, but they either nice or they not. They, you know what? Like, I was saying, they're not. They're never, probably going to kill I've me or something. I have my hand up first. I have person. my hand up first. I'm not saying it all nicely. I'm from Chicago. I guess is what main is main and then it's jar. Uh-huh. So, oh my bad. It's so, Mandy and you, uh, Jar. I just really want to say real quick on the American, on on, on being in America, everybody want to come here because we are so privileged. We are literally freedom to them because you got to realize in those other countries, all they ever known is to be tied down to somebody, or to prepare to be tied down to somebody. Exactly. They know order. So when you see America's over, you looking at America, like when I seen um, like certain women who were literally in those other countries go viral, 
they they'll like be twerking. Like you could tell. I said, Oh, we pouring on to them. Oh man. And and I could tell and I can tell that y'all been watching Americans because my thing is, you know, if your if your father came in the room and seen that. That's what it it would it'll, it'll be like all hell broke loose. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what so the tornado. It's like, so it's like I think people look at America like, damn, it, that's the place I want to be because that's why you got a lot of uh, tourists out here. That's why you get people who come here and they be like, wow, like there it's like it's like they'll say that it's they'll it's like. When you first experience something, of course you wanna um you'll sit up here and be like, Oh, um, I wanna I would live here because it's fresh, it's new, it's not what I'm used to. They were sold on the American dream. And that's that's yes. the same thing that everybody was told, even people from Germany, even when they were going to I never the said it was war. a good thing, Benham. Yeah, and, and they wanted to that they wanted to run to America. Because America was selling them on a dream that said, hey, you can have everything here and and we're going to give you everything that you have. But I think Zex even just said it in the comment. No, people come here and they actually send their money back to the country that they came from. All I'm saying is we have a strong influence. And, and the thing is, when I say it's so easy to gravitate to, to, to what we put out there, because when you have uh, people sitting up here telling you, oh, it's OK, you can live in a world where you can do whatever you want, be whoever you want. What do you think that's that's said in the other countries for? Like, what do you think the other countries going to look at when they hear that or see that? Mm-hmm. They already, they, they already do see it. Hold exactly. up, y'all. I don't know if y'all remember the order that I did before. That's crazy. Um, okay. I, so, man, was you done? If you done, then I had to get Jari, and then I guess it's about well, because yeah, I, I just trying to prioritize everybody so that opened that. Yeah, get Hijari in there so you can speak as well. I'm, I'm just listening. <laughs> I got all day. I'm <laughs> letting y'all get it all out. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, John. But now, so the only thing is, um, like, it depends on the country. You know what I mean? So she just made a, a great point on, in some areas. It depends on what country, right? If you're coming in from, like, Brazil, Belize, or something like that, where that currency is of lesser value, okay, got it. But when I lived in Europe, for one euro will cost you a dollar thirty eight American. Now I don't know what the currency exchange rate is current state. I don't know if it's a one to one, but their currency is whooping our behind and the sterling pound is wearing everybody out. And, and that's in the UK. So at the end of the day it's like everybody's not trying to come here because I know a lot of Deutschlanders, Germany, they are they will they they'll visit New York or Miami or whatever, but I hear a lot of them say, we are so glad we're home, right? Because the values are there and the values are not here. It used to be here, but it haven't been, it, the val- values haven't been here in the 60s, 50s. So the thing is, uh, not running in, you know, from first world countries to come over here like that. Absolutely not. China, we owe them. And Germany, they have fantastic technology and everything else over there. So I, I, even Poland, and I've dropped down. So the only thing that makes this country a little bit different from them is that the size of this country compared to Germany. Germany is probably about the size of Oregon. It's the size of Oregon, right? I can drop through Germany and drop into France from bomb holder in about four hours and 23 minutes. And then if I keep going Southwest, I'll end up in Spain. So that's about the only major difference really, because they are very diverse. A lot of people from Cameroon, Nigeria, Senegal, they live in Germany, over West Germany. And if you go over to East Germany, it's like Turkish, a lot of Turkey, a lot of people from Turkey are there. So that's why I was like, it's, but I get, but you, but you are right. You know, there's a, a lot of influence you know, I'm hoping we can push our influence in a in a, a better way. That's all. I think between I don't know who I seen mute earth. I think it was lovely and shine out there. I think. 
I, I wanted to um, ask um, Victoria a question. Um, so, do you do you think, or, or everybody on this panel, do you think, uh, like, what, between America and all these all these different nations that we talk about, these different cultures that we talk about, do you think it's more about money or more about territory? As far as what? I'm sorry. What's yes. Well, as far as like like territory, like like your land, like land, land is has a different value than money does. So, is it more about money? Is that why everybody is coming into America, or um, has been separated from America? Can I answer that? So, I think the fallacy of everybody coming into America is not everybody's coming into. If you're coming from Mexico and you're coming from these um, underdeveloped countries then that may but a first world versus a first world no they're not they're not flocking to come here like that if they're first world in other words germany finland the uk you know even nigeria is the second the second um wealthiest of the continent besides south africa is being number one so if you're in first world situations i know nigerians right now who, who have you know graduated and said you know what it was cool, but I'm going back. You know, of uh, old some old friends of mine who were in the same engineering class as I was in from Kenya, from Nigeria. They already left. They left four or five years ago, and we graduated together, 2014. So they already left. They were like, no, no, they didn't want to raise their kids here. They Man. they see the things that they're seeing, and they do not. They don't want their kids on. Um, around this type of situation. Right, it's the leaving the, the government. I know me and you were going back and forth in the comments. It's it's like they're leaving the, the idea of the government of, of United States of America, but there there's still a land that, that is here. <laughs> there's still, are they leaving the land or are they leaving um, the corporation, like the business side well, of it? Yeah. They're not even they're not even looking at it as that they're leaving the immorality. They don't want their kids oh. in, in in the whole alphabet thing. They don't they don't play that over there in Nigeria or Kenya. They don't play that mess. I know. They don't I... play that mess in Ger Germany. Germany the Germans don't play any of that either. They don't get down with that whole stuff. That is some that is that is over here with that nonsense. <laughs> and they don't want their kids around it. I don't want my I don't want my daughter around it. Mm. Why, why hold on why is so many people up in here taking it down saying like america is better than the mother countries i never said that shit. all i was saying is everybody look at us like we have privilege not saying that we're better i'm just saying like some people they they want to experience america that's why a lot of people come from those other countries to just uh see about it like when you see vegas or places you know like it they'll be like oh that's nice or you know they want to go, go ahead it's, it's mysterious honest it's mysterious that's, but that, i'm that, not that, saying that they want to live here and be like us i never said yeah that. like yeah. i'm saying i'm saying the way that they live yes that's how we're supposed to be living because it's healthier for the family dynamic mm -hmm. And you know, just growing as a whole, mm -hmm. like I never said that we were better. Right. I say it, so we do. We don't give out. They, we don't see that. <laughs> what the heck? I ain't scared to say that. What the heck? All these, all these things that we got that we can do down here and stuff. I mean, all it do is right. all we gotta do is just change the way we think. We can make some stuff happen down here. So I don't get how we blinded exactly. to what the privileges we got here. Every it's can so I, many exactly. countries trying to get here. <laughs> what the heck? We ain't talking about take on the mindset, but I most definitely would say America is about better than a lot of these other countries out here. They not they not getting forced that to marriage. They're they not know. getting forced to all these other things. We just mess up with the choices right. that we have. <laughs> I don't get how exactly. we can say that it's not better. And I, I pulled up mul multiple maps about all the countries that are actually trying to come here and actually trying to live in America. But actually, a lot of people don't even understand how much history America even has. You know, and, and here everybody is trying to come in and tell us what to do, but we, we need to figure out what we need to do. <laughs> I mean, look, even this, right? Because I think one of our biggest issues is the uh, racism, right? Right. The cops, right? 
I believe in other countries is way worse. It, it's probably people getting towed up or unalive just from smelling Man. a certain way. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of our biggest things, just the, the color of our skin. Some people just, if you don't, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I think, like I said, it's that bias. It's that bias thing. We really, I think, I think we really do think we have it the worst until we get up out of here. I think that's what it is. And when we get out of here, we're going to wish we came back. And I bet money because I, I'm trying to move the best way I can while I'm here because I know it's worse out here. I'm not going to think I'm the worst, I guess. But it's, I mean, I can understand. I'm not going to take away from people that feel like they worse, but I'm not going to, I'm not feeling that way because I, I can I, I think I, I see all this stuff and I, and I try to use, I think like the question they asked me, what am I using uh, things to my advantage, right? Or the best out of it. And that's what I'm doing. I think if people have the option, they, they should try to do that. Some people can't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bro. So I'm not going to act like I'm them people that can't, you know, I feel like it's bad and, when we sit here but acting like we got it worse than other people. I, I just can't, I can't do that. I just can't. Well, I and, just can't. And that's what you well, brought bad. up yesterday in your live yesterday. When you talk about fight, flight or freeze, are you just gonna run to another country? So Kev. Hey, if it was that bad, but nobody ain't moved that hard, did they? Some they doing the opposite. They trying to fuck run here. <laughs> hey Kev, you can kinda look at it like this. We got so much influence around the world. Everybody's we everybody we leaving a mark on the whole entire world on on our culture. We'll get you. Just in America. And then we only make up twelve percent of the population in America, but we make up most of the influence of what other people, how they dress, their it. style, what they do. So we we have the blessings in, in ourselves. We just don't, we just don't use fragmented. it. Fragmented. Yeah. We just so fragmented, you know. And like I said, it's just a, a mindset that you have to come together on a, on a majority level. I've been saying that and, all day. And ignore those people that's not doing the, doing the opposite. Mindset. You, we have to ostracize them. We have to hold people accountable. And that's basically, it's not a math problem, bro. It's just simple, you know, it's simple, just accountability, being responsible, maturing, putting away childish things and don't no doing no more. And elevating yourself. Yeah. You, know, you can you can constantly look at other places and say, oh, it's better, it's better, it's better. But I bet money is something bad that you'd be like, you know what? You'll have much more respect from where you came from. Yeah. I want to say this too, yeah, boss. Oh, I want to say this. Yeah, I got you T in a minute. I know you I know you about to go. But it's I, I really want y'all to pay attention to this thing called rice, man, because I'll be getting on people about that all the time. <laughs> but that's how you know that we privileged. We get to say this thing called rice. Like if we was like to start at the beginning of the times, I don't get why people act like we deserve rights. People act like we're entitled to it or not. Literally, if we was to live freely, we're going to wish we did have rights. We will wish we did. But it's like it's good that mankind came up with this because otherwise, all this thing that people ask them, I want to be free and all this other stuff. Imagine if every last person get to do what they want to do. How long a lot of us going to be living? You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to be thankful. At least like even with America, they got these certain things we get to use. Well, they don't got the right to do that. And outside is the right. No, right is non-existence. Low key. No hockey. It, it, it's, it's, long, it's non-existence. We made this stuff. That's a social construct. Because otherwise, we we can do whatever the heck we want to do, but now it's limited. But good thing is limited, right? Because we're not thinking about the people that don't have the same mind as me. So it's somebody that will take your freaking life because they want to do better. Literally like that. And that's that's in our, I don't want to say in our nature, but I want to say that. You know, we move off the way we want to, the way we feel. So, I don't know why. And also, we a lot of us think we good. <laughs> it's like, we, we, we really, we trying to be good. We trying to be good. That's the reason why we, we try to get into religion. That's the reason why, because otherwise, if we just move off of just nothing or nobody trying to put us in place or some form of control, Earth wouldn't be here too long. It'd be like a straight up big old burn. We This don't be burnt now. <laughs> it just would be. But I don't know. Like I said, people just don't see the, the privileges we are blinded to. Like this, a lot of stuff we be, we be fighting for is literally just freaking, it's made up. This stuff is made up. And good and good thing somebody did make it up. That's why I'm gonna say that way. I'm gonna put it that way. You step outside the church, out of out of out of what you call it, man. He ain't had a right to do that. They literally. I mean, this is. I don't realize how cold this world is. Like that stuff y'all talk about, grape and all that other stuff. They don't care about that. You step out of here, they gonna tear you up. Try to call the police. The police probably gonna tear you up too. That's how cold this freaking world is. And people gonna see it. I don't know why people think like, oh, America, the way America is, we're going to give that mindset to this whole world. No, we lucky. 
we're lucky. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. I don't, people just don't see it, man. They don't. So I said, I can thank God that I'm, I'm, I'm where I'm at right now. I get to voice myself. Thank God for my ancestors mm -hmm. to even set this path. <laughs> but otherwise, we keep crying about can. more and more and more stuff. And that just actually irritates my soul. The most stuff we keep crying about more. And don't never pay attention to stuff we got right now. We just don't. But Kev, may I say, brother, I, and I and I feel where you're coming from. I, I, I see your passion on it. We got people who are leaving that are going to other nations. Probably in seven years, I'm just waiting on my daughter to get a little bit older, okay. and we gone. Thanks. But what I'm saying is, Germany, Poland, you can voice your opinion and all that. In Finland, you can voice it. Brother, there are hundreds of sovereign nations, right, that, that have, you know, constitutional republic protections and things like that. We're not the only ones, bro. And all I'm saying is, when, when people say, and, and I know I know you get that, bro. That's why I was like, because we're not number one in literacy. We're not number one in mathematics and things like that from an educational standpoint, just looking at data, right? So, you know, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of even quality of life and the, um, and the um, how, how can I put this in TikTok terms? Oh, the mortality rate. There we go. I, I'll do that. The mortality rate. Um, they, we have a lower mortality rate, quote unquote, right? You know, years of years that people live. But what I am going at, they, even in Spain. So what I'm what I'm kind of getting at is why you know you got people who are leaving and going to you know Spain, Germany, stuff like that, Poland, for what I, Belgium and Denmark, because I know about three that three that went to Belgium and then one that went to Denmark. So stuff like that, when you see that, yeah, they, they haven't been back. And that, 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 some of them were 2018, some of them were a little bit older when I was in Germany myself. They haven't come back since, but anyway. I don't disagree with you, but it's still subjective, you know? Only thing I can tell you is I measure it based on the influence. Who, who is more people coming here than people going there. And that's the statistics, you know? And my thing is, it's, it's, it's it depends on where you're looking for, what type of life you want to live, yeah. uh, what type of family life you want to live. It all depends on your outlook, your mindset, what you think is better. But what I'm, what I'm saying subjectively based on overall subject, what Kevin said, I agree with, you know what I'm saying? We got so many rights and privileges. Matter of fact, you got the right to even, you know what I'm saying, uh, get rid of somebody. Now you oh. got to pay for it. You got to be accountable when you get caught. And and that's the thing. Other places, they just, you can get accused and you don't even have a fair trial. They just accuse you. You know how, if I had the money, right, I wouldn't dare be in America if I had the money to move somewhere else. The reason why I believe that this is the land of the most entitled humans on the face of the earth. And I'm going to tell you what I mean. We could talk about rights and all that shit all day long, but... And we could talk about oppression and all the shit that maybe black people, Russian people have gone through. But we all sit here and don't give a damn about the Native Americans and oppression they go through to this day. Uh, land being taken away from them. So in a sense, we're all hypocrites. I've learned that don't nobody care about no other race of people but they own. Mm. When Asians don't give a damn about Asians don't give a damn about black people, uh, but they want everybody to help them fight when a couple of years ago with the whole uh where, where Asians was getting attacked for, uh, you know, the China virus and all that shit. Then they wanted people to help them with their oppression. I've learned that uh, black people don't give a damn about other people oppression. When 9-11 hit, when them Arab people was goddamn getting uh, attacked and all this shit, we joined with the uh, white folks to help them oppress uh, those people. So to me, it's just like a land of a bunch of hypocrites, if you ask me. We don't care about nobody else's oppression but our own. And it's a selfish mindset. And it's all races of people, not just black people. White people don't give a damn. We got Native Americans on this land right now. And we all, uh, if somebody were to separate, uh, celebrate uh, Martin Luther King death, uh, unalive, and we would be like, oh, you got damn racist, such and such. But we celebrate Thanksgiving all the time. And that's the slaughter of all of Native Americans. So we hypocrites. Ooh. That is big. Ooh. That is big. 
and see, and, and that oh I don't, see, I don't the, the problem be, the problem with that is we don't have any power so we can complain but what what good is that going to do just bump it up down when you got money power and position yes. you you ain't complaining you getting something done and see that's the problem with you know black people can't be racist or they can they can have biases they can't be racist they just they you you at the bottom of the totem pole we don't have we don't own nothing in america hold on hold on hold on, hold on. so see this, this this is what i mean by it, it, not calling you that but i'm just saying like it's the it's the, the uh, avoidance of questions when it, it has nothing to do with money you having morals and empathy and compassion for others outside of your race does not require power does not require any money it it, it, it require a thought process that you're willing to uh compromise and have empathy, empathy for others All I, I, said agree. Was, I agree with you i agree with you but when, so when why, you ain't why, got why, nothing your on, morals are nothing hold on. why celebrate thanksgiving if you know that it's celebrating people that's still living on this earth right now why would you celebrate it you don't know. Celebrate the, the unalive and the Martin Luther King. We already know that's bad, right? We don't have to be like, oh, they don't know no better. No, we're going to hold them accountable. Like, OK, y'all are wrong for that. Well, you're oh. right, brother. But you, 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 you're assuming that everybody know what you know. What I'm saying is well, I'm not that nobody can. No, anybody with common sense won't argue with you okay. about that. So you mean you, to tell you, me you're that, right, brother. You mean to tell me that people are so slow that we're celebrating holidays that we don't even know what the hell it means? Some people are slow, bro. It's true. Right? I mean, it is. Sh Shama, that is. That's true. Okay, that's yeah, that true. Right. Okay, that means that your, the, the system didn't fail you. The government didn't fail you. The YT people didn't fail you. Your family failed you. Your and mama some, true. In a lot of cases, yeah, you're right. You're that's right. True. In a lot of cases, you're right. What do you I mean? Listen, bro. Everybody ain't on the same level. Talk to some of these people. I'm scared to go to court because the way some of these people think. Man, you go to court and you got to let that person decide your fate. Right. Even if you're right, bro, you be like, man, you should, you that should scare you straight right there. Just listen to some of the logic on TikTok. Man, you some people are retarded. I mean, I mean, not, no. excuse me oh, for that sure. word. Yeah, you gotta hey, drop. Hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. We can't say that word. Can't <laughs> yeah, you gotta drop for a couple of seconds. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, if you, if you just look at it, to me, I, I don't know, this, this shit be mind boggling to me sometimes. When I sit back and just be thinking like, damn, we complain about all this shit when we literally have people that is on this land that's been taken advantage of and they are right up under our nose and we could care less about them. We don't, uh, and the way I look at it, when people talk about uh, uh, like all that capitalism shit and all that, this is how I look at it. And I believe that it's all about a perspective. And in a sense, it's down there. Uh, I don't know. We people are are very selfish. How 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 why te how we look at rich and powerful people, right? Like, okay, they don't care about nothing about us. We ain't this. We ain't that. They don't really care. When we talk about the Republicans. We say they only care about their money. They bottom line. They don't give a damn about people underneath them. Okay, the same way we see them as so-called middle-class people, what you think poor people look at at us as middle-class people? And then what you think homeless people look at us as middle-class and poor people? They look at us the same. They walk, We walk past them every single damn day, past all kind of bridges, at all kind of stop sign lights, uh, and we don't help them at all. So the same. So how we want YT people and people in power to look down and help us when we in a position to look down and help people underneath us and we continuously don't do it on mm -hmm. because we only worried about self we're in a a, a a a a country that being selfish pays off and other countries that have less when i went to uh jamaica i would rather move to jamaica even though they in poverty they don't have the best those people treat each other with a a, a sense of urgency and love that i have never seen american treat each other to this day when i went there i asked that woman i was like uh I say, man, y'all call each other black out here? She was like, hell nah, that's that brainwashing shit in America. I said, what y'all call each other? She said, we all Jamaicans. I was like, well, damn, like all people? Because Asia, Asia is taking over and they buying a bunch of shit over their banks and everything. I say, even Asians? She said, yeah, we don't divide over here. We are all Jamaicans. We're all one. But in America, people tell you to don't talk about race, right? But guess what? But this is how I know that race come first. I am, I'm not an American African. I'm an African American. When you are Hispanic, you are a Hispanic American. When you're Asian, you are Asian American. They let you know that your race come first and you're an American second. But when it comes to YT people, 
they are just Caucasian. They just American. They let you know that they ass belong here and y'all motherfuckers don't. Do they but deal bro, with government can't. propaganda the same way we do? Yeah, but bro, you can't conceptualize everything white people talking about. You gotta you gotta have hold your on. own mindset. It's a mindset. This is, my last, bro. Hold on. this is my last one. This is don't have nothing to do with no uh YT people over the government. Out now, this is what I mean by how many times it, it gotta get to a point where we have to sit. I believe that shit now. My big mama taught me you wanna hide a secret. From a black man you put in the goddamn book because motherfuckers ain't reading okay now if you are over 40 years old 38 or older and you calling yourself an african-american how many times are you gonna allow these yt people that we talk about to change your identity and you go along with it i was born mm. in 1985 the term african-american didn't come around until 1988 i would be a fool to call myself an african-american when i was born before that shit even existed that's just dumb that don't i don't need no yt person to teach me that that is just history that you can find on your own. So I don't need no money for that. I don't need no power. I don't need no YT man to tell me nothing that I can self-educate myself on. Mm. I agree with you, bro. But I think most of it is just mindset. I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Mm. A lot of times, man, we got to get out of our own way. It's the mindset of thinking. Right. It. What what can you do? What, what what is your 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 um what are your gifts and abilities? Hey, that together with can I ask with Sean a, a question? Because we got the same name, and he said something that's profound. And I, uh, go ahead, little. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to ask Sean a question. You know, uh, that's my first name, by the way. I just put my middle name up here because all the sons I know, all the sons I know, is some powerful brothers. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> straight up though, straight up though. But nah, uh, you said that. Uh, you don't call yourself African American. What do you refer to yourself as? Good question. Uh, something that my my big mama taught me uh, when she showed me her birth certificate. Her birth certificate said Negro on it, and she told me that Negroes was a different type of people. They would had a different mindset than Black Americans and African Americans. She said Negroes Negroes didn't want to join uh, YT people and go to the establishment when they weren't welcome. She said Negroes just wanted to be left alone and treated equally. They didn't give a damn about joining. They didn't cry. They did whatever they had to do. And she said, don't call yourself no African-American because you was born before that shit was even oh. existed. She said, Negroes had a different mindset than African-Americans. So I call myself a Negro because I don't have the mindset of an African-American. I can respect that wholeheartedly because, never mind, I'm not even gonna, I'm, I'm not even gonna get into that because I might get attacked if I do, but you gotta stick your chest out over here, my brother. We just watch your words, but stick your chest out. <laughs> oh, most definitely, most definitely. Well, in that case, the term Negro, just like uh, Brother Sean just said, uh, it's older than the term African American, and you gotta understand that when they when they when they started picking up the ideology from a certain individual who put it out there of what we should be called. Um, that's who they called the first, I mean, that was the first name that the indigenous people were called were Negroes. Like they didn't have in like being called a Negro originally had nothing to do with being African mm. at all. That means you had no African ancestry. That's true. That's true. And um, I just, I just think that's very interesting. And I got mad respect for you. Just like you said, most people named Sean are very powerful. The name is technically Hebrew. It means like, it's almost like savior. You know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, man, that's, that's dope. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's powerful because that's, that's, that's really who we are. And by us calling ourselves black or African-American, according to the blacks law dictionary or the, or the, or the law, the le or legalese, we're basically saying we're nothing. That's why they can dispose of us and, pe and other other ethnicities can get away with doing whatever they can do with us and get they'll, they'll literally get away with it because of what we allow ourselves in status to be called. But I thought I thought Negro was black in translation. I mean, yeah. <laughs> technically, yeah, the etymology of it, it the etymology it? of it is it's a it's the Spanish term for black. However, the way they defined it, as they called it to us, 
they that's the first thing they called the indigenous people were Negroes. I think you, you just, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't get but, caught on, but no. they always repurposing words. They always repurpose mm. words. Man. Right. And you know Lou, I mean? you, you, Lou, you just proved a good point, which I was talking about earlier, where, you know, it when we were talking about be, between what, what was the difference between blacks and, and the YT community, it was the laws that came in with it. It was the, the laws that came in with it, it b- because now there were laws created around race. That That's the thing that a lot of people are not looking at is that the laws that, that were created around it. So that's what the, that's what a lot of people are focusing on. That's why we have police brutality. We have police policing system. We have military system. We have all that stuff. And, and a lot of the laws that were created, but the, the laws were created by who? by 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 other people whether they're whitey or they're black or or whatever you know so um you just proved a really good point and then to, to, trans- to, to translate like when we use when we say we want to like what do negro really mean right so to even translate no one like i feel like you're only hearing people talk about the translation what negro mean in another european white person language have you ever thought about what Negro mean in any kind of African language? Why do it always have to be translated through the, the white man language? Why can't it be through any other African nation language what Negro could mean? I feel like that's the part of the brainwashing. We, we, we think about words and we don't even think about our roots as far as, okay, what Negro mean in Africa? Like what that mean? Let me try to find a language in Africa, Swahili, any kind of damn thing to be like, okay, what Negro mean and find a root word, try to find it there instead of going through what the white what the white what white people say what Negro mean? I I don't I, that's just brainwashing to me. Exactly because if you look that there's actually there there's a Bible out there. I think it's called the um. It's called the Negro Slave Bible, like <laughs> you know. So and you look at the Hebrew, like even if you go back into Hebrew and you go back into in, into slavery, and why why do they want to tie it to black people? Why? Why does it always come from that aspect? What do you, What do you say? What do you say? I couldn't hear you. What you say it again? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Um, there's the, there's actually a, a Bible that um. Hold on. Hey, hey she's talking about the, the Bible, right? But if you look, no, but the, the, there's the, there's there actually a Bible called the Negro Bible. Yes, I don't know. It's actually another one, right? Uh, yeah. And, and I yeah. don't know. If, I don't know if you have believers on this panel, but this is only for the believers. If you don't believe, hey. That's, that's cool. Uh, you look up the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, right? And you look up the word Negro and how YT, and this is why you could get brainwashed. When YT people said that uh, black people was cursed according to the Bible, even their own Zondervan Bible Dictionary proves that to be different. It tell you like what Negro was and it'll tell you what nation that came from the Negroes and it wasn't the so-called ham or the, per- the people that got uh, cursed in the Bible. So to me, it's several ways you can look up what Negro mean. You look at an old map, yes. it said Negro land. The old map said Negro land. So to me, Negro is just not something that derived in America. That was something that was also in Africa. I forgot all about the Zanderman, but was, was it the Zanderman Bible? Yeah, the Zanderman Bible. The, 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 yeah. the Zanderman Bible Dictionary. Yep. I all yes. about that. My OG who I studied with showed that to me years ago. I forgot all about that. And that, that, and like Honest just said, that that's in, back into the in into slavery times. Like if you go back into slavery, it goes back all the way back. All and the I way said back. that, and I say that they was preaching the Bible, basically. Yes. Like if you if you watch, because um, I watch a lot of slave movies just to get an understanding of what they trying to paint out there. Because I because you see a lot of shit that go viral for, I don't know. But just how I watched the Nat Turner story, his owner, he was the first black pe- preacher to sit up here and baptize a white man's, a white team man on a white man's property. And they, they didn't like that. The thing is, um, he was, his owner was getting paid to sit up here and uh, ha- so he could have him go to other slave um, or, or I mean, not other uh, other plantations to preach to the slaves, the Bible. 
because he had learned the Bible from his uh, YT owner uh, wife. She was teaching him from a child, and but she was sneaking, uh, sneakily doing it. And um, basically, uh, Nat Turner, he he had what he did was he said, okay, even though you know. Uh, my own because he grew up with a white tea woman her son her son it was like basically like grew up together so basically uh when um she uh when he even though he was getting paid what thing he did was he took the word and basically made it um to where he wanted to pour onto the black people um a new a new song don't uh he, he ain't want to preach the white man's word he wanted to preach you know, his word, um, or the word of God, but he, um, it was like, it was, that's why, uh, the, the white man that he did baptize on that white man's white team man's, uh, plantation, he was, he said it out his mouth. He said, I don't want to sit up here and, um, uh, lead this earth, um, without, uh, cause he felt like it was wrong to, for his people to sit up here and treat slaves a certain way. So in order to get right, he wanted to go to the black preacher. Mm-hmm. So so it was like, like I said, we definitely been um, brainwashed. And, and even when I looked at those scenes where he was preaching, I was like, that's crazy. Like, make me think like, because at first I was like, damn, did they sit up here and really, um, really, uh, get paid to sit up here and put the uh, uh, preach religion on us. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm like, what was they believing in before, you know, he was preaching to them? Well, and not only not only the black people were, were brainwashed, the white white tea people were brainwashed too. Because they that- They brainwashed like, themselves. Yeah. They Hold on, why, why, why we keep saying, okay, okay, this is my only concern. Why, why do we say, okay, like, I feel like if, if, if you ever read the book for yourself, forget if you believe it's fake or not. I'm just talking about if you ever read it, just like any other book. You should know the fact. And I believe that anybody that ever read that Bible for themselves, they would not come to the conclusion that, it, that it's a it's a YT man book. Only reason, exactly. I, would, only reason I would say that is because uh, in, in, in Solomon, everybody know about uh, Job, where Job was an unrighteous man. Whether you believe the story or not, let's just deal with the book. Right. The, Job said, right. my, skin, "My Job said, my skin is black upon me." Solomon said that King Solomon said, "My skin is black but comely." That means beautiful. It's several scriptures in the Bible that describes black people, so-called black mm -hmm. people, dark melanated people. So when you say that it's a YT man book, and yes, YT people trick black people because remember when they first came from Africa, they didn't speak English. And it was in an English translation. So exactly. they told black people what the book said when the book didn't even say that. But here's a key story. And this is actually true. Exactly. When that, turn, when, when that Turner and black people started reading that book for themselves, they had an awakening. And what made them realize they need to rebel against their oppressors? Because they read in that damn book that there's some black folks in that motherfucker, right? And once they read that it was black right. people in that book that they never been taught that before, they start to rebel against that. But now we have a point where black people <laughs> in 2024 still saying that is a YT man book. Now, that it's one of two That's things. because they're uneducated though, yeah, bro. Yeah, but it, listen it, though. It, it, hold on, hold on. It, it, it's either one of two things. Black people are still brainwashed or the second part is YT people is dumb as hell because why would you give a book? Why, why would you give a book and don't remove the black part of it. You leave all these black goddamn yeah. because because exactly because they that, saying, the, that's exactly what I was saying. Is the that Bible is their white attempt? People were brainwashed too. Yeah. Hey, Sean, I tell you this though: black black people been rebelling since the, the day they set foot here. It's straight they, up. They never they never once gave in to their oppressors. So that belief that we they was they they was subjugated to their, their oppressors right. the whole time that is so not true, and you can read that too. Hold hey, on, but Pete Game, but that's it. how you know when they compiled the Bible, they were they got it from information they didn't understand fully. 
Right, right. That's the, that's right, to be expected right. when when you stripped them from everything the way they did and subjugated them the way they, they did. It, well, it, it, it took a building up from our literature, though. Hey, on, yeah, but what I'm saying is that they stripped them down to nothing, bro. Did your name Jab or Jab? What is it? That's good. That's good, brother. Okay, Jab. Okay, this is okay. This is the part that I feel like it's, it's easily you could you could tell you could look it up, and it's it's people to back that up. The Bible existed way before the Europeans ever stepped foot in Africa. The reason yep. proof behind it is the Ethiopians. Well, they, still, they, they have a Jew. They have a Jewish nation in Ethiopia to this day. The way predate the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, YT people ever come into Africa. So Absolutely. They, the, the Bible has always, not in the form how we have it now as far as the King James Version mm -hmm. and all that shit, yes. But, and even though, I'm going to say I, I'm a stone cold believer in it, here's my reason why. Uh, when I when I, learned, I learned to get the, uh, the, uh, the Bible with the Hippocrypha, the book that the Catholic Church took out of it, right? And, mm -hmm. and it tell you about how God took a certain group of people into a land that they have never been before so they could practice the laws. And then when I watched the movie about Christopher Columbus, they said a key thing in that movie that lines up with some of the books that they took out of the Bible. When they asked Christopher Columbus, like, why do you want to, like, go to this place or whatever? He said, Edris. And when you read the book of Edris, Edris tell you how God took uh, uh, his, his people away through a boat and all that shit to get to another land. So how would Christopher Columbus say, or even in the movie, why would YT people put in a movie yeah. that they made? That Christopher, well, Christopher Columbus read the book of Edris and it told him that it was a land over there. That mm -hmm. you can't, you can't, you can't explain that away. Yeah, because if if you look at it, like you look at the the King James version, which, which if it, when it came over to America, but look, everybody talks about the lost books. You look at the Apocrypha. You look at the Book of Enoch. You look at all these different, all these different. Um, if you if you aren't looking into it, what are you gonna find? What are you gonna find if you don't look into it? It really What's, goes back down to we have to we have to know all this knowledge in order to like actually maneuver. What was just said? It is it's crazy because. When it says I will take you uh, like the promised land basically didn't the forefathers of the Israelites have the promised land before and they had to go back to it. Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. When y'all brought up uh, the Ethiopian Bible, isn't it Ethiopia uh, or like uh, Eastern, like uh, the Middle East or Eastern Africa? Is that what that's called? Like around that area? Didn't, uh, wasn't it, isn't that an area also of Hinduism? Probably. You say, well, yeah, well, it was back in the so it might be. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, comes full circle because the oldest remnants of Hinduism is in the Grand Canyon. Which is in Arizona. Right. Of America. That comes <laughs> full circle. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, mm -hmm. I, I get where you're going. See, we're Let going me, back uh, to America, why America is so important. Because yeah. this is Let where the real Jerusalem was. Yeah. Let me add Anthony real quick. Cause I, I, I mean, I see a lot of people that say the same thing he'd be saying, though. So it's just, that's why I said I don't think that you, a lot of people just don't understand or they actually read to disregard it because it goes against their lifestyle. So, like, what, what made you, uh, what make you feel that the book wasn't meant for us to read it? Anthony. I wasn't saying that, that it's not meant for us to read the book. What I'm saying is, is that it had been translated many times over and in, the, in those uh, intended uh, purposes uh, to do that, when they formed this nation, when they formed America, uh, what we call America uh, through Jamestown, et cetera, what they intended, they didn't intend for us to be, to be able to read. They didn't want the Negro, if you want to title it, others as Negro, because some called us Moors, uh, some you know, still refer to us as the indigenous. So they never intended for us to read. They made laws. I think someone on here earlier stated that they made laws. That's what came with, with uh, the white supremacy. So that's a very valid point because a lot of people don't understand. You know, um, I've heard people use the, the, the excuse that, oh, white didn't exist before 1619. 
you know, and it's kind of like, you know, you have to understand what they were actually installing, what they were putting into play. And when they made these laws, they made sure these black codes and everything, they made sure that we were not going to be able to read these texts. So this is when the other person referred to the slave Bible. If you Google selected text for slaves, it will come up in every single link that you can uh, possibly uh, find that's associated with it. You will see it. You will see the reason why they intended to do it. You will also see a lot of, uh, I will peel my eyes open a lot more uh, to the Southern Baptist and, and what they were trying to uh, uh, employ in the in the South. So when you actually do some studying into that, when you look into the research of that, you'll understand that they were actually only going to give us the text that they felt would keep us docile. This is why the Willie Lynch letter was, was important. They were trying to find ways to keep us subjugated. So that's why I was just bringing that up. It wasn't, it does not mean that we weren't, we were never to read it or never to believe anything that came out of the text of, of uh, that came out of the Hebrew text. I'm just stating that they only pre-selected certain passages for us. And those are the only ones, because we weren't allowed to read it. That's where the pastor in our, in, our, in our history, in our black history, that's where the pastors came from. They selected a certain, a certain slave, one that was very obedient to read to the other slaves. And you were not to be, you were not to read it yourself. So you were only supposed to listen to what you were told. And if you really look at the, the culture of our, of our, his, our, our, if you look at our culture and you look at it throughout history, we still congregate to every Sunday to church and we listen to the pastor. And what the pastor says is going to be held more honorable than what, you know, a lot of women will, uh, a lot of wives will look at what the pastor says as more honorable than what the husband will say. Hey, so you really look at it. Yeah. Go ahead. Before you go, Sean, because I know you about to, I know you about to do some stuff, but, but, but I want to ask one more question though. He already know. <laughs> he laughed because he already know. Hey. <laughs> um, I was going. Uh, I wanted to ask because I always hear people say, "Well, we got many translations and all this." So I, I don't get what's so bad about translations. I think that's actually a good thing. Whatever the best way for you to understand, and they because most of the ones that I, I mean that I notice, they all come up to be the same exact thing. So I, it's like, have people ever took the time to just really compare it and see if each it's translation meant the same thing? Which I noticed that they do all of them that came up to be the same thing. So what's the problem with? many translations as long as you get the message that should matter right no, i don't no, understand there's nothing wrong with the many translations other than yeah. the intent so when you when you get a concordance and you look at it yes you will find that a lot of it is the same thing but you will also find those gaps where they where the pastors or where the people are teaching how they interpret the way they teach it i get you passages. on that though yeah they use it wrong yeah, like, and 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 also the transliterations where where some words were transliterated versus translated like for instance the word like like the name peter is a transliteration that's a name they made up to to uh to tie directly to peter because they didn't because the the his real name means rock but it's it, but it's it's called kepha though because it's so mm -hmm. so the meaning of it is rock but if if we call peter by his real hebrew name it would have been kepha well, just it, it, like we, gotcha. we, we still get the story though. Like well, I don't get why. I don't think it's that. Well, not nah, well, but some, but it's, other uh, other other terms are transliterated also, which kind of messes with the whole context of what you're reading, depending that, that, on that, 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 where it's that at. That defeat the purpose, though. That let, let me tell you how I believe that defeat the purpose. Uh, I think just for me, when I hear it, it's like somebody says it's been it's been translated several times. Uh, it, it confused me because if I say cat in English and then a Hispanic person say cat in Spanish and say gato, it don't change the fact that it's still a damn cat. Like it, it, it don't change the origin of the thing that you're talking about. You just, and then in the Bible itself said that when you talk about when all nations speak in their own tongue, it's talking about language. It's not talking about that, all that damn shit that the Christian church true, teach you. True. It's saying that speaking in their native, in their own native tongue. That true. don't mean the shit that they speak in church where you can't hear. It all it means is language. And then true. what uh, to prove Anthony point is, it proved to me one of two things. Black people are brainwashed and YT people is dumb as hell. And what I mean by that is, how can YT people expect us to not read the Bible, right? 
but then they were the ones that was reading it, but they left all the black shit in there. So that means that YT mm -hmm. people got to be dumb as hell to be reading a book thinking that it's a what is Jesus is white or whatever the color may be. And the book is saying black. So they mean that they dumb as hell for even believing in that shit. And then they was and then for black people to still think of the same shit we think about as far as it's a YT man book. Anytime no, you anytime you read anytime you read like most people can, most people today will tell you that church should be on Sunday when the Bible says Saturday. Most people Saturday. will tell you that money is the rule of all evil when the bible said the love of money is the rule of all evil people don't read shit for themselves mm. so i think the last thing the worst thing you could do as a believer is to take the word of a crooked ass pastor because pastors are crooked as hell and first of all tithing <laughs> hold on and, and, and let, let me land with this tithing has nothing to to me that is a, that's why i say what a miracle with these damn how, 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 how crooked we are when you read the book in the Old Testament about tithing, let me break it down real quick. Real quick. Yeah, tithing was talking about crops. Uh, it yep. was for the Levites. It was for the Levitical priests, right? right? So when he said, and when he said, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, he's not talking about this shit that the church be teaching you about. Oh, he going to bless you. The the, 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 the the open up the windows of heaven, he was talking about rain. So it would come and rain down on your crops so you could be able to uh, provide your 10% of the fields that they say 10 percent of what you yield from the field and then how i could back that up if you're talking about the rain is in the in genesis hey and and, and and how i could back that scripture up they're like oh how you know you're talking about rain when he say the windows of heaven because you go back to genesis when he's going to flood the earth he said i'm gonna open up the windows of heaven that's how i could correlate those two with he's talking about rain so uh, tithing had nothing to do with money. Tithing was pretty much like we have the, the uh, uh, like a, a Salvation Army or some shit like that, a Red Cross. It was there to help the community. But what you see is most times you go to black community, you see a bunch of churches in poor, impoverished neighborhoods because all they do is take from the community. They don't add a damn thing. Churches be bigger. Churches be the prettiest thing in a damn community. So to me, if you still tithing in church, you have I know for a fact that you haven't read that Bible yourself because right. you believe that tithing has something to do with money mm -hmm. when it has everything to do with crop. And then somebody Bro, I do and, and offering to this day. I just do offering. Yeah. I don't do tithing. And, and, yeah. and a pastor would say, Well, we don't have we don't have cattle and, and all that shit right now, so we have to pay tithing. Okay, that's you adding shit in there because you don't right. say nothing like that. Well, that's well, what they always do. Even the Mormon church point, added their John. own scriptures or their own text, and they called it the Book of Mormon. And then, if you look at the belief system that they have, is that we came from the devil, we fell okay, from heaven. When, you know, mm -hmm. so when you think about this, when you think about all of that, that's why it was important to understand that it was translated many times. And in those times that it was translated, there was also scriptures added to it. There were scriptures taken away. So I'm just my point was that just to point out that it was manipulated. That was the whole, you know, reason why I said that, Kev. And the biggest right. way um, it was manipulated. If you think about it, if you think about it, like what what Sean was pointing out though too, if you look at slavery, like what what he broke down, uh, but if you look at servitude, I, I did this whole study last month on slavery versus servitude. What is the difference between being a slave and, and being a servant? You know, and so there, there's a servant tree that actually comes into it as well. What I was going to say was uh, what also including in the manipulation of the scriptures is when the occult fraternities coded. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? that It's also coded and transliterations play a bigger role also because if you transliterate certain names, it takes away from the impact. For instance, in Genesis 1, 1, the God in Genesis is translated from Elohim. But mm -hmm. in Genesis 2, the second chapter, God turns the Lord God, which is a totally different name and translation. It's either Adonai or Baal. Yeah, and if Thank you look you. at if you look at um, the word gods, like there, there are times in, in the Bible that it mentions gods, but it's also lowercase. 
it's also different gods. So look at Christ. Christ was either either Jesus Christ or the Messiah, or you know you know you have all these different translations that are coming in. But like Kev was saying, is like it's, it's the same message. It's what you take in from it. It's, it's what, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, okay, because I've been listening. Um, I I done heard a lot of stuff when it comes to religion and you know Jesus Christ and all this stuff. Because I even heard um, it was uh said that Sasa, I think his name Sasa uh, Borgias. Or Borgia. Caesar, Borgia. Caesar, Borgia. Caesar Borgia. Yes, that he had wrote that he gave the image of um of Caesar. That's facts. And he, and he had a relationship with Leonardo da Vinci. Yes. Mm -hmm. In 1502 and 1503. Yep, that's true. And I heard that the image Jesus Christ came from uh Leonardo and Da Vinci. Uh, it, it it was basically uh, said that um, the Pope Pope Alexander, I think, that was uh, a, that was under the authority of the Catholic the Roman, Church. The Roman, like, the Roman Catholic, yeah, yeah. Yes. Little, that the son that, the, that, that they said they said that too. that he had his son picture put up as Jesus Christ in the uh, Western world. And it was yeah. ordered any pick of um of a black Jesus must be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't get destroyed. The Vatican vault, a lot of the, the Vatican vault hid a lot of, them, and they still worship them in private. Yeah, the the Vatican the Vatican is and 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 just like we were talking about America earlier, the Vatican is very involved in like American warfare as well. So the they, they they tore down the Im the image the image that you're he right. a lot he does look a lot like Jesus Christ the yeah. image and that's what and I did read something that they said uh, don't be fooled. Um, because that is the image of the beast. Yeah, don't be fooled. And, and that was the thing is that we have all been fooled, and that that was one, one, one thing that we've all been talking about. Look, we've all been fooled. And so That's... now you have to go with what you what you already know. Now that we know it all, what do we do now? Do we yeah, the... that, or do we <laughs> do? You have to study. And once you study it, well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. You don't, you, it's not, you don't have to read it. You just have to study it. Once you study it, you have the knowledge. Then there's a difference between knowledge and applied knowledge. Once you begin to apply that knowledge, that's when you'll see the manifestations, the changes. That's when you'll see the revolution. Mm -hmm. and, then, and that's why I, I was in a live earlier and we were discussing, um, you know, on the on the same st same topic, is that look once you already know the laws, the commandments, and everything that Christ gave, everything that you get from the Old Testament, the New Testament, everything that you, you that you can create, you actually have to apply it. You actually have to put in action. You can't just sit there and just wait for everything to happen. You actually have to apply it. Let's give Kev the floor. He was trying to say something. Go ahead, Kev. It's a wrap. I, I literally forgot. I was trying to think about not what I was trying to say, but oh, uh, my bad, bro. My bad. My bad. Oh, no, you Kev. good. You good. Go ahead. No, we good. Kev, yeah, well, answer a question in uh. The, oh, go ahead. My bad. I was gonna answer a question in uh the chat. Oh, go. Oh, go ahead, Sean. I was just about to just say, like, I I understand that there is many of uh, um ideas about Jesus and. You know uh different people that you believe in but um understand that these are um different minds at different times that um that is telling their own story of what they probably seen or heard you get what i'm saying and they're just passing it along like how i look at the world it's like we playing the game of telephone <laughs> i'm not even gonna lie i look at it like that like we all hearing it from somebody 
and we're passing That's exactly it exactly how history is yes yes i'm making sure y'all just following me <laughs> hey but you know what was what's so crazy the name jesus is 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 a derivative of zeus and and it doesn't really belong in the bible and i'm gonna tell you why because joshua in the old testament has the same name as who they call jesus they both for their names is yashua or yashua yahushua it's the same name mm -hmm. yep i want to say Jesus this too though i don't i want to like, let me t i got this thing probably loud um uh, y'all hear my background but i was about to say um <clears throat> it's two things so now that you add that i don't think god that petty though um i just don't think he that petty that I think he know what we mean because I can see it's getting to a point that like which one is the real name or something like that, and and I can get it. Something could be an English name, it could be a Hebrew name. I think at the end of the day he, he get us. <laughs> he get. I can't see he him be like, us. no, you said the wrong name. You called upon the wrong name. You're not allowed. I, I, well, how, why would he do it? Like a person that loves us, right? Why would they? Why would he do that to us? You know what I'm saying? Like he knew that. Just like she said, the telephone game, man. From this point, we chosen. To believe, you don't believe it. That's what it is. But we're supposed to study to show Not, ourselves approved. It, and it, it matters the, according to scripture, Kev. It and matters what makes it so bad. Hey, what makes hold, it, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold, hold on, Sean, 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 go ahead, yeah, and then yeah. Lou, you can go. It, it, it matters. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm going out with somebody said in the chat as far as uh, <laughs> like how do we, how do we know what he looked like, right? And just give me about at least a minute. Uh, and. And if you read the book of Daniel, when somebody said, when I hear Christian people say, or Christianity, the religion say that no one had ever seen God. Or uh, when you look up the book of Daniel, it talk about the ancient of days set on the throne. And when you research what ancient of days is, that's talking about God. This is where we get the like father, like son from. Uh, it's ancient of days, it described what he had on, it described his hair. And somebody say, how do we know what Jesus looked like? One thing I can tell you that I know what he don't look like. And you go into Revelation, and you read, you look at the, you look at the image that they have depicted of Jesus Christ now, with the blonde, with the blonde hair, with the blue eyes. The scriptures say he had red eyes because he was a wine connoisseur, right? And then they talk about uh, how his feet and how his hair was. Even that, the scripture, it, even that depiction of Jesus Christ that we have now don't even match the Bible that we are currently reading. It don't even match that at all. And on the other side, people say, why do? Uh, this is how I know somebody haven't read the Bible. And it's just me just giving my opinion. When you say, well, why does the skin color matter? Because in Revelation, he told John that what I see, write it in the book. So it was important to him. So when John wrote down what he seen and how he looked at him, that was important because he said, what I see, write it in the book. So we can't sit here and say color don't matter when he told him to write down what you see. In the scripture, it says, okay, forget bronze. If you put anything in a furnace, it just don't mean that one nation of people is better than the other one. But if you put anything in a furnace, it's not going to come out but one damn color. And that is dark, black as shit. And when they say his feet was like fine brass as if it burned in a furnace, what the hell do you get out? How you get how you get something burned in the furnace and you get a goddamn white man with a goddamn blue eyes with blonde hair? Yeah, let me <laughs> let me say this real quick, cause oh, boy, I almost about to break this freaking phone. I'm trying my best. I I think that's one thing I really hate. Like in the, in the middle of this thing, this thing won't even shut off. This thing literally said no connection out of nowhere in the middle of me. Ah, boy, I'm trying to breathe a little bit. That just made me so mad. Um, it was two points I was literally trying to make. I think one of them. Uh, Hey, I don't even know if the other point even got out. Whatever. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm you you were saying something about that just this. made me so mad. I really hate that job. I can let me see if I can remind you. Bro. Huh? Oh, he over there blowing hot steam. <laughs> hey, let me Man. see if I can remind you, bro. I, you was talking today. about you was, was you was you was mentioning something about you you know what God really mean. I mean, like what what. With that, he he really know what we mean. Oh yeah, yeah. Th oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, you just remind. Yeah, that's what I was getting to though. I just don't believe we got like everybody put their little pettiness, like human mind to it. And I I highly doubt God think the same same way and stuff. Like, well, they told you the name, and that's what I mean, or something like that. I think I think he really know in our heart what we mean, because his real name might not even be Jesus. None of it. You know what I'm saying? It's just 
we only know as far as what we've been taught like i tell people all the time we only know as far as what's in the book right now and we choose to believe that we choose everything that we we, we decide to look up we just choose to believe in it you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't think he gonna I don't believe he's going to hurt us. You know what I'm saying? Just like, man, uh -uh, I need this to be direct and how I put it. You know, I don't, or how the white team, or whoever wrote the book, right? Because I really don't know. I can't tell you what color or not because I wasn't there. You know, I just, I would assume black, right? But who knows? I just don't know. I'm just, I just read it. I'm, I'm interested in it. I believe it's true. I, um, and I see it. I experienced a lot of these things in my life and it connects with it too. And, it, and it's, and it's fair. It's fair to me. Cause they don't ask for too much. It just say believe in a name, or believe in a person that we never seen before, right? And uh, also just love one another. I don't see what's the crime in it. And then like to look all these missing books up and all this other stuff. I get the whole concept. I read enough about the Bible that I floating in the air. You know, I don't. You know, it's, I get the whole context behind it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like most of the stories they tie to the same exact thing you know it was sinners that he used to 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 do his uh do whatever he planned he used them they grew out of it they they probably you know they done disobeyed him and all that other stuff then he, they came to him eventually i mean all the stuff ended up being the same that some people haven't came to him but he still showed uh kindness to him he still showed patience and all that stuff. i mean like all of it is basically the same exact thing and it's just showing how we are you know, so I just don't get why we got to, you, did you miss that part and why this don't mean it? This don't make sense to me. Okay, cool. But did you get, you get the overall thing, but I think people take the worst parts. What about the part he was, we slaves and stuff. That sound like the watch. They, like even that part, when that, somebody mentioned, I was like, that's why I know that a lot of people I don't need to understand. understand. I really wanted to respond to that. Hold on, let him land, let him land. Oh, yeah. The, Go the, ahead, the thing is, is that, um, I don't, I'm talking too long or something. I don't know what's going on. I don't hardly talk anyways, though. I hope I ain't talking too long. But, um, I was, whatever, I'm gonna skip that part. Yeah, I did. I gotta stop. I'll be getting through off. I ain't gonna even lie. But the other no, part no, is, no, um, no, the, the, the face, right? The, um, when you say, uh, how Jesus looked like, right? Um, I think he did make it kind of clear. That's why he said, don't make no engraving images him, of him and stuff. So I don't really think we supposed to be trying to say how he looked like or something like that or how the white team man got us thinking this dude with the beard and, why is, is Jesus and all that stuff? That's probably where the whitewash thing they talking about, right? Because I don't, I don't even think we really. If you even look at when they how they describe Jesus, right? It was only, it was at the when he returned, right? Nobody don't even know. And what just like Sean was mentioning, like the different parts or whatever. Like if you notice, it was like, I think it was like different colors. Like it was like different type of colors and stuff. But I think it was like it was like that because it's a new body, right? Jesus not going to come with the same body he had before, even when he raised out of, raised from the uh. Right, unalive and right, he wasn't. It wasn't the same body. It even saying, and I, I, I love that part of the Bible when I read it. I said, um, in heaven, right, we're not gonna have the same body. We're not gonna have the same body. We got a new body. We gonna know each other more than we ever knew right now. I mean, it's it's, it's so much though. So, I, yeah, this the stuff that people pushing out and, and painting pictures and all that stuff. It was the reason why he say like. Like, don't make no engraving images of him. I mean, it just, it do say that in there. So all these things that we trying to make him to be and all this other stuff, that that's not what we're supposed to be doing. I think it's a reason why he, why he said that. I, I believe so. Well, remember so, how we were talking earlier about, um, about languages, about words, and we were breaking down words. It reminds me of the, of the, the Tower of Babylon. When you look at Babylon, everybody got all the languages all mixed up, you know, or or they were separated with languages. It's the same thing like with um, what, what you're saying, Kev, is it it's it's how you perceive it. It's how you perceive it and not how anybody else perceives it. It's how you look at God. Exactly. Um, Can I, I add think, to that? Um, Okay, I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on my little little self. Um, Sean did um have his hand up first, but um, yes, yeah, um, sh you already off mic. Go ahead, and then right. Sean, we gonna let you answer your question. All right, because I wanted to address what the host had brought up. Uh, I would think God would hold us accountable because He tells us through the scriptures to study to show thyself approved. He tells us to look for wisdom, talking in a 
as if it's in a female context. It says search for her as for hidden silver. And you got to dig really deep to get silver. <clears throat> uh, not to mention, a lot of people do love God with their heart, but he, he say the ones that love me outwardly with their mouths, but I'm going to tell them, turn away from me. You never knew me. Because a lot of people celebrate Christmas, and Christmas is a very, very, very pagan holiday. A lot of people go take their kids, go trick-or-treating. A lot of people celebrate Easter. A lot of people celebrate these pagan holidays that he blatantly tells us not to do in the scriptures also. So I think that plays a heavy factor. It's our lifestyles that we have, that we do our our annual celebrations that we consider holidays, high holy days that we celebrate based on what was taught to us. You know what I'm saying? Santa Claus is a stanza for Satan. December 25th is the birthday of Nimrod, the guy that appointed the Tower of Babel to be built. So I'm like, just like, just like I said, he, he says in the scriptures, to study the soul to show thyself approved. Like he, he tells you to study, like it's almost like this. That's, that's how I know <clears throat> that I would never discard them, even though I don't, I don't subscribe fully to them. Cause I see where there are some lies and some stuff that ain't supposed to be in there, but I could never fully discard it because of stuff like that. That's in it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I suggest in me personally, I suggest people like, yeah, like really study and really because the truth of God is bigger than the Bible. You're not going to find it sticking just to the Bible. And you got to, and before you get out of it, you got to break it down until you can't no more because it's coded in so many ways. It's been transliterated so many times. It's hard to get the exact meaning out of it, even with the concordance, a Strong's concordance and an Oxford study Bible. That's what I use both, you know, <clears throat> but uh, I land my plane. Well, I'm, I'm going to say I was with you until you said the, the Bible is just not the only place of the word of God. I, I was lost on that one. I ain't going to lie. But uh, I think if, you, if, if, if like, I think God is petty. Uh, and, and, and the book tells me that. Uh, and this is going to be like, OK, what the hell are you talking about? I'm just going to go off the book and not my own. Uh, interpretation of it. Uh, when he said that he would send strong delusions on these people that they will believe a lie. Uh, so he, 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 he intervened and called them and caused those people to believe in a lie. Uh, he also called a woman, a dog from the coast of Canaan in the book of Matthew, which is the new Testament. Uh, you say the Quran. Okay. Even, even we called the woman a dog and said that it's not right to take, you know, the kids meat and cast it to dogs. Like, so you could say, oh, he ain't mean a dog like that. And, and shit, that's your own interpretation. And we go out, um, what Tax Pearl said as far as the Quran, the reason I don't believe in the Quran is because the Quran mentions the Bible, but the Bible never mentions the Quran. To me, that alone shows me that the Quran came after the Bible and it can't be true. All it did was try to copy and paste what came from the Bible. And also the Quran talks about God's chosen people. And it, so it refers back to the Bible for the chosen people. The Quran, I mean, not petty enough to send us to hell for confusion. No, 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 hold on. Nah, nah. He's, look, look, listen, listen. You say confusion. God himself said he would send strong delusions on these people that they will believe a lie. That's causing confusion, Kev. I don't know how we can't slice it and dice it. If you causing somebody to believe in something that's not true, that's you could call it petty, delusional, confusion, but he calls confusion right in that scripture yeah. alone. I'm saying and I on, agree that and, and China, look, part. I'm saying I agree to that part. Oh, you, that's what you said that which I, I ain't never knew oh, that. Okay, but bad, I'm saying I don't think No, I got I got I got it to my pastor mode, I, my bad. <laughs> <you're stuck>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying I don't think like even with that. I can't see him like kind of sending us to hell for that. That's why I put that in there, you know, because I no, can get okay. he can do games and tricks and that. all the other stuff, but I can't see you like, well, you fell for it and I go to hell. That's not, I don't think that's even godly. That guy would do something like that. Well, who am I to do? I'm just saying that don't sound it, right. It is. It is, Kev. I'm going to tell you what I mean. It is. And it's, this is what I mean by the true nature of God. And for me personally, I accept it. 
Uh, is it cruel? Is it kind of like evil in a sense? Yes, because he say, I create darkness. I create good and evil. So I can say it is evil. I'm just going off the book itself. I, my mom, my dad have done some evil things. I've done some evil things. My wife probably done some evil things. That don't mean I don't love her. So I look at God the same way. And the reason I say that is because uh, in, in, in the Old Testament where he said that it was two nations in the womb. And he said he would hate one nation over the other. He said for not for no works or anything that they have done anything wrong. He said that he would choose to hate them just because he want to. And then a group of people say, is that unrighteous with God? And he said, I will have compassion on who I will have compassion for. So he choose what he want to do when he want to do. Whether people like it or not, those are scriptures that pastors stay away from. And you can actually read that in the Old Testament where he said he hated a group of people for them having done anything wrong or having done any works. That is just scripture. I can't take, no matter how I feel about it, I have to accept that for what it is. Hey, Sean, remember when in Samuel, when he sent uh, some Israelites to go kill a whole village? He said slaughter everything, even sucklings. Hey, and you know what? Here's the crazy part about that, uh, Lou. Most people don't even understand that Easter is nothing but the Passover, right? So when you think about the Passover, which is Easter, do you know what that even celebrates? That celebrates the, the, the slaughter of a lot of different, uh, I think it was the Egypts, the uh, Egyptians or something. It celebrates the slaughtering of those people. Yep. So, I mean, <laughs> most people don't even know that, but it, it's all in the Bible. That's why they call it East. That's why they call it East. But that's how I know that the truth about God, back to what I said about that, I know it, it might rub people the wrong way. I don't mean to, but the truth about God is bigger than the Bible. And there's no such thing as a pure lie. Every lie has some type of truth in it to even be considered for somebody's attention, you know what I mean to you know what I mean to even consider it to be true. You you, you ha it has to have some truth in it. It has to because we like sub like on a subconscious level we know lies and truth when we hear it. Even though sometimes we hear a lie, we just want to believe it that good, that bad. That's why we believe it. But something in you knew it was a lie. That's why it takes. Uh, the truth to make a lie. That's why I'm like, hey, all this, all this religious and spiritual literature out here, and none of it has nothing to do with the truth of God except for the Bible. I just can't get with that. That's why I study a little bit of Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam. My wife is Muslim. You know what I'm saying? I've never committed fully to being a Christian. I used to call myself a Hebrew Israelite. I don't do that no more. But like, and it just comes from research. To re I believe I'm indigenous to America, but that also means, yeah, I'm probably Hebrew because they found paleo Hebrew tablets all over America. We have to remember the Bible was a collection of the, <clears throat> the scriptures that were approved by several councils. Facts. I think my, uh, I talked to my brother. I think he was telling me about there were nine councils or whatnot. I, I thought there were only like seven. He told me, no, there were like nine. So, you know, we, we still don't understand or know this all these truths to be like a mainstream truth so that's why it's confusing that's why it you know when you talk about the quran and certain things you know you're like but the bible doesn't reference the quran but the quran references the bible you know this is why all of that has happened because at some point someone had to stand over it in an authoritative authoritative uh fashion and state this is going in there that is it you know you think about that they removed the apocrypha you know, that was what, 14 books or whatnot. They removed that out of the out of the Old Testament or whatnot, out of the uh, the, the scriptures. And then they translated it again. And then they took more out because I know there was a Geneva Bible, which has a few more, maybe six or seven more scriptures that were removed. And then you have the King James Version, you know, and you have to wonder why they keep giving out these different versions. And each time there was a, a revolution in church, they would hand out this new version. So that's all. That was the point I was making in the original was that why, why it was important to understand the translations and the transliterations because there is a nature that we that we are missing. 
Um, I referenced earlier in, in the chat that uh, in Exodus 34, 14, it says that, for I am a jealous God. There are several times that jealousy is mentioned in the Bible and uh, the instructions were given to his people. You have to think about there were other religions and other belief systems that were out there. Um, not many of them were monotheistic. However, they saw that the, what was popular with the people was this Hebrew, these Hebrew te this Hebrew text. And so they went with that because that was the way the majority was going. And at that point, you know, let's see if we can add a, a you know, some taxes to this. Let's see if we can pass the collection plate. And I, yeah. I want to, uh, of course, I'm back with Shine again. Uh, because with that, the confusion thing, man, I just, I don't know, it's just eating at me. Because like, even if, if, even if it was to go that route, like I said, which I still, I got to read up on that part of myself. I just can't see him cause it. Like I said, I, just like you said, he might cause confusion, right, sometimes, even though I thought that was the devil's work, but whatever. Um, that he he is still going to be in a way for him to have his, his will to be done, like to, to set it up for something, right, for him. Because my thing is, like, say if this, right, that's the reason why I said he's not going to cause a confusion to set people up to go to hell. The reason why I just don't, don't want to believe that is because he also said, that he wants to save everyone. He would. That's his. That's his whole thing. He wants to save everyone. He, I mean, he done made that specific in there. So that would kind of counter. That would, that's why I said that I got to read the context behind with on that part. But you know, that would be like a, that. Now that would be contradicting. You know what I'm saying? And even if that was in, that's the part I'd be like, well, that's what the YT person. But when people be saying that they added stuff to the Bible because that just don't sound right. It, it sounds like the opposite of his whole entire will that he want done you know what i'm saying he gonna cause confusion to set somebody up to go to hell that just don't sound right he know we humans we limited to what we know and all the other stuff and then then be then come out of nowhere like but i do want to save all y'all you know what i'm saying it just that don't it just that don't that just don't sound right though but i'm gonna look up like i said you you can inbox me that scripture just so because I, I like reading scriptures for myself too also i just don't go off for everybody just like i wouldn't recommend everybody else to just go off for any and everybody too I just want to read that scripture myself and just see the context behind it, why he causes that confusion or whatever. Okay, for sure. Yeah, because I'm, hey, I'm, I know there's a reason for everything. He want, he want the best for everybody. I don't think he want the worst for anybody. I don't think so. Yeah. No, he does. May I add to that? Go ahead, go ahead, Lou. I don't think he want to add the worst or or make the worst happen to anybody, but he got to test you. That's the confusion. Yeah, I agree. I agree that part. That's what I'm saying. That's I what I believe. That's he got to test you. He want to see how loyal you are. He want to see how genuine you are. He want to see do you have that diehard, tenacious spirit? Will you stop at nothing for it for yourself? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Because you gotta like it, I do. Like I said, I agree with all that. My thing is the ending part. I don't think he's doing that to send someone to hell. That's the difference I'm talking about. He can do all that to make them powerful, right? To bring strength to him, but to do that to send someone to hell, that don't that don't sound God like. He, I mean, that'll go against his promise. You know what I'm saying? He's not about to set somebody up to go to hell. They will. They will probably choose it themselves. You know what I'm saying? But he's not gonna be the one that jump in the middle of it like yep i'm about to do this this and that cause their confusion and then you're going to select going to hell that don't sound god like when he said he want everybody saved in my opinion there's really no such thing as hell there's only purgatory anyway and once you purge with what weighed you down there you can leave i don't really believe in hell like that as far as my what studies the hell? In, so I know it's not in, uh, <laughs> did i say something surprising no it was, it was a joke towards hell you missed my whole joke you Second, messed it up oh, same okay. thing. <laughs> you say i don't believe Second it i said what the hell <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> she said you say your I, yeah i made that clear i said you yeah for the most part yeah you do but i my thing i was saying uh eve He's not about to be in the midst of you sending yourself. Well, Sean was saying that he caused the confusion. I'm not going to believe it, right? To strip to somebody else, but I would. I think the other part I was adding in there.
I don't think he's going to cause confusion to send someone to hell. You know, that's that's what I was saying. But I'm going to look at the other scripture he just sent up there. Second Timothy 2.15 tells you to make every effort to present yourself approved to God. So I think that's the, you know, so when Lou said uh, that you have to, it's a test. And that's what the Most High is trying to do for us. He's trying to test us. And I think he is trying to see who is seeking his face, who is seeking his true face and not just going with these, you know, these pagan uh, uh, rituals or whatnot. Because, you know, it sounds horrible, but you really look at a lot of the uh the, the the little things that we do um it gets into like there are some people who are doing this on a heavier scale ritual like scale and this is where the cult come in so there are occults out there there the occultism is a very real thing and it is right before our eyes but we don't see it or recognize it because we're conditioned you know every month there's a holiday you know, we we have uh, Halloween that's going to come up, you know, but a lot of people are doing these rituals where they're leaving food out for the dead. Where are you getting that from? You know, you're not a necromancer, so you shouldn't be doing something like that. Right. But we're going to see people doing that and we're going to not think twice about it. You know, where where did the jack o' lantern come from? You know, if you look at the origin of that and you understand that that itself is a ritual. So that's why it's important for us to just kind of study these things to understand them. So that when we have children or whatnot, we can, you know, show them, we can keep them, you know, uh, seeking the correct face of God. That's why. I think that that's a very powerful yeah. statement that you, that you just said when, when you bring up ritual. Because even if you look at the, the word spiritual, the last part of the word is ritual. So there are rituals, there are habits, there are there are things that were that were created and this this goes into every religion every religion has and then, now we got these pagan holidays and we've got all this stuff we got who <laughs> who, who brought up santa earlier cuz it reminded me of satan <laughs> yeah you know so you you look at you look at the Easter Bunny, which was Eastern, if you look at Eastern. So there, there's a lot of rituals that actually come in with, that's true. That's with just your belief so let me, in God. Let me say this so, real quick. I want to read this. I, I want to read this scripture now. Uh, I, I think I, I, read a, I did a little skimp before, but I'm going to read it out loud just to see what everybody got. Because I, I, I actually love doing this. Because I know it's like, I've been, I, I usually do this even on my live sometimes because I be seeing people see a lot. Because I just want, that's, I think that's the whole purpose of a church for all of us to try to see what we got out of it. You know, instead of just going on one interpretation, you know what I'm saying? Because I believe everybody's going to have their thing, but I think we're going to come to a connection. But because somebody else did one, like, yeah, it was, they, it was, they gave me a scripture, like, now God sent this and I read it for myself. It was nowhere how they did. I, it was another, even an Israelite I had when again, uh, I mean, I mean, nothing against Israel. I'm just saying, but he had read me a scripture talking about, God won't white tee man to kiss your shoe and all this. I'm like, what? So I looked at the, I said, give me a scripture that said it come and find out it's, it's it was a person kissing jesus foot and i'm like so y'all done mixed this whole scripture up and made it seem like y'all jesus like that's what i'm saying that's why i love reading for myself that's why i say the more that people i love i love talking about scripture that's, i just love it man because i like re, i like to read it and understand and realize how to many of different ways and i also want to see why people come with the conclusion what they got i mean nothing against no anybody but i'm just saying it's just I just like I like I like this I guess you say Bible study, but sometimes everybody if we you know sometimes we get angry in the midst of because it's a passionate thing. But let me see I'm I'm on the uh, so second that's 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 I okay, that got the word now you got me you got me on that one. Uh, so I'm on ten I'm gonna start off with ten we are gonna read all the way down. So uh, it says Thessalonians. Uh, let me do nine then. Even him who is coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying uh, and signs and lying wonders and with all the deceivableness and unrighteousness unrighteousness in that in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved for this cause god shall send strong delusion that they should believe a lie okay that they all might be damned to believe not the truth but had pleasures in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, 
where unto he called you by our gospels to obtain of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tradition which ye have been taught, whether by word or ep, ep, or our ep, ep, man, they got man. That's when I need another version, a translation. <laughs> epistle, epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us and have given us everlasting co consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your heart and stabilize, establish you in every good work, word and work. So, yeah. So reading the whole full thing now I'm, I'm, as I'm looking at it, it do sound like, just like you said, it was a test, though. But that's why I said I know it ain't a test to, like, send him to hell. I guess it was to prove, what, this is what I got it, right? To prove his, his, uh, his, I guess, in Bob not being no longer off work, right? The salvation that Jesus did for them. That's what I kind of read out of it. Uh, that's what I got, you know, from the, the rest of the part, though. Like I said, well, what did y'all get out of it? If y'all heard the whole thing, though. So I don't think it was the it was just a you know that's why that was my whole point of what i was saying i don't think he's going to set things up to send someone to hell it's always going to be a reason why he would do certain things because what he want from us oh i wasn't yeah that's, that's why i was saying i was hoping you wasn't saying that that's why i was like man it just don't sound but I, like i said i already agree with you from the beginning then if that's the case i know he i know god throw tests i know he throw uh he he probably might even throw confusions and stuff I mean, I, I can understand that. I mean, but I get you. You saying that word confusion, I, and it show that. I guess it show God do uh, can't do that. I ain't know that. I guess you just told me that. I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Like just like that. Yeah, Joe. I was just about to say in the devil. I was gonna mention that too. Y'all was gonna get to that too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Remember, they talked about the harvest and separating the wheat from the tares. Uh oh, cause old about to be in the building. Yep. <laughs> What's the deal, cuz? Exactly. Whoa, what about? Hey, yo, I'm about to go. Oh, yeah, for I sure, little man. I appreciate love this you, conversation, man. man. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm going to be on for a Most good definitely. minute. I might even do like a a reset song and do another topic. This is pretty good, though. I like this one. All right, Sean. What's up, cuz? What's going on? Shit. I see you done ran through the topic about three, four times. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, because when I hey, more get than that. Brain, more than that. Man, they... <laughs> when I first uh, came into your little lobby or whatever, so I seen like a whole different set of people up here. Nah, it's a whole nother set. Y'all jumped on uh some lady. Let me see what yeah. I was talking about. Hold up, I'm about to be right back. This thing kicked me out. Of course, it did the daily kickouts. <laughs> so what you were saying? Oh no, I was just going through the chat, seeing what y'all was talking about. Oh yeah, we ended up talking about scripture, and you know that eventually comes out of evidence. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> nah, that's <laughs> no, nah, but real talk, it's at the root of a lot of people' life on here. You know, a lot of people. This is Lena in the in the uh, chat. Uh, yes, people are seen as righteous in God's eyes, uh, but that doesn't mean that they aren't to you know to continue to seek God. You know, the the world is is trying to seep in. The world is constantly trying to get us to change uh, and become unrighteous, and so we have to stay. And that's that. I mean, that's the whole point of, of okay. everybody coming together, like you are right here in this in this chat in this live chat. You know, everybody's coming together and you're sharpening yourself. Iron sharpens iron. So yeah. you have to continue. That's a continual process. It's not like, you know, once you've given the commandment or once you've given the information to that person and then it's like, OK, you're righteous and end the story. You know, at, at some point, you know, certain things are going to come up, uh, you know, like when you when you train your kids and you send them to school and they come back with some some kind of bad habit or something like, where did you learn that? And then they, they think it's harmless. But then you have to actually show them how this is harmful. And then, you know, so that's that's kind of like what what's happening right here. Um, you you heard the Bible be used as an acronym for basic instructions before leaving before Earth. Before leaving Earth, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I feel it. I, I hope I pronounced her name correctly. I said Lyena. I, I hope I I said that right. Well, that's interesting. You know, I'm glad that you brought that up, Anthony, because I was actually in a um, in a conversation today, and I'm actually going to go into another live, and, and we talk about this. Is it look? You you've got the laws, the commandments, you've got everything that comes on with it with the Old Testament, the New Testament, and all this stuff. Everybody can can know it all, but how are you going to act on it? So it was the it's the action. So. What, what what does the Bible tell us how we need to actually move? You know, a lot of people don't know how to move. They don't know how to function. They don't know how to action. They don't know how to take that that action on that. And that that's where a lot of that that love comes in, or that kindness comes in, even the long suffering that comes in, or the endurance that comes in. You know, so there, there there's a lot of there's a lot of things that actually have to come in when when you're I don't call myself Christian, but um, I will say I'm a believer, you know, so um, and I, I just follow the what the what the what the what the most high wants for me. I need to do that first before I do it for another man. You know, yeah, I want to mention uh, I see Carrie what you said. Um, You said I know I was raised in my whole life, but people abuse it. And I do my thing is. <clears throat> And they can do that with any religion, though. I just try to stray away from blaming a whole entire religion, which I see, because a lot of people do that, though, and they write it off like, it's the religion or something like that. Most of the time, it's the people in it. That's just like when people blame marriage, right? Marriage is horrible. Marriage, and no, it's the people. It's the way that people teach it. Marriage has always been the same. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these religions has always been the same, but it's just the way people teach it. Use it to manipulate the music, use it to deem you and scare you and all this other stuff. I think that who the, that's who the problem is, you know, because like everybody like I could be mad at uh what they got. Who was that? The, the, the Muslims or something, whoever that was. Right. The ones that made the the the, the plane. Cr I'm trying to talk because I'm scared. I don't know. But the nine, the nine, the nine and nine one one. Right. I could be like, hey, you, you see what this type of people is and stuff like that or whatever. I'm not, about, but we can't blame the whole entire um religion for their, you know, their um their choices and stuff or how they try to, you know, use that point of view. It's just like, cause I don't try to write off nobody's stuff like low key. Everybody gonna believe their stuff is true, you know, and it's and it's, and it's like that. I don't think nothing is is wrong with it. I think as long as you're doing the best you can out of out of it and trying to live as righteous as you can, because I think every part have some type of form of righteous righteousness in it um you know as long as you ain't harming nobody you know i can't see the because the thing is we all trying to seek the truth that's all it is but it ain't always about uh going with what fits my fleshly uh what relates to my flesh and all it's not always about that sometimes it go go against the flesh whatever you believe in like you know what i want to do this i want to sleep with that and all that stuff it's because your flesh want to do it that don't and in, in the and in something else is trying to tell you to to not do it, that don't make it wrong, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, it's just so many different things on that. So I just try not to, you know, really blame it. Because I know a lot of us went through certain things and like, no, I don't like the way this got taught me and all that stuff. But it's, it's we got to blame like some of the churches, right? Blame some of the churches, blame some of the, the leaders and all that other stuff. Them the ones that we, that we blame. We can't just blame the stuff. And a lot of times that we look with, that's why I like looking at stuff for myself, scripture for myself or Whatever I, I decide to look at, I look at it for myself to see if it's like the people, if it, it's the same way that how the people taught me. Because a lot of times I don't notice it's all the way different. It ain't the same way sure. the pastors have been teaching me. It hasn't been the same way that even mm -hmm. when I talk to people online, it don't be the same way until I look at it myself. So I was like, yeah, my sure, thing is yeah. like, and I understand people will write things off, especially when it go against their lifestyle that they got. So they gonna they quick to do that. You know, I told you it was the whole entire religion. As long as I can keep on partying and drinking and do whatever I want to do, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep on sticking with that. Because if I, I mean, I'm not going to go back and look because it's going to make me feel guilty if it do say it and I find out it's true. And I, I used to, I ain't going to lie, I used to be like that. I used to be scared to look at the Bible because I'm like, man, it's, it's going up, it's going up telling me something. And then now that I know it's going to go, then I got to feel bad that I know and then feel like I'm going to go to hell and all this other stuff. But now I realize, you know, the real concept behind it. I'm like, no, that ain't really as bad as it is. And it's actually saving me because as bad as I, you know, I realize these things has been teaching us to, to save ourselves, like for the most part. 
you know, I realized like, okay, it told us like, well, Hoyko the number one of the main ones that everybody loved, fornication and all the other stuff, right? Now we see the results of what happened when we keep follow when we don't we because we didn't want to follow and say wait to marriage and all that stuff. See what's happening now. See why we have so many misguided children out here. The why the adoption things is so high. Why people, you know, all these things. That's why I always I, I always ask one big question, especially when it, like if it was coming to the Bible. I'm like, what's the worst that could happen if everybody was to literally follow everything that happened in here? What would be the worst? It would me myself. I would believe it'd be a perfect world because what's so harsh in there to tell you don't don't do this, don't sleep with this, treat a person right, love this person, love that, don't do that, obey this, and all that stuff. What is the worst that can happen if everybody was on one accord? But here we go, throw the waters. But what if somebody do that? But they they not following scripture. That's the problem, right? So we can't talk about the people that's not following scripture. The worst can't happen if everybody is following. It would dang it with me. What I believe it would be heaven on freaking earth because all of us would treat each other right. All of all of us would be on one accord. All of us wouldn't be moving off our flesh and being greedy and all that stuff. You know, I mean, I, what is the worst that happens in scripture? I don't get it. Nobody never could tell me that. Nobody can't say that. they just go to the word the other person that they see. Well, they were slaves in there and they treated you as that. And you ever ask? Maybe they deserve to be. Maybe they disobey God or something like that, and that's what God put them through. You know what I'm saying? I don't get why everybody. Like I said, everybody act like they're we are. We are good. We just trained ourselves to be good. We'll be just like these people that's in jail if we didn't get trained right. So I don't know why we be acting like we any better than other any other human being. Because we got brought up a certain better a better way. No, we would literally be just like the rest of them. So, you know, I, I just be, I don't know, I just be thinking about stuff like that, man. You no, know, I've, I've always asked that question, Kev, is that, you know, there, there is a lot of g good things in the, in the Bible that a lot of people want to um, discount. They want to discount the love. They want to discount the kindness. They're like, what, what? If you're actually really moving in the right direction, that there's it's actually really a good direction. It really is a good direction. A lot of people want to blame God. They don't want to blame the person next to them. You gotta blame themselves sometimes. That's what it is. Yeah. It is not God's fault why you got you chose the wrong person to sleep with. It ain't God's fault because you why you end up why you end up with a toxic father or toxic mother you know what i'm saying it is not god's fault <laughs> these are humans like think about this right it, that would imagine if we did got what we wanted i wish we could control this person i wish this person didn't rob me i wish this you know all these things that would take away the the so-called maybe say free will but i say freedom of choice that god has gave us so he's going to stop one human's freedom of choice for you no he's just trying to show how human nature is if he don't if he don't step in there this is what we do to one another. This is what we what we would do. So no, I don't get why people be thinking we so special. Well, God's hand is on me, and I'm gonna make sure. You know, no. I mean, I mean, I ain't gonna say it like that though. I, I believe God is is is, is watching it and, and connecting people with you know that call upon Him and all that. I could believe that. But I'm just saying, as in like we act like we so special, like some of these things not supposed to happen to us because. We feel like we angels. You know what I'm saying? We God is gonna be like, I'm gonna take away your free will, but you get to do what you want to do because he caught it, it just don't work like he just he really God really trying to show us how our flesh move and how evil we really are. You know, that's just what well, it is. I don't know why every, everybody act like this is what I was thinking about too. Everybody act like because I said I'm sorry it take away the crime. You did it. Mm -hmm. That's what your flesh do. This is what it is. You can't change just because you say. God, I hope you forgive me. He gonna forgive you, but it don't take away the fact that you still sinned. People be forgetting about that. It don't take the fact that you snapped on this person and called him a B. You did it. You know what I'm saying? This is what your nature is. You just trying to become better, but this is something we fight at every last... The fact that we gotta fight to be good every day is show that we not good. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. I don't know, man. That's why I just try to get out of, out of a lot of our human brains to act like because all of a sudden we we got put in a good position and we had time and, and thank God gave us that he got, that he's patient, patient enough for us to change and stuff. You know, that's why I don't be trying to even look down on people that might be doing worse. You know what I'm saying? I just don't because it's like, maybe they haven't had the time to mature and grow, you know? So it's just, I mean, it's, it's just so much, man. And I know I'm no better than none of them when it comes to, you know, looking at, I mean, if we, if according to God's eye, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, just because I sin differently, that don't make me not, not any better. You know what I'm saying? We all, like, dang near daily we sin. And even if you don't physically do that, your mind is sinning. You ain't like God can't, he can't, you don't think he can read your mind? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? You done probably call people all type of names, been lustful in your ears, and in your head and stuff, been doing all type of wild stuff in your head. That's not how, that don't make you not sinning. <laughs> people just forgot about that. Oops, I done told that, right? Or you just found out, right? Just because you don't say it out loud, that don't mean that you ain't did, you, you didn't do it. So that's what I'm saying. Like, if we want to go off human nature, we evil. We freaking evil. That's just reality that take a little humbleness to realize that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know, we just learn a few things and like, nope, I'm a better human being than the next human. <laughs> no, we just sin differently. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> Yeah, what I've experienced it, it, is is whenever the most, it, even though the most high gives us free agency, we may stray from a path, but we end up coming right back to. And I think that's that's the realization that um, that really happens. And a lot of people will define it as a spiritual awakening. Some people will, will just say they became uh, very conscious about what they do now. Um, some people look into the subconscious. So either way, you come right back to it. And I think that's when they they have that journey or that path, they've taken it. And because they have taken it, you know, they've elected to take it themselves or say, hey, I'm gonna stray away. I'm just gonna do this because I don't believe in this. And then they end up crashing back. I think that's where that comes in. Um, some people, I believe you Kev, some people do utilize that. Oh, I'm, you know, I, I'm just gonna say a couple of Hail Marys and I'm absolved, you know, and then they, you know, they continue conducting the craziest sins after that. Um, I think that's what got us in this conversation from the beginning, because we were talking about how the Bible was used by white supremacy and mm -hmm. the intentions for them to have done it. And so uh, when right. they exactly. Yeah. yeah. So th that's what I was trying to explain earlier. It was just the fact of, you know, like I was saying, just it was important to understand the transliterations and the intent behind those transliterations. They changed mm -hmm. a lot of things because they didn't intend for us to be like we are now. You know, it, it's 16, yeah, I'll get you on 16, it. 1677. They did not, they didn't know we were going to be on some device like this where we we're communicating about this same topic. You know, they Thanks. wanted us not to know. The only people who were allowed to talk about this was the pastor in our communities, you know, and mm -hmm. that's how they intended it to be. So that's what I was trying to uh, elaborate on uh, uh, earlier. Mm hmm. And, and actually, like what, 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 what you're saying, Anthony, and what uh, Kev was saying. And Kev, it, when when you talked about um, like sin, every, you you sinned, you did it, you you need to you need to know it, you need to do it, and that's what leads to um, people being a victim mindset. Is like a lot of people that are in the victim mindset actually are the ones who are caught in their own sin, you know. So it's like, what? Well, wait a minute, because I sinned, I, I can't hold somebody else on this so now we're we're taking this this sin thing that everybody wants to you know construct and then we're comparing sin to trauma and and, mm -hmm. and that that does not work it does mm -hmm. not work wow that's right i feel it i feel that one wow that's yeah right, it's so much man that's that's the only reason why i'd be trying to you know, that's why I, that's all I can say is just try to make what's best. Try to help as many people as you can. Don't yeah. put your uh, your right. bad experiences, your bad traumas that you had with different things on everybody else. Cause that's why I'd be like, man, just because you got a bad experience, that don't make it everybody else's experience. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, I do go mm -hmm. against a lot of people that try to go against the Bible and stuff and be like, well, do you know it's like that? And I'm like, well, that's your experience of it. Because when I when I read it and when I when I'm moving it, I move way different. I know how to treat people right with it. I know. I mean, I'm not moving how to these people that taught me. You know what I'm saying? I see the best. I see the best out my out my situation. So it's like, don't you know? Don't use uh how everybody else or whatever, you know, whatever. A lot of it is trauma. That's what it is. A lot of trauma things. And we just stick with it because our experience, so we think everybody else is going through the same the exact thing. And then it's just not true. I've just seen people make the best out of every religion. You know what I'm saying? And and we just automatically want to write certain things. Oh, that's why I always say if it works for you, then let, let it, it works. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. Well, you ever heard of uh, the living word or heard it referred to as the living word? I heard really? somebody say that before. Yeah. Um, to me, they used to say that, and I, I didn't know what it meant for a long time until I, uh, I, I was 33, and then I started reading it again, and because of certain things that I had experienced uh, after, you know, being in the military, being deployed and stuff, certain things that I saw, 
you know, after having those experiences, then the word then became more alive to me then. And it was like, I read something I read like 20 times before, but it just didn't hold, you know, mm-hmm. and then now it was, it was alive. So I think a lot mm. of times we, we, we see people go through that and instead of encouraging them to continue, you know, that's where we get into the point where we blame and say, well, you're trying to tell me that I'm a sinner and this is it, you know, and it's like, they become so <laughs> emphatic about it. And it's just, you know, sometimes I guess it's hard to do it now, nowadays, as opposed to where it used to be, you know, um, mm-hmm. you used to be in a church, you used to be in a church group or whatnot, they would have a Bible study. And if someone had that kind of experience and shared it, it was encouraged, but we don't do that anymore. Our culture doesn't really, you know, uh, promote that, that we do it that way now. So now it looks like someone is, is a heretic or someone is, is, you know, is crazy, you know? And so mm-hmm. that's, that's what I think you, what you often uh, come across Kev. And uh, mm-hmm. you just have to kind of understand or maybe look back and say, maybe something just happened to them and they're, True. you know, now they, they've read the word and it's living to them right now. I like that. I like that. I ain't never thought about that. I ain't never heard it from that way too. Wow. I, I, I've heard of that, that the in the in the in the living word because if you're actually reading the word, you're actually utilizing it. You're actually spreading it too at the same time. But some of us don't come into the word the same way that everybody else comes into the word. True. You know, some of us come come to it, and um, like some of us are humbled differently. We're just humbled differently, mm-hmm. and that that's yeah. God's work. That's not that's not our work. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's why I said yeah. that's the whole purpose of a church. That's what I'm saying. It's not just the building. That's the whole purpose is just us to converse. You know what I'm saying? Two more gather. You, you, you converse, and you know, just like we just did a little bit earlier. That's that's the church session. You know what I'm saying? We just went over scripture to see what you know how how our many different interpretations came up, and you know I'm trying to and then try to build an understanding within it. And that's how it is. That's why it's, he also mentioned like. I think in the description, I'm gonna look that up too to make it sure. But I heard in scripture, like you're supposed to challenge your the pastor. You're supposed to challenge your teacher sometimes, you know, because they they might not, you know, know it all or whatever. They might come off of, you know, people. We humans. Everybody, you know, I don't get why. Also, people be acting like that. As soon as you get the Holy Ghost, or or when they ah oh, ah, oh, this that man. When everybody be like, well, you're not reading with uh, you're leaning to your own understanding. They only use that with scripture. Like, no, that's supposed to be in life. That ain't just pertaining just to the Bible. And people act like even if you did that, they like as soon as you if you get the Holy Ghost and read the Bible, it's gonna come out perfect. No, it's just that I don't think it works because if that was the case, I use that and play the lottery. No, nah, I can't say that. I'm sorry. No, nah, I take that back. But I'm just I'm just trying to think of something. But like I use that because if it worked, that means they act like it work in perfection, and I highly doubt that. You know, I would use that and uh and i'm not saying that god god can you know he can talk to you he can he can make you understand things that you didn't even realize but i'm just saying as in like the way people make it seem like that if it don't go the way i want it or whatever that's not of god or something like that. It, it don't work god work different ways with different people so i don't know why everybody act like it's the same thing mm-hmm. we all meant to have different experiences and, and different even interpretations i even realized that i'm not gonna tell you know that it's because I know that, I, and this one thing that woke me up, I'm not going to tell the Israelites and then the Christians, I'm not going to tell, your way is different, your way is wrong, your way, is, I think he, he he allowed all this to happen for some reason, because this is how different, these are many different ways of how everybody had to understand to have connection with God, and I, so that's why I look at it, even if we don't believe it the same way as each other, as long as you got a connection to God, or that's what brought you to God, you know, I would say stick to that's why I say I believe the Bible is more of a personal thing or the or the many different scripture or well, what we believe it is more of a personal what you do with your personal life and what causes you to, you know, see something be, beyond just self or whatever. And I'm like, you know, because like you can't keep putting your same tactic of just because you caught the Holy Ghost, you're going to expect that the next person should catch the Holy Ghost. It don't work like that. You you may have needed to catch the Holy Ghost to have a connection. Some people might have to see spirits to have a connection. You know what I'm saying? But everybody don't mm-hmm. go through the exact same thing. Some people had to go through a super trauma. Some people, right. you mean, it's so many different experiences. It's just not one way to 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 one thing. That's why I'm many there. I do believe it's a it's a lot of different ways to the same path. What is well, it? Uh, to say that you're right to to I, help I, to I, kind of go along with what you're saying is a lot of the men in the Bible were living a life uh, that wasn't approved by God in the very beginning, but they were already mm-hmm. selected. And so um, if you look at, I think, I'm not sure which ones, but I know I think Job was like the only one that I think of that wasn't devout uh, to the most high. I think others, the others had, others were abusers or whatnot. And so each one, 
you know, then was given this task or this purpose and then they came out and they did, you know, they uh, performed God's will. And at that point it was, Hey, this is, this is who they ended up being, you know? So even though the Israelites had been free from Egypt and in the desert or in the wilderness, as I, as it specifically says, they were worshiping the golden calf. He didn't come, he didn't condemn everybody in that moment. You know, he was like, okay, let me, let me get them to the next step, get them to the next. And every time he appointed a new leader, so I think Moses was disapproved because he got angry. I think he, when he threw down a rod and cursed or something or whatever. And so at that point, I think it was Aaron that took over from there. So, I mean, there's some, there's some details in there that shows you that, you know, what you're saying is true just because they have done one thing or they're doing something that doesn't mean that they're going to be condemned, you know, indefinitely. They're given that chance to to elevate themselves. And like I said, I, I think it's, it's just our, our effort, our journey to seek his face. And it, I be it, loving that too. And I got to let Carrie come in too, but I, I do be loving like when I, cause I, yeah. I be feeling like God, and I'm not trying to say I'm just a, a special, but I just think that, I, that I think that works with like how when God say like uh you know like stuff about the fruit and and spirit and all that stuff. This is like when certain things may hit me or rub me wrong when I hear it, and then I will speak how I feel, and I'll be loving that when I speak how I feel, what I what I what I think God may have, because I just be trying to think in like in spirit, not just me, right? So I just be trying to think like, man, what would God do? What would that's why they say what would Jesus do? And I be thinking about stuff like that. And then when I say it out loud and then come and find out, it be in scripture. I'd be like, man, that's be showing like, man, this the, the Bible be so legit sometimes. I'd be like, man, that jump be, I mean, I, I don't like saying, I ain't saying should have said that, but I'm just saying it just be like that confirmation, basically. That's what it's like. It's like a confirmation. I'm like, man, it's just, it's crazy. That jump crazy. That's why, I, that's why I be loving it, man. But go ahead, uh, Carrie. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and I, that actually speaks on rebellion. It's like, you know, if you look at rebellion, even if you look at Isaiah 63 and 10, it, it says, but they rebelled. A lot of people rebelled against uh, against the spirit. Yeah. That's yeah. The problem. Uh, hey, everyone. Thank you. Because I, um, I, I was listening to the conversation earlier and um, I think I don't remember. I think I think he dropped. And I think that's why I said in the comment that I respect Christianity. However, understanding the concept, what, you know, like, like, like understanding the concept can be controversial. And I think sometimes this is why it's hard for me to like speak on a topic like that because people abuse it a lot. Right. But that, mm -hmm. that, that's me saying that. That's me saying that I try to stay away from that conversation because I don't want to argue uh, argue down about what the scripture means and, 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 mm. and why you have to lean on to your own understanding. That doesn't mean I'm blaming God or blaming the, the, the religion or anything like that. Because I'm Muslim and, on, and all Muslims I know do understand that Christianity comes first. They also, they also understand the, the the knowledge of Torah. This is why they always say, you know, in M Muslim they they seek power. They seek um I don't know not power. They seek knowledge because they, they because knowledge is understanding and also power. But we also we also lean more so on the understanding and know and understand that people are different in the way they you know they serve God right. Mark. But I, I like the fact that you you touch upon the on the fact that yes, people are so traumatized of the simple fact that because they go from different church to different church and they can't and and, and they fail to to seek the the relationship with God, they stay away from that and that can be very detrimental to their well being. Totally understood that. You get what I'm saying? Because I, I too was raised in that. I'm talking about I was raised in it my whole entire life. I can recite John 3, 16, Proverbs 3, um, um, uh, Genesis 1, verse 1, e Ecclesiastic 2, 2, verses 13. Like I was fully into it. However, what I was trying to say is, is that me, me reciting it, is just me reciting it. I never really fully understood it. So what mm. I did was when I got older, I started to seek knowledge. And I seek knowledge from an educator that actually has 
you know, some some sort of degree in it because, you know, he then he turned pastor after all and all that stuff. But then I started, you know, um, having conversation with, with some Africans who are Muslim and they always told me, if you want to seek knowledge, you have to seek knowledge of understanding what Christianity is and then you can understand what Islam is and what their faith is. So that's why I was able to understand the two and, 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 and can correlate um, what their their importance of belief is. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I like this conversation because I know that in our resort to our, our, our daily needs, not our daily wants, because the, the, the Bible and the Quran, all, all nice. both of them know that we all desire and what we desire is what we want. But what is beneficial is more so, more so of the importance of what we need. And I think that's what I'm more focused on is what we need than what we want. Because anybody can get what they want. But it's mm. hard to, to, to know what we need if we don't seek knowledge first. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's so You're still on that bike, man. That's when you be preaching like crazy. You must be on that bike. I was focused on that too, Carrie. Carrie, yeah. I'm so glad that you brought that up because a lot of people don't even know what know what they need. Right. Um, they they focus more on what on what they want because needs. Even if you look at basic needs, basic needs are what um, having a house over your head or having yeah, food in your food, body. water, and clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and they focus more on what they want or what they desire, but they don't meet their needs first. Right, and this is why it, 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 there's so much commotion on that because they're like, oh, if, if, if God don't tell me what I need, if, if, if I can't understand this scripture and this at the third and they turn it around, they're gonna move further away from what the importance of it is and, 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 go, and go off the deep end with it. And this is why sometimes I'm like, you know what, maybe they just need to learn on their own and, f and figure it out. But then at the same time, we do a lot of, we, we allow them to figure it out so much that they, they, they abuse themselves, like, like self-infliction, if that, may, that makes sense. Oh, um, I don't believe in it. I believe in God, but I am going to do whatever I want. I mean, God, God said, yes, you have free will, but there's consequences to everything. You can't believe in God and then not follow what's written of God. That makes sense? That it makes sense. On it. Okay. Yes. It, it makes sense. But we were talking right. about why force people into believing that they are uh, still slaves. So um, associated with that was... Kev was saying that some, when he hears about some people talk about like the King James version of the Bible, and whatnot, and they say the Bible is the white man's religion or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, and I want to say this to you, Kev, it's not that I 100% agree with that. Here's what I'm saying is that is a conversation that is a, that's a very generalized statement that they say. And that's a conversation that needs to be unpacked. And that's where when I was talking about my first comment was about the translation or the trans transliteration. That's why that has to be unpacked because there are some people who have done, as Carrie was just talking about, manipulated their, their way and did whatever they wanted to do as opposed to what the scripture said to do. And that's why we have these rituals and tra these traditions, even though you're, we're supposed to be Christians, but yet we're doing something that is some Egyptian um, a, 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 a ritual and we don't even know it. We don't even understand it. You know, so that's why, you know, that was important for us to understand that that was why that was brought up. So. No, oh, yeah, I, I, I absolutely. Absolutely. I, I do understand it. Um, I just I, I just know that, you know, the you know, like the, I think you, the more you understand, I, I think the I think it's more so the more, you know, and then the more you can kind of like dissect it. But mm -hmm. be because people are like, oh, uh, but what if what if he meant to say this, that the third? And I'm like, it, it's self-explanatory, ma'am. 
<laughs> if the Bible said this, that, the third, then it's this, that, the third, not that, this, the end, the end, the fourth. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I, I completely understand what you're saying, Anthony. So yes, every time someone it, says yes, that, Kevin, you. make sure that they uh, just Whatever. go ahead and make sure that they unpack it. Every time that they, they bring that up or bring up a statement like that, just make them unpack it and you have to walk through it slowly. Oh, and then absolutely. that way you won't get that you won't get that confusion. So Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah, like like what Gary was saying is like the the more you understand is what you know, but but everything that you know actually comes from from people that you always don't understand. Right. You understand everybody. Sometimes you have to you have to take that in. You mm. gotta be able to respond to them differently. I'm sorry, somebody is. Oh, yeah. it's, there's a ruby. Yeah, I need to mute. Yeah. Yeah. So, so some sometimes we, we we get um, you know, you get information from from even people that you don't even understand. But we're also yeah. trying to give those people that don't don't understand. We're trying to give them information. And I always say this with knowledge is like. Every all knowledge is good knowledge, um, because it, at least it gives you options. Yeah, ooh, <laughs> I, I, I like what you said because ooh, a lot of people are going to have a, a pushback on this one. You you know when they always try to say, oh, you know, be good, do good, don't worry about the bad and all that stuff what if what if it's important to also know the bad and exactly. understanding what that is in order for yes. you to prevent yeah. yourself you know what, from it. you know what my <laughs> you know husband what calls it he calls no, it no, the, I, I, the, the, no, the for good. Real, i really i really want you to understand the question i'm asking because a lot of people are trying to trying to say oh don't worry about it just stay away from that but what if you 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 show them what that is and what mm -hmm. that looks like for them to understand why people are on like the unrighteous path path mm -hmm. I, I don't know if i'm answering that question right, right. no no yeah. i think you're saying it right if you look at it look at um my my husband always says this he says you you need to know the good the bad and the ugly all right bible tells you, you to pray know for the spirit of discernment <laughs> Yep. So it brings it in the spirit of discernment. Exactly. Well, so now I got options. There's no now such I thing as good if there's no such thing as bad. I just mm -hmm. want to say that. Without no yeah. bad, there is no good. Yep. Mm -hmm. As above, so below. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh, well, do, 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 Kev, do you want do you want somebody else answer the question to your topic, or you want me to go first? It's up to go you. Ahead, go ahead. I think you you the newest one. Then is Wolf. Uh, then then Ruby. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, everybody I'm else, though, we yeah. don't went through. We ain't really go through all of them, but you can go through no. all. It don't matter though, cause we got so stuck. I mean, sure. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking I'm about. Go. I might end up uh, resetting and doing another uh, live in a minute. Uh, yeah, I gotta drop real quick, Kev. Uh, I'll okay, be bro. back. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna be All on right. for a good minute because I don't know if I'm getting on tomorrow. So we'll just, I'm gonna be All on. Right. <laughs> All right. See you well, well, hello everyone. Um, yeah. um, like I always said, that Kev always bring the the very difficult questions, <laughs> the controversials. Um, uh, I think this says on the top. It says why force people into believing they are still slaves. Um. Honestly, of what is known, or they don't understand. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even know what to say. I don't. I don't under. Okay. When people, when people were was raised in a, in in a place of internalizing something, like you know, you know, you've been raised on, oh, you need to know your history, understand these people, look what they did to you, always see them as enemy, always see this as a doggy dog world. When yeah. you're raised in that, when you're raised in that environment, it is hard 
to um it is it, it is hard to see what you can elevate from so that is also a form of like mental slavery you know mm. Bob, Bob Marley always say free yourself from mental slavery not but ourselves can free our mind so if we're unable to free our mind from revolt then we wouldn't have no problem to surround ourselves from so surround ourselves sorry can y'all hear me yeah yeah, came back. yeah so yeah i'm so sorry um so it's easy for you to surround your people surround um surrounded by people that can evolve or to demonstrate or to understand authority or to understand that control does not mean being controlling you know what i mean so that's why people are so easy to force oppression upon others because the whole world is not experienced oppression how would you know that the whole world will experience oppression if you've never been there you were just only told a little bit of story here and there because somebody because a little piece of that person from that whole country is telling you oh i don't like that whole country because they kept us captive how are you gonna believe that just by one person t telling you that you get what i'm saying so i think that's my answer to that and then um the second one it says have any other culture gotten treated worse than than us oh absolutely there's plenty of them they're, they're back in the day chinese um um the chinese used to beheaded people with i i i is it am i even i was about to say, say it's scary to talk about that but hey you're doing a good job so far yes i i there there were times back in the day i'm talking about back in like the 1500 1400 you know like 13 centuries when the chinese used to unalive their own people like beheading them um experimenting them you know going around horses and all that stuff they you know they they are U europeans that that does self-infliction when it when it comes to being a, a roman catholic you know there it, it's just so many things that you know some countries that have experienced worse than that than black americans don't get me wrong, I'm not diminishing the fact that Black Americans experience those things, but there are other people that that still to this day can't even live wherever they please. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I say that, that. Right. Uh, you yeah, say that again, I'm sorry? I said, that's, that one's kind of tough. That, that was right. tough. But yeah, then, again, it, it, that's, another, that's a generalization, and you have to always unpack it. But right. You don't have time for that. You won't have time for it. I tonight, think she got so. muted. Oh. Right. So I, I I say that to say this is that it's. I honestly think it's not more so of who experienced this worse, so understand my pain type of thing. I think it's more so of like, okay, I understand that you go through these things. But how can you move on from it? And then when you say that, they think you're trying to strip them of that history. Chinese people know their history, but they try every and anything to move on from that. Hence why they elevate that, hence why they elevate over there. They got their mm -hmm. own thing. They're stronger than ever. They, they don't even, they, they're like, look, I'd rather deal with my own people than anybody else. I know that they're, I know that they're not, they're not the friendliest people, but they're like, look, I got to deal with my stuff first before I deal with anybody's stuff. This is why they're able to branch out worldwide. This is why they have Chinatowns everywhere, because they keep their money flow stronger than ever, regardless of their past. Like you, you, y'all don't see, watch those movies of the samurai swords and them having, um, you know, wearing like armor and all that stuff and and fighting with swords and, you know, doing the taekwondo and all that stuff. That stuff is real. 
They didn't. They, they didn't put that in a movie. Talking about the philosophies, yeah. They yeah. are. They're very. They're very. It's very interwoven into their culture. Yes. Right. That's it. We got to bring up the fact that they did enslave blacks over there too. So mm-hmm. most of that stuff that they say, it, it comes from a lot of the black people. If you look at Buddha, Buddha is a black person with nappy mm-hmm. hair. Mm. So we gotta also that. understand, we never understand that it was a lot of slavery over there with us too. We got people that was sent. We got we got we got oh, the sentence. When did Buddha become black? Uh, oh, he, look he, at Buddha. He always been. That's, that's the Buddha. thing. We we don't know our history. We don't know, and that's part of the reason why this gets brought up a lot of times. Carrie is right. because we're trying to move forward. But if you look at, there's seven steps to problem solving, right? Mm -hmm. And the first step is to identify the problem. And in America, Mm. no one wants to identify the problem. This is why they're always fighting against and pushing back, you know, um, when it comes to racism. And so when you understand that, you understand we are trying to move forward, but there are people who are currently working hard at trying to remove all the progress. You know, if you look at, you know, we just had an abortion ban, if we, you, you know, and that's very controversial because that deals with uh, spirituality and religion. Mm-hmm. But when we talk about uh, there's a Furious Five fund, where the was a funds where black women were getting together and they were providing grants and opportunities for black women who were trying to start businesses. Now, every time they talk about our community, they u- u- usually use the most detrimental statistics to define us. And they define us in a very mediocre way. A lot of people don't understand that because they, like you said, we're living in a culture. We're living in in uh, we're con- we're living in an environment where we're conditioned to accept that, and right. we shouldn't accept that. Exactly. So, in order to change that, there are people who are saying, you know, I'm going to give little girls who have an aspiration to start a business. We're going to give them a chance. And this Heritage Foundation came up, formed a group, and then they decided that they were going to sue. And they took it to the Supreme Court, and I guess the Supreme Court has stripped it down and said no, that that law, or not that law, but that you know, uh, uh, organization and what they were doing was racist. And that is because they don't even understand what the definition of racism is. They don't understand that it is talking about interwoven institutions that are working together to systemically disenfranchise a group of people based on race. They don't even understand that. Um, there's conversations right now here on TikTok that I bet if you just swipe left or whatever, you go and you find it. There is a group that is somewhere someone's talking about biracial. And you understand if you look at the terms of how race was defined, if you talk about the, the anthropologist Johann Blumenbach and how he defined the traits, you know, uh, he decided to, to use the taxonomy or the classification of humans based on race. He created this, this you know, by concept, he created racism, right? Right. So when we look at that, when we look at information like that, we have to understand that we are defining biracial as if we're trying to hold on to the white side and the black side and the this side and not even understanding that a lot of this is just one bow stop. You're one bow stop of the difference, you know? We yeah. break down, we'll break down colonization and then we start going into the details of it. So when we say, okay, yeah, black Americans, uh, they didn't have it that bad. But the people in DR, they had it really bad. You know, it's like, well, did you break down who was the author of that? Did right. you, did we, we don't talk about Leopold in the school system, right? So we're not being educated on our history. We're not being educated on world history. It is specifically picked out. And there are certain things that are picked out and reiterated over and over and over again. You can talk to the days, days you know, you can talk to your blue in the face about the Renaissance. And everybody here is going to, we have a common working knowledge that is going to be agreeable across the board. But if we talk about how many millions Leopold killed, mm-hmm. it would be different. And that is because the education system isn't, it's not fostered to, to us. It's not basically being fair. It's and that's limitation. What you're, you're seeing that. Yeah, that's, yes. what, that's what you're seeing. I even said something to um, someone in the comments about religion. By definition, religion is, if you look at the definition of religion right now, you'll see it says spiritual constraint. So think about that. Yikes. Spirituality spirituality has no bounds, right? But if you decide to use religion, it basically cuts a lot of stuff out. And this is where you get these denominations where someone said denominations are crazy to me. This is where you get the denominations because wow. this, this religion will, do, will, will pray five times a day. 
this religion will say only do it in the morning and in the evening. And that's where you get these differences. And if you see how people are raised in those, those different cultures, then you'll see the indifference there is why you see the hate. Henceforth, why you see Christian nationalism being a very serious issue today. Yes. And it being a reason as to why some people do find it a pressing issue to let us know, hey, we are still slaves. If we're not slaves, you know, slavery to, slavery to white supremacy, we also have to look at the central banking system and understand how we're getting overtaxed. You know, this has happened before in our history, but we don't seem to talk about it. You know, there's no conversation where we're talking about, you know, the, the I can't even remember the name right now. Oh. The individuals who are behind the Fed that are in, in charge of the central banking system. Back uh -huh. in 18, I think it's 1870-something. I, I, I think I know exactly a, what you're talking about. I, I, compl I forgot about it too. Ooh, if you yeah. Google Stamp Act, if you Google Stamp Act, you will see the sign of a, of a necromancer come up, right? These are the individuals that are behind, you know, the, the individuals are behind making the decisions for our central banking system. Mm -hmm. At that time, they had overtaxed uh, America because they were trying to get money because of the wars that they had, uh, you know, the, all the wars had become so costly. So they were trying to tax us. And this is why a lot of that rebellion this is why you know the American Revolution uh, happened. So when we have a discussion about the Stamp Act, and then we have a discussion about what you know our central banking system is doing today, mm -hmm. in terms of inflation, in terms of cost of living, this is why some people find those issues interconnected, and that's why we bring this stuff up. And so a lot of times it does look like it gets to be where it's a tit for tat. Oh, we had it worse than you had it, and and, and not understanding the big picture. Right. That, that, and I'm so glad you dissect what I what, what actually what I was trying to say, because, yes, even though we do understand we all experience something, sometimes it's worse than the other. I think the main focus is is how we can we can connect. Mm -hmm. Hence why sometimes I have a problem with the religion word. Because religion sounds like you're reforming, meaning or rebuilding or re-signing into a an, an alliance, and I'm like, like what if you're forming into another alliance, meaning that you are creating a division, you know, from another from another group. This is why this is also why we we fail. Not that I'm saying that it the blame is on us. But I'm saying that if we get into that mindset of, okay, if they are not for us, you know, and if they don't want us to connect with them, we might as well do it on our own and we become stronger than that. But because we are so stripped away from what we knew and what our ancestors knew and what our ancestors' sisters knew, I don't... I, I'm not saying that we can't come back from that or we can't evolve from that, but staying stagnant and not, and, and not, 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 you know, like taking a little piece of knowledge here and there from certain places. I, I, I think that's where, where the, the, the confusion comes in, but I, I, I'm glad that you dissect that Anthony. Thank you. Yeah. What, wait, where was I again? Oh, the second, oh, the third one. Okay, okay. The, the third one, it says, can we really still blame Root for the decision we made today? Um, I'll say no. Uh, the reason why is because you're setting yourself back. And that, that also stems to what I said earlier, that yes, just because you went through this, that, the third, I really think that, yes, you know, we, you can blame whoever you choose, but what's, what's that going to benefit you? You know, how can you add value to oneself to understand that, hey, this happens to me, but I need to know how I can turn it into a positive way in my life. And then I can move on. You know what I mean? Um, I don't want to really get personal about, about this or anything like that. But I do 
remember being rebellious. And I'm talking about between the ages of 15 up until I was 19. And I, I think this is also why I stress the, uh, the, stress the, the, the education on women, bec but they think that because I tell them, hey, you know, try to be feminine as much as you can, they think that I am trying to let them stay oppressed. I wasn't always feminine. I always never um, practiced um, being a woman. I was always not wanting to not talk to anybody, not being able to reason with anyone, not being able to say, hey, I understand, but. Or instead, I was saying, oh, you're wrong. You can't tell me what to do. You know what I mean? Because I, 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 had, a, I had a hard time um, having somebody hear me out because I was told so many times, just shut up, or you cry too much, or you talk too much. Because I was a talker. And, and at that time, I felt like as though because they told me I talk too much, I stopped talking and I start using my fist. Mm -hmm. I'm so serious. I, a lot of people don't know that. And I, I don't tell anybody that, you know what I mean? But I want people to understand where I come from, uh, how I change the way I am today, how I'm able to respect my husband, how I'm able to respect my father, and also understand that my first listening skills should have came from my father. And because my mom instilled in me talking about, oh, your father ain't this, your father, don't listen to him. This, mind you, this man was raising me while she's on the phone, a car, like different, like from the, like from a different country. She's in a different country. She's a whole married woman in a different country on the phone. She was the one that was like, oh, he's going to raise y'all. He's going to provide for y'all. And he was providing and protecting, but she was all, also on the, on, the, on, my, on the phone talking about, oh, I can't wait to get y'all because he's not treating you guys right. He's not doing this. And this whole entire time, I'm telling her to come home. I want her nurturing ways, but she refused to do that. So that's why I became rebellious and not wanting to listen to my father anymore because I did not know who to turn to because everybody was so against each other. You know, you get what I'm saying? So that's why I said that blaming game that we play is such a dangerous game because none of us is unable to move on. You're grown. I understand you're hurt. Please talk to somebody. It doesn't have to be the lady in the office. It literally could be someone from, the, from a church or a mosque, somebody down the street, somebody, it, it could be somebody, a teacher. Like, it can't be 7 billion people in this world and you're not able to talk to nobody. Like, like, like think about it. I was able to do that. A police guy, before he arrested me, I'm not gonna lie to you, he arrested me and he said, you look troubled, what is wrong? How are you feeling today? That was the first thing he asked me. And I said, I said, I am angry. And he said, why are you so angry? And I said, I'm angry at my mom. I'm out here fending for myself and I just want her to love me. And I could not get that from her. And the first love that I got from, from somebody was a police guy. That's why I was able to change my, my life, if that makes sense. So that's why I said that blaming game, you have to turn it around and, and, and try to make somebody to understand you by just talk. You might not know how to express it fully, but j j just by saying, hey, I'm angry. I'm angry at somebody. And let's just say they made me do this, but I don't want to, you know what I mean? So that's my answer to the third question. Yeah, I'm going to stop talking for now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I'm about to take, I ain't this thing on thing. I'm going to take me a little quick, like, hour snooze, and I'm going to start back up. What? I ain't even got to answer none of them. That's okay. 
Go ahead. You could do the uh, first one. Then after that, I'm a, I mean, I'm gonna take me a little snooze. And you came in late. We've been on okay. all day. I've been on for like what? Let's see, about five hours now. It says, "Why do we force people to still believe that they're slaves?" Um, I don't think they're forcing it, but I mean, it's just how we how we view it. Um, I mean, I view it like that. I honestly do. Everything we work for, we have to give right back to the government in some way or another. Um, plus, they say we're a free country to do what we have, whatever we want to do. No, we're not free. Hell, our First Amendment right is just just totally gone now. We don't have freedom of speech anymore. We say the wrong thing, we're going to jail. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. I still believe we're, we, we're some form of a slave to the government. We're so, more yeah, slave to our mind than one. anything. But. It could be. It could be that. Yeah, I don't think people know the real definition of slave. We just throw it at anything. Slave is literally you have a. Um, but literally, be, think about it. Be the way you work somebody. so hard for what? For for crumbs. You're working hard for crumbs. You can pick your job. I mean, we some people the, might have a good. The, yeah, that's the special thing about America. You can work more than one job, and that's your choice to work. <laughs> slave, they I had. Wish I could they work got forced one job to work right now. Uh, I wish I could work one job right now. I can't even work one job. See, okay? You ain't no, you must ain't be no slave. Then. You're not a slave. <laughs> see, no, they not. Mm -mm. A slave would have forced you no matter what condition you in. You get forced to do it, even if you got slither on your stomach. Right, you gotta do that see, too. Right, yeah, but see, I mean, it's like I'm not even able to get the the Social Security money that I paid in my whole freaking True. life. I'm not even able to get that right now. Yeah. I'm, I might have to wait another three to six years before I even get it. It's what they're telling me. Yeah, that's, but I'm that's, like, that's it had nothing to do with slavery, though. It had nothing to do with slavery. Slavery is like literally getting forced to do something office, that you don't want to do. If a certain person gets in there or just becomes our president, it's like we won't have it at all. They're going to do, do away with that altogether. Yeah. Even though we yeah. paid into it our whole life. Interesting. Yeah, that's messed up. Yeah, I don't want to go that route. I ain't even talking about that. That's the yeah, time I see a lot that's talking about it, I'll be contract. dodging it. <laughs> yeah, Social yeah. Security is a social contract that they're not honoring now for the generations that are coming behind. Mm -hmm. So that's what's right. very interesting. Uh, Kev, you said something very powerful there as far as slave, um, you know, the definition of slave. You know, you often, what we're, what we're facing is we're trying to maybe call ourselves or say that we are slaves and i, and I do be, believe that in a, in a sense we are but our slavery we get to negotiate some of the terms <laughs> and that's that's what makes it difficult to un, you know difficult to associate it to the actual term of slavery yeah but you know that that's, that's what i, I would say, say they'd be offended quick. by us people that was really slave would be offended like y'all shut up <laughs> i wish we could switch spots yeah. with you we've been trying to fight to be in your position you still call me mm -hmm. yourself a slave? Sure. But, mm -hmm. yeah. People don't think about that. And slavery was employment, any way you look at it. That's, that it was employment. There's rich people right now that still feel like they're slaves. Well, I don't get to get what I want. They're stopping me. <laughs> Just to think about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's crazy. Rich There's people, people that, that's they, homeless they that look at us like, well, you get to have a house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, they feel well, like slaves. People, they people that's not anyway because they already system. got everything. Right, yeah. but see, rich people they complain because they already got everything. There really ain't mm -hmm. nothing new under the sun. We they, no different from them, though. Got. That's what I'm saying. You're not even noticing right. that, though. We're no different. Like, like, what, you know, it don't take no money. It don't take no money. Right now, I'm having to look. I'm having to start a GoFundMe just to be able to get my dog to the vet, and he needs to go like immediately. But you think I got a dime in there yet? No, it has been in there two days now. I ain't yeah. got a penny in there yet, and I've been sharing it out to everywhere. Yeah, a penny don't mean. Think of. Yes. But well, you what you're saying, Anthony? Classism, if you do that. I was saying uh, uh, that's where you we have to actually unpack classism there. Uh, rich people are fighting to keep what they already have. Mm -hmm. We are fighting to get it. So yeah. when we're talking wealth, they're fighting, fighting to keep to what they got. They wealth. got what they They're fighting they to keep everything. it. They got everything. Yeah. yeah. Because I be thinking about stuff like this. That's how I know that. That's why I be saying that a lot of us privileged and just don't see it because we blinded to it. Because, like, I was even thinking about um with with a job, right? 
or we be like, oh man, I can't wait to get a raise. First, we already fighting to get a job. We was broke. We didn't get anything. Then we get in the job. We start like, complaining about the job later down the line. <laughs> oh man, this job ain't doing nothing. But you was just you was just crying about you can't have, find a job. You were just happy when you got it. When you got that first thing, now you complaining about it. And then yeah. the next thing is okay, the raise. I need a raise. I need a raise. Okay, then you get your raise, right? All it takes is about maybe about three, four months. You get used to it. Maybe a year, right? I want another raise. I want another. It's, it's gonna keep going. It just that's and that's how humans operate, right? We never take the that time means. to appreciate what we got now and keep wanting more, more, and more. Everybody be saying, mm -hmm. "Yeah, it's a limit. If I get this amount, that that's not true." I, I, human nature: you get a certain amount, you're gonna want more. You're not gonna. People don't get satisfied. That's the problem. You know what I'm saying? We don't. They don't see where they where they at right now. They don't even make what's best out of what they got right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like like we. I think when, when you realize that you don't have to. Uh, let me see. The words I'm trying to get to. When you realize that or appreciating the the predicament you're in, that it can be worse. That's what helped me out. I always realize it's worse. I don't always want to look at it like I am the worst. The fact that we live we above the gray, we already doing better than a lot of people right we don't think about right. that you know the fact that we survive i can't see how people still complaining after the the, the uh, 19 i'm just saying that you know what i mean by that people a lot mm -hmm. of people done passed away during that time you know what i'm saying people still complaining right. and crying and this and yeah you know what i'm saying it's like bro you you here today let one of them people switch switch lives with you let them be in the grave and you be alive then you know what i'm saying so it's just like people don't it's like no satisfying humans nowadays. Like, look, you know what? I mean, a lot of humans, you know, because they don't know what, you know, is goal to to learn what appreciation is and and and, and gratefulness and stuff. Like, once we get once we get that, we kind of be we will be satisfied in life. Of course, we are gonna want better for our life, of course. But it's so many different forms to be better at. We just keep only be stuck at money. It's just money, okay? But but money don't don't buy you happiness man i mean it can, it can make you happy for the moment but it just it ain't gonna make you mm -hmm. a better human being i don't know why people you're think not that gonna stay like, happy it, 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 yeah, yeah. It, it, you, once you get everything you want you're gonna still be like dang you know i'm missing this i'm missing that i don't know you know so it's just it's just so much man you, know, you get that. everything you get everything under the sun and then you're bored you ain't got shit else you'll to be get. back bored again right you'll and be then bored they, and then they, start, then they start complaining about being bored they ain't got nothing to do that's called catch that a plane human. go somewhere well that's why you see the people that's so rich that's ever, why they're doing silly stuff with their money now because they don't they don't know what to do anymore they they drunk buying uh i can't say they're that standing. word uh they buy and then sub and then go down and, and sink themselves. Stuff yeah. like that, right? They doing because they don't know what to do anymore. They so rich. They like, right. man, I done did everything. I can buy what I want to buy. Let me try something new to make fun in your life. And hey, people don't realize mm -hmm. it's really just a mind mindset and it's the way we look at life. That's what make it because I said I literally say that it could be the smallest things that can be I I use this on my cousin, you know, it's like he be he would say like maybe somebody we was talking about um somebody might need to go on a cruise ship. To be feeling true happiness or good happiness, right? Well, some mm. people got the same experience with that cruise ship, and it be nothing to them. It be trash. But then that person could be just writing or coloring on the wall, and that'd be the most amazing lifetime that they had over just you know drawing a picture on the wall. That's a very good experience. You know what I'm saying? So it could be mm -hmm. it could be the smallest thing, but it's just the way we view things. But if you want to view, you'll put your view on materialistic things and all this stuff to depend on your happiness and. Oh, I must spend this much much of money for me to be happy. I must get on this. I must sit in a bubble bath and I'll be truly happy. You know, it's just, it's the mindset. Mm. It's that it's that thing that when we think, and then when we get it, it don't even be how it really is. You get it for a couple seconds, so, but and even this, and some people get it, it and then they, they keep uh, relying on it. They keep be like, man, dang, I missed that time. That was my best moment. That's why I don't like using best moment. I don't even like using that either. You know, because people are like, if that means that's your best moment, you act like you can't get better. Or you acting like it's gonna? I mean, it can only get worse from there. So what are you telling yourself? Like all that word and all that stuff means something when you say stuff like that. So just say that was that was a great moment, and I'm and I can make better. You like every day you literally can make the best out that day, a better moment. You know what I'm saying? But it's just man, it's so much I gotta. You know, I'm just trying to bring to people, man, for real. We be compl we complain about so much, man. We just gotta be thankful that, like I said, it's people that got half of bodies right now. It's people that's you know that's doing blind, 
people can't even see. I mean, it's so much stuff. Even the blind people, they they more appreciative. Some of them, right? They mm-hmm. making it happen. They figure they just love breathing, waking up every. It's, it's just like really just being appreciative of the littlest things. I think, like I said, that entitlement or that that mentality that we have, acting like that another day is promised to us, is why we mad. That's exactly why we mad. I deserve right. this. I gotta have this and all this other stuff. That's exactly why we mad. We don't even be thankful. We gotta at least be thankful for the beginning when we start our day up. Thank, thank mm-hmm. God. You know, I, well, I say God. Thank God that I got to, you know, get a new day to try something new, new again. And still, but people were to wake up. This person did me bad. That person, I'm still, I'm mad at this or whatever. But the thing is, y'all gonna realize. People gonna realize that life don't stop because you mad. You mad? You think all day? Right. You don't. You don't wasted fifty years being mad at this one person while they done had their life, and you just mad. What a what a way, what a wonderful way to waste your life, right? Just mad. And then when they finally mm-hmm. say, "Oh, I forgive you," or if they never say it, you just gonna go to your grave with that being a miserable person when you could have just made better or found a way to escape that. And that's what I be meaning about even with this topic. It be our own mentalities that be enslaving us. We be slaves to our, our grudges. We be slaves to not forgiving people. We be slaves to so many things, and then want to look at something else. That's that that's that's the little minute thing. We slaves to our to our our anger issues against our family and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Cause we can't get along because we so so prideful and all this other stuff. I mean, it's, it's just so much stuff, and people always look at other stuff besides just what they got right now, and, be, and it's everybody else's fault but them. That's what we, mm-hmm. we slaves to. But it's just man. Right. I need to go to bed. <laughs> but no, I was just gonna take a, I was gonna take a snooze and come back on and get another topic going. But what y'all? What somebody got? Okay. Somebody says that's cool. I'm, no. I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, bow out. I just wanted to just I saw some of the topics and I heard the conversation and I wanted to join in a while ago and just um, you know, add my two cents. But I was just in the chat until you brought me in. So, oh yeah, for sure, man. I appreciate. It. I'm glad you came up and good very good conversation and i like it though that's why i always try to you know hear people out because i know we all coming from different angles and stuff man ain't Thank nobody you, man. wrong it. right and all that stuff we just trying to hear different perspectives that's all it's about man. that's how we learn so mm-hmm. yeah for sure. sure appreciate you man all right I, I all right Kev. yeah um get you in there <laughs> yeah um yeah i'm gonna I'm a step down but i i, I do want to say kev that um like you said, it's 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 important to learn. So that's all I wanted to do is learn. I I, I don't want to. There are times when I do want to like debate on certain things, but then for the sole purpose of what, right? So exactly. When I see these these type of topics or a question you ask, I've always wanted to uh, uh, you know wanted to dissect why, you know the why and the who and you know and the when mm-hmm. and the where's. So I, I I really appreciate that. I, all I wanted to do was learn. I, I'll ask questions before I even go off deep in about how I feel. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that. But I, I'll definitely come back around when you come back. When you come back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me about an hour. I just I'll be back on. Okay, got you. Know, I gotta watch this fight. Right, I'm gonna try to make stretch this night out too. I just want to take a quick snooze. I know I'm be on for a good minute. Take me a snooze. Uh, Kev. Go check out my GoFundMe. I started one last night for my little dog. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah. need to get fun. He's my good. dang on stuff, so But yeah, I feel you know. Mm-hmm. I'm checking out. All right. All right. I'll talk to you. But later. all right, y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. I see y'all. If y'all come back around in about an hour, I see you. All right, Lena. Yeah, all right. I'll be right back, all right, though. All right. All right, y'all.